is so exciting. Oh my. Oh my. I was about to do like I'll just sing the Rings of Power theme, and I was like, I don't remember it, so. I I no I can't I can't I can't remember either. I couldn't tell you much about the music for Rings of Power. I think it goes. No, I it, like the dwarf the, music. It goes dun 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 dun. That's that's Rings. No no no. Yeah yeah yeah. Dun dun dun. Right, no. Dun. And then I'm... there's the chorus over that says Rings of Power. Yeah, that oh, point is definitely true. Fair. It wouldn't have matched up that well if it wasn't true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh boy. No, I, I was I, I was I was out with the boys last night. We had a lot of drinks, and then we went yeah. back to to my home, and then we had even more drinks until like four in, in the morning. Um, and, uh, you have a drinking problem? My... No, I stopped. Already, oh, okay, so... it's fine. Yeah. Oh. And today was my my grandma's birthday, so I had some program to attend to as well. So that Yo. was great. Uh, so there was some some food. <laughs> Guess who was the who was the one she who gets got the program to pay? for her birthday? That's pretty crazy. I know, right? So I had, uh, had some food there, and I had some had a bit of nasty food last two days, and I'm kind of regretting it now because my belly is like, the f why why did you do this to me? Like, what are you doing? So yeah, if, if you've you seen had me nasty food, nasty food, I yeah, understand. like good, like good, good, delicious food, but oh. it's, you shouldn't eat it all the time, basically. Especially if you gotcha. eat clean most of the time, and then you go like, I'm going to have some carbs now, and today too, and then next day you're like, you are a moron. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't pick on yourself so much. Everyone else does it enough. That's, that's true. That's true. That's Let true. us be hard on you. Don't be hard on you. But, uh, <sighs> it, 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 was, it was fun times. Lots of drinks were had last night, so that was good, because we... we huh. Stop the day with playing a drinking game. So it was basically like, you take that those many shots and drinks and sips and bam, 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 bam. And I'm just all passed out at 4am. It was great. I know Bam Bam. He's a uh, Flintstones character. That's right. He's the he's the mm. youngest or the older son. Okay. So anyway, I mean, it's Bam good Bam that Rebel. No one knows I assume is his full name. So yeah, yeah. Which what a name, but. Uh... I was gonna say a lot of people are like, "Oh, I thought you were gonna do a break. Why is there no break?" Look, it's not my fault that the world decided to release a bazillion TV shows all at once uh, at the literal yeah. time we said we wanted to have a break. Seems like the universe doesn't really care what we have to say, which is a bit mean. Um, uh, Seems they had to fucking release two episodes. Like, the Amazon <laughs> they could have delayed it by a couple of weeks for us, but they didn't. So are they always like that... gonna release in pairs? I fucking hope not. <laughs> also, I was going to ask about this, right? Andor got released, uh, got delayed by two weeks, did it not? Is, wasn't that a thing? Did but it? I think I, it was. I not only was it yeah. delayed by two weeks, they're releasing three episodes at once. I was like, wait, so why not just release it on time? Maybe. Is it because uh... uh... they didn't want to be overshadowed? But then, I mean, they're still releasing at the similar times to the Hulk and Powers of Rings, Rings of Rings of Fleems. So I don't know. Is they, you, did you mean did you mean to write unleashed in the title and not unleashed or am i um having a test? um no it totally it says unleashed you just read it wrong i'm pretty sure it 110 percent definitely and, says and unleashed. you're totally not just changing it right it now it must be a glitch or something on your me. end particularly yeah that, I've, I've noticed that happens sometimes uh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's just and then a glitch. it turns out that it was right yeah it shows the correct okay. one. Oh yeah now that i re reloaded it and you, and you totally didn't change it while well, that happens yeah. it, 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 it fixed it fixed it it's okay, good, that, good good stuff you know you good just stuff. get your computer repaired and uh we should be good to go so it's good that we've now let you know about that incredible Incredibly yeah, yeah. awkward. Because I, I was confused. I was confused. Mm -hmm. I, I admit it. I was, uh, so confusing. why don't we get some some answers out of the way quickly? Uh, we'll, we, we, me and Rags, the last time we did, I think, an anniversary stream, we had to do a big old series of catch-ups that we release as one big thing. So we'll, we'll probably do that for the anniversary. So it's, it's still on the way. Um, is this so? Out of the four shows, being Andor, She-Hulk, Rings of Power, and House of the Dragon, what is the plan? I've let people know before, but I'll just do it again quickly for those who are curious. House of the Dragon will not be covered by EFAP pretty much at all. You'll hear me say it in passing. But uh, if you want what I think of it, you'll find it on Gary's channel weekly. Doing a show with him and I think possibly Shad, I'm not sure. Do weekly coverage of the weekly episodes and I'll let people on here know what I thought overall if it was to finish up. Um, right now it's looking pretty okay to good. 
in in the running of these TV shows, if you will. Second up, uh, let's say She-Hulk. What's the plan for that? Um, no minis, but definitely coverage on EFAP, including coverage of videos probably defending it. You're going to see some She-Hulk stuff back and forth, more than likely. Uh, especially all of the episodes are going to get covered. It's just exactly when is a little bit difficult to figure out, but you know, we'll get there. Rings of Power. That's going to get coverage in the form of the, the, the mainline episodes as well. Exactly how and when everything will happen. Uh, it, it, you know, it's not exactly sure. Uh, we'll do two in two episodes today. Does that mean we'll be doing two episodes again in two weeks from now? Who knows? Could be that we wait for three to come out or four. I don't know exactly. And then as for Andor, uh, right now the most likely is minis, though they won't start up until late September. That's when it's coming out, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, at the earliest you'll see a, a mini on the first episode of Andor at the end of September. and uh, 21st. Right, so, and that's three episodes all at once. So Ugh. That's going to be fun, which means the Andor episodes will be releasing at the same time as the Halloween arc is releasing all of that, and we're oh doing a bunch God. of multiple streams and EFAPs to do with Halloween. Yeah, lots of stuff. I'm gonna try and do the wow. EFAP TV format for the first time with Andor, though. That'd be that'd be neat. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we got that. We've also got like three other episodes that are planned ahead with guests and particular videos for them coming up in the next month or two. So it is just <sighs> absolute chaos. Uh, also, the yeah. Halloween stuff isn't ready yet. Um, I'm rushing to get it all finished up with the people involved with it, but we're very excited to show you what it is. We mentioned, I think, in passing a couple of times what it is, but. You got yourselves a franchise of Hall Halloween horror movies we covered with They're a big very old... spooky, very scary. Is it? Is very it? Very scary. I think it's a it's a cast of eight people that are all we were watching oh. it with, with a bonus movie thrown in just because I was terrible at organizing at the beginning, wow. which will all be explained yeah, in those videos. <laughs> so yeah, um, basically what I'm saying is you're about to get in total over the next two weeks a whole bunch of EFAP episodes as per normal. A whole yeah. bunch of uh, minis for a whole TV show, 12 uh, episodes in total, I believe. Um, you're going to get, like, seven EFAP movies, I think, in total. And, um, you know, coverage of all three of four shows. But obviously four if you uh, want to chase me over to Nerd Robic's channel as well. So, you know, there's, there's stuff. We got stuff coming. Um, but today, we're not talking about stuff. We're talking about rings no, of no. power. That's not, that's stuff. Why do you say it? Why do you say rings of power like that? Wait, Thunder said no video you... game coverage. I don't think we can fit video game. Is there any video games coming out in this time? Uh, video uh, games that coming out more so in October. Right. So, because uh, like Modern Warfare Two and stuff. I don't even. I literally know nothing about that. Are we covering that? Did we want to? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I don't. Wanna, um, I don't I'll I'm... be playing Modern Warfare Two. I think. Okay. Um, I might. I don't know. I, I don't I really have any interest in it at all. Right, Splatoon Three is coming out like this week, but I oh, the, the last one, here, last yeah, of one, yes. Last of Us <laughs> One remake came out. Uh, I'm it's I'm too busy. Time. There's no way I've got time for that. I just can't. So then what do we got? I think the next uh, one. I think the next one I'm looking forward to is probably Scorn. That's in October. Yeah, huh, Scorn. That Dark and Callisto Tide. Protocol are ones that we're probably going to want to cover. Atomic Heart. Yeah. Okay, games aren't off the table entirely. I just don't... <laughs> you know how it be? Games, they'll we be did. around when they're around. When, I when feel... When we can find a game we all really kind of care about and are interested in and want to discuss, that's when it'll happen. You can't force these things. We got a dense yeah, eight-hour podcast war, obviously. Of, uh, of game coverage on the anniversary, mm. I thought, was, was pretty neat for those mm. looking for game stuff. Uh, wasn't wasn't that the way that that anniversary was organized was quite neat i thought you know with first first eight hours was games second eight hours was uh discussing stories plus uh we we had the the kenobi plus marvel just like that that sort of section and the third section was like memes and uh random text arguments and then sexy stories about clowns um we we had the then we had the the really weird videos that we watched right at the end that feel like a fever dream um, mm -hmm. So you know, hopefully that all was was fun for you guys. I like how the last episode was fully released on Mula yesterday. And it's like right on then, on we go. So mm -hmm. yeah, for those who don't know, we did want a break. We really did. I did. I, I just 
I don't think if I was to leave these two episodes and we just have a gap episode, you understand with all the stuff we've got to cover, we got to get this shit going to the point where I'm like, should we just start up? Should we just start talking about this? I um, what format should we go in for? Chronological, but also giving a little intro for what all four of us thought. I don't know. It seems that this is a very mm. controversial show already. We already knew this would happen, so don't panic. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I've gotten in trouble on Twitter a couple of, with with two different sides of a big war that's going on. Oh. The culture war, as they say. And um, I thought I think it's a, a topic worth discussing at this point because I, I was like surprised at how many people were angry at me for this. So we don't have, we we we've never thought about this really on EFA, but in the passing that we do. We have a take on it, so we may as well share it, I guess. But, um, there's two... The take for... Sorry? I haven't said it yet, Rags, you fucker. So oh, you I got... Just, I sat down. You fucking... Just... I sat, wow. I sat God, up because I... Ruining Because I have everything. a dog, I have to hump onto my chair. My I precious sat momentum. Up. My flow. It's gone. You basically stop right now. It's like, it's gone. It's just no, I've, ex I've... I've increased your momentum. I've squeezed the flow, which makes it faster. Putting your thumb over a hose. What he's saying is he's raising my blood pressure. Very oh, true. That's okay. not good. So we got His um, blood pressure's going. We got the whole review bombing, right? That's a thing that everyone's been talking about. But before we get to that angle, and the the other people who are commenting on whether or not they like the show and stuff, we'll go with the first set, which was I I put out a couple of tweets just about how I thought how good I thought the show was. Um, and I got a you know a bunch of people on Twitter saying like yeah agreed or well, I think you're being too harsh you know normal stuff. But then I got a couple of people being like, you fucking broke the rule. I was like, where? And it's like, you watched the show. You weren't supposed to watch it. I was like, I don't know, fucking, when does this happen? Yeah, I never agreed to this. About I've, this. I've talked about how I'm going to watch Rings of Power for the past, like, fucking however many months I've known it's coming out. I was like, what? what? Yeah. And so, like, and, and there was getting, like, thousands of likes about how I failed and how I've screwed up. And I was like, I I had no idea what the fuck is happening. And apparently, there was, like, this whole group of people that agreed to not hate-watch the show in order to not fluff the numbers to convince Amazon that it's doing well and thus make more. And I was like, oh, I don't believe in that. I think that's retarded. Yeah. Like, I, I, I get why you, you, you're you angry at me for that, but I never agreed to that. I don't even think it's a good argument. I think it's a really yeah, bad argument. Yeah, we ain't argument. playing that game. That's not us. Like, if you j yeah. if you wanted to have the discussion, I think that's totally fair. But the idea that uh, if you watch it, that increases its view count and thus its success versus the damage you do by breaking it down. And, and I say damage, the reality you provide of how good this is or how well written this is. Like, do you really think that... The increase in viewership provided by our coverage and discussion of it is going to outweigh the destructive force of of not uh, of, of of what we we may or may not say about it. And then I was thinking to myself, like, yeah, but what if it was good? Then you'll then you'll help it. And it's like, well, that's fine. Well, it's fine if it's good. <laughs> if it's then, good, yeah, then... we want that, right? We want it to be good, don't we? And that and then I had this like, sort of oh. realization. I was like, yeah, we've never run this way. We we at EFAP are like. We're going to watch the thing and then tell you how coherent it was and then move on to yeah. the next thing. That is it. The uh, the whole like well, culture war element, we we tend to have sort of yeah, not we're not really into that. Yeah. Um yeah. We'll, we'll discuss it if you want to, but we really try to go for the whole robotic element of uh we just want to break it down and tell you how how well it sticks together or doesn't. Yeah. We're lifeless puppets who don't understand art. Well, yeah, what was it? We were lifeless shells of man or something. That's like a fucking old ass reference. Uh yeah, something like that. That is an old <laughs> never story. have fun. It's an oldie but a goldie. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, yeah. uh, and, and that's not to say that you shouldn't have these discussions and 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 uh, and fights on your whoever shows or, or discussions you're having. It's just that's not what we do. And um, and I don't think it's as effective. Uh, the two options of ignoring its existence and hoping it goes away versus watching it and breaking it down on its terms, which is what we do all the time. I think we like to do it. We like to. Fucking go in there and be like, all right, was this any good? Because right. today, you got. we're going to be highlighting positives and what we have with potential negatives. And I don't think that uh, Amazon, because I started trying to make, make these arguments, and some people were like, you understand, Amazon, to Amazon, a view is a view. They do not care if you're saying mean things about it. This is now, not true. <laughs> not true. Yeah. There may be evidence that they this. really <laughs> care about reviews. Just they clearly do care. Amazon have stopped lot, people actually. from reviewing it. Do you really think they don't care? I don't know. That, that was that was interesting. 
Well, I guess it's just, you know, let's put it this way. If you presented Amazon with two choices, one where they get to be in a world where everybody loves their show, or one where they get to be in a world where everybody hates it, that they're just like, eh, who cares? Eh. You know, like, they're just completely indifferent to the response. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they don't like it when you're negative. But that's, that's we already know this is true. Therefore, you should probably let your view known, especially if it's going to be uh, something you think is important to changing minds um, in terms of g going against the grain that is Amazon is doing great. Which, by the way, is a really important element that I don't think people are addressing. If you keep an eye on the discussion of Rings of Power and you wipe out all of the uh, people who aren't supposed to be hate-watching it, quote-unquote, you're going to wipe out the majority of the criticism of this show. You'll be left with lots of big accounts being like, this show's incredible. It's this even better awesome. than the original trilogy. Yeah. Everyone should watch this. Now, if you're a rando yeah. who, um, you know, this this happened with Game of Thrones and uh, TLJ, a lot of other things as well, but you'll you'll get a guy who just, you know, or girl, or girl, just watches something, and they're like, oh man, I feel this way about it. I'm going to go check, see if anybody else does on the internet. And all they find is positive reviews. They'll be like, "Huh, okay, maybe, maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm a bit biased here." You know, yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, so why uh, you know why, why would you take away all the voices that are going to be helping you break it down? Because if you just have people saying, "I'm pretty sure it's bad. I haven't seen it," you know how bad that looks for like criticism. And um, if if there is this sort of culture war, this fight that people are referring to, then you're going to want to have the best arguments, aren't you? Rather than just saying, no, I'm pretty sure it's bad. Um. Oh, we got, uh, we mean, got uh, it, a super chat just come this... in that's relevant to oh, this conversation. Yeah? You say, stop oh, supporting boy. this trash as you support said trash by watching it. Don't you think that's a little hypocritical? Well, if you want to go by how much support is given, don't you think, by being hypercritical of it to the point where our audience tell us semi-regularly, if not all the time, that they do not watch the stuff, instead use us as a conduit to understand just how bad it is, as opposed to watching it themselves, then ultimately we are not supporting it. Would that not be true? Is this like, I guess, is the, I guess it... it... Surely this isn't a real thing that we have to deal with. Right? Uh, yeah, this is the thing, man. Like, I, oh, you're not supposed to watch it? Like, when is this ever applied to anything we've ever covered, ever? I yeah. didn't realize no the, said, this argument actually got some weight. So there's, there's people who actually believe this is true. I thought it was like almost a joke. Yeah. Um, I didn't think this was something people actually believed, that uh, when you review a thing incredibly negatively, that that's helping it. I didn't think that people thought that, that's but insane. apparently they No do. one could be stupid enough to think that. Uh, they do, uh, and, and I don't know how else we can provide the arguments to explain how this works. Um, corporations hate having negative reviews. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Be enough. If they didn't, then how come they constantly do all the shenanigans they do with review scores and whatnot? And uh, we recommend that everyone uh, give it give it a second and let us uh, go through it and then see if we, we recommend it. I've already said that there's a chance that I'll recommend House of the Dragon by the end. I'm not doing it yet. Now, mm -hmm. um, and that and that's from the angle of uh, we're trying to sort of make a difference, if you will. It, it, that would be the approach I think is best to have just a couple of people, reviewers, assessors, critics, whatever, watch it and then give you guys a, you know, an assessment and then recommend or not based on that. Um, the idea that if we all just don't watch it, it'll go away. It's like I don't think you realize how many people are watching this and celebrating it. So you got no other angle to it it's just going to it'll just go on amazon's frustration right now is that people are giving it negative reviews you like if you this this battle is sort of happening whether you want to participate in it or not if yeah. everyone who is going to be oh cuz you'll probably i mean I, I guess you said it earlier in a really good way that if you just think it's going to be terrible and you're going to be very critical of it and it turns out to not be good, then your reviews out, your your voice out there is not going to exist. I mean, to it's be fair, your be voice should be squashed. If you're going to say it's terrible without watching it and you're wrong, yeah. like, you've got no value to the discussion at that point. So, uh, you know, being like, stop watching the trash, stop supporting it, it's like, hey, I ain't supporting it. <laughs> this is, this Truly, is certainly not and, what it would be considered. No one said, don't watch The Rise of Skywalker. No one said don't watch Doctor Strange. No one said don't watch Black Widow. All this stuff, because we've had, it's just a stream of trash coming off of, you know, Disney and whatnot. No one ever said don't watch that. No one said don't watch Kenobi. You know, I I, yeah. I guess this is the one that we've just come up with this very bizarre rule about you don't even need, you don't even watch it. 
What if it's good? Yeah, we can. Because when you don't. Oh, God, I'm just annoyed. So, a lot of times we hear people say, like, oh, these guys clearly haven't watched the thing they're talking about when we obviously all watched it. And then now all of a sudden we don't. You're not supposed to watch it. Yeah, like taking so, pride in not watching it at all, but simultaneously arguing yeah. it's really bad. I just don't. That's the position that's ready to that. crumble apart. Yeah, it's like, oh, why didn't you like it? It's like, oh, I just didn't watch it, didn't hate watch it. It's like, oh, yeah, when, like guys, when, what are we? This is exactly what, what people say about EFAP and its work all the time. Yeah, I don't have to watch it. I know it's bad. Like, that ain't uh, <laughs> that, that that ain't the way we want to go about this. Okay, we would rather tell you what it is, how it's failed, yeah. if it's failed, and whether or not to uh, well, whether or not to support it. And we're gonna make it clear What's as to that? what our position on that is eventually. <laughs> It's not any sort of attitude that I want to foster in my community. This idea that like you don't even watch it, don't even it, it, like like what plug your head in the sand like an ostrich and just pretend it doesn't exist. And while other people are out there and they watch it and then they put out their good reviews of it, and your discourse just doesn't it doesn't exist to counter it. And the thing like, um, was like if you looked into like, it more, you'd understand this better. It's like I understand it perfectly. I just don't think it's a good argument. I never have. Yeah, Efab has never thought this is a good argument. Yeah, I think this was spearheaded now because there was like this article that came out that said uh, the this show depends if uh, Amazon Studios is going to continue or something. I think that's where this all started with. Okay. But then all, all, argu the argument still stands the same. Because yeah. if you don't, don't watch it and there's all these people giving them the good reviews and all the people who don't want to watch it won't be saying it's bad and why. They're going to be like, oh, that was a triumph. Then we're going to make 17 more. Yeah, this is the thing. You can run the, the logic in all the different ways you want, but we'll just have to look at examples, right? So you got terrible take from yeah. all of the opposite of love is indifference. Less conflict equals don't feed algorithm equals less, less successful. So you know how that Batwoman show got canceled? Even though it got completely covered and run into the ground? Remember that Resident Evil show on Netflix that got covered to hell and back and went into the ground? Mm -hmm. You really think the coverage of it negatively will keep these shows alive? I'm sorry, you're wrong. You are incorrect. And trust yeah, me, work. the world with EFAP and Friday Night Tights and uh, Critical Drinker and everyone else are all silent on whether or not this show is bad for, the, for what it is. That doesn't that doesn't damage the show. Uh, the, the, yeah. the, 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 I'm sure Amazon would much rather Critical Drinker and As and ourselves not talk about it than come out and say that it's terrible and you shouldn't watch it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. This. I like, know you're all very passionate, okay. but this just doesn't hold up. And trust me, in the long run, this will do much more to make a difference, to break it down on. In fact, I'm I'm quite happy with the fact that we've got so many different angles to this. Like, obviously, what you're going to be seeing mm. today is EFAP break this down from within itself. We're going to try and keep references yeah. to anything outside of it to a limited, if not zero. There's going to be a couple of times I'm going to want to talk about how they did certain things in other things. But not in the sense that, hey, this shouldn't be this way because it was like this and the other thing. We're going to try and beat it on, on the terms of what it is itself. Um, it's not a great thing to just hear from me that this is the thing now. But you're not supposed to watch it. It's like for me, this is like the first time I'm going through this whole sludge hole well, to so cover everything as well. You, and, final and, I'm gonna is... be hearing, and I'm going to be hearing people saying, oh, you just shouldn't have watched it. It's like, oh, cool. The final aspect is worth mentioning. Some people are like... You see, when you go on your Amazon Prime account and you hit play, it's like, that's algorithmically going to tell them, blah, 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 blah. It's like, huh. We're not going to tell anybody how to consume a show, all right? Nor will we explain exactly how we consume shows. You may think whatever you want about how exactly we make we no watch. claims. No claims are made at all. Mm -hmm. uh, you go right ahead and assume whatever you want about how exactly the show was watched. Ultimately, though, what we're saying is wait until the season's over, and we'll tell you whether or not it's recommended. Um, and from there, you can do whatever you want, if you're concerned as to whether or not your view will help Amazon thrive. I.e., it's going to cost a couple of views. In exchange, thousands will be taken away. Very simple utilitarian mathematics, I suppose, as Doctor Strange was all about this, okay? Uh, our sacrifice will mean much more in the grand calculus of the multiverse. Of the um, algorithm. Then. Grand calculus of the algorithm. Uh, <laughs> but this didn't come up with Kenobi. I don't know where that was. 
So, People weren't as passionate about that. I, I just don't know. I, well, and, I hate and, this attitude. I'm not going to foster it. In fact, I, I am starkly opposed to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much... I think that's it. Um, I'm hoping not I'm to cover this again, because I thought it was bizarre that it got traction. Like, the whole, I don't it was a watch joke. it. That's precisely what they want. It's just like, we'll be fine. Don't you worry. Uh, they fucking hate that we exist, saying the things are bad. Trust me on that mm -hmm. one. So, uh, the other angle I was going to talk about was that, yeah, I was getting, I was seeing a lot of, almost more viral than the ones that are negative posts praising the show, saying it's fucking great, phenomenal. There's these weird articles that are coming out saying, like, this is a cinematic masterpiece, better than the original trilogy, and it's just like, um, <laughs> okay. Well, at least we didn't watch it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, uh, so, um, I guess that's, that, that almost is the final argument in the final nail in that coffin, seeing so much praise for the show. I was like, holy shit. I, uh, I had no idea that it was going to be getting this much coverage in a positive light, so I'm more than ready to discuss what actually happened in it, to let you guys know, and to maybe give, a, give an opinion or two about how, how it's going. Um, I had a lot of fun on Friday Night Tights last night. I recommend you guys check it out. We wrote, ripped it to uh, threads, not to give an idea of exactly where we're going with this. But, uh, yeah, the, the the sort of wider context for this was, was I was relatively unaware of a lot of the meta surrounding it. Um, I, I had been shown bits and bobs here and there, but, like, I, uh, I was more than ready to just be like, all right, let's just give the show a chance like I do with everything else. And, um, yep. well, we had results. So, I guess, is there anything else, or should we just get into it, I wonder? Um, I think we can just get uh, right into it. No sense, uh, I got, no I sense got hiding at all. Hmm. I was thinking maybe we could all give a give a blurb, but I wonder if it's just better to go as uh, we're probably relatively similar, and we can just go. I know? imagine we probably are. Um, I think I imagine we'll all probably line up on this. Has Fringy seen it? Did you see it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, Nettle yeah. has as well. So the excitement it begins. Um. So yeah, we begin. The, the, we're going to be getting uh, Galadriel is is our main character, and we're 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 going back in time quite a bit. This is the second age, from what I gather, and this is the thing. Like I said, I'm going to try and just go from what they tell you in the show, as opposed to uh -huh. gathering from other sources. But there are, you know, it's just tempting sometimes to be like, oh, I know Galadriel, I recognize the that Lord one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, how neat! Yeah. And yeah, we see her in the beginning playing with some other some elf kids. And they're all like, you, you fuck, what are you doing? And she's, she's making a real cool bit of origami to the point of, uh, it's just, it seems, you'd, you'd argue, is it magic? <laughs> is there magic attached to this origami thing? As bad as it fucking impressive. It's, uh, a, 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 it's funny, she says, they're like, is it going to float? And she's like, it will not float. It will sail. And when she puts it in the water, I was just awkwardly like, oh, that doesn't have a sail. I said the <laughs> like, same thing to myself watching it all. It's like, that doesn't have a sail. <laughs> you lied to me. But that's the thing. She's made one of the most impressive origami ever that, like, unfold as it's going, and it becomes like yeah. a, a dragon boat. It's a... Uh... It's so impressive they had to use computer graphics in order to... It does make you yeah. wonder. It's like... Because it can't... It can't be... It just can't be done, I suppose. But she seems to do, like, chanting thingies. Like, like she's doing magic with it, I guess? Is she doing Unless magic? With, just, I don't even know anymore because you just you could never quite I mean, tell. She's, because, because she's kind of doing like the, the um, noises, like the, the whispers, and then it does the thing. Maybe it's alive. Know. Maybe she's just insane. I don't know. But seriously, it is a an incredible bit of origami, and I completely understand these children getting upset over it in terms of jealousy and just be like, you got to knock this Absolutely. person down a few pegs. You know, this is unacceptable. In Elvish, they were saying, "I wish that I could make origami boats as good as Galadriel." Exactly. Can. Yeah. She's so very, she's so incredibly talented, and she she really isn't like other girls. And they all bully her, so very mean, and she tackles one of oh. them, I think, and then her brother's like, "Yo, chill out." And uh, you can tell they're already characterizing her. She don't, she don't, she's gonna, she's gonna fight back when people pick on her, right? She's that, she's that kind of character, I guess. I'm like, okay, because she is our main gal for this. I was gonna say season, but I guess it's probably the whole show, the expected probably. five seasons of this. They ain't um, gonna get rid of her. She's there. They, they well, really she's like She's immune Galadriel. to damage, technically. Damage. She, she's yeah. got a whole life ahead of her. It's gonna lead to even the mm -hmm. third of the ages. Um. So yeah, her brother brother picks her up, and we get the first sort of like, wait, hang on, what? 
Like, do you want to know why a rock sinks and a ship doesn't? Oh, this conversation. Can we? <laughs> can we have? Like, we're gonna have to have a just discussion at some point about pointless, flowery conversation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was also, I, I paused this and, like, you couldn't just get a pe like a rag, or a or some wet paper and put it over your knife. You had to do that too. Like, even that, you have to CGI. You know? Oh, is, is the Sometimes paper on his knife CGI is what you're saying? I think it looks like it. I can't even tell. Look at it. And it looks in the guess... picture, picture at least now. It's just, come on, guys. It, that must be really disheartening to an actor to be like, now we're going to CGI the thing on your knife. So just act like, you know, it, it's on the knife. I can see what you mean. It looks yeah. a little bit awkward, but I don't know. I, I could be told that's physical and believe it, I guess. I don't know. Oh, no, you're right. It does look odd, actually. Yeah, it doesn't move very naturally. And it's not. It yeah, like it's it, not. Um, it looks like it's stiff. It looks stiff. Yeah, why would it be stiff? It's wet paper. It'd be all floopy. Because motion costs money. They had loads of money. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. I mean, and we'll have to get into that earlier, or not earlier, later. Earlier's past. We can't. We can't cover can't anything. Can't go earlier. earlier. No. You gotta have your, gotta have your head to the, head to the future, and your back to the past. You have to kill the past or something, but. We're, we are going to have to have some conversations. One of them was the flowery language that doesn't mean anything conversation horseshit. And the other thing is, how can you spend so much money to make such a fake-ass looking world? <laughs> but we'll get into that. We'll get, yeah, because I'm going to just push back a little bit. There are some things I think look real pretty, but there are some things I think look there like are, ass. Well, there are some things, yeah. There are some things that look very pretty. And there's mm. a lot of things, particularly environments to me, that look very not real. Um... But yeah, when someone says to you, why does a ship float and a stone doesn't, I, I like, I legit, if I was, I was her, I'd be like, man, where do you want to start? There are so many reasons, like, most I remember we were watching, ones, and like... I was joking, and I was like, well, it's because the, the boat displaces uh, more water than it weighs, or something like that. Like, you know, we've, we figure this out, we could build boats. Like, that's, that's, <laughs> you, you don't assume that to be some sort of a crazy philosophical, yeah. um, like, m like, metaphorical sort of question. No. It's like, let me talk to you about boats. Why does a boat float? And then and then you give your answer, and then that relates to maybe something, right? You don't instantly start off with this incredibly unhelpful, confusing, metaphorical conversation about truth and discerning falsehoods of reality. It's like, this is awfully heady. I'd say so. Uh, also irrelevant to her situation currently. I guess because she made the origami. Uh, no, yeah. yeah, you're right. I don't know why well, she made the origami boat. She got bullied for it, and then he's telling her about here's how you discern truth from you know fiction. And I'm like this, like listen, this this doesn't help me at all right now. I'm a little emotionally compromised because all the other elf children are bullying me. Mean to me. <laughs> yeah, this does not help my situation whatsoever. So. That's the thing, when you're sort of like trying to guess where they're going to go with this, it's like, all right, difference between a stone and a boat. You're like, eh, eh, you know, I'm trying to, trying to think, and then he says, well, you know, the stone looks down. Yeah, the stone only sees and downward. Before he even carries <laughs> on, you're like, wait, stone only sees it's, downward. I don't know. <laughs> so what about like mountains, right? Are mountains only looking downward or just individual stones? How far does this metaphor just fall apart? But like it just keeps... Going and getting weirder and weirder because he's like the darkness of the water is vast and irresistible. Like to the to stone? A stone, really? Yeah, like I it, remember, the stone um, looks down because the water is irresistible. I'm, I'm getting lost. Have you ever seen Snoopy come home? I haven't. All right, Snoopy come home is a it's a Peanuts movie about Snoopy. Like he goes off to visit someone that he used to know, and then da da da. And there's a part in it where. Linus and Charlie Brown are at the shore of a lake and then Charlie Brown picks up a rock and he throws it into the the lake and Linus says Charlie Brown it took that rock millions of years to get to shore and now you've thrown it back hmm. Charlie Brown just goes oh and he's sad because Charlie Brown's he's a fuck up he can never do anything right no oh. And that's what that's what this scene from Rings of Power reminds me of. <laughs> well, it's a wonderful movie. I, I really yeah, that's the deep peanut slur. I really like Snoopy Come Home. It's got some really great songs in there. It's super groovy. Um, so yeah, there's just there's variables to keep track of in this 
like metaphor, whatever it is. The the makes yeah. she's already a child, so it's gonna be hard enough to keep track of everything. But so like your your stone in this sees and desires darkness, uh, and that's what the water is, vast and dark. It's just like okay, and then, and then he's like, but the ship that feels darkness, driving moment by moment to master her, and the darkness is trying to pull the ship under. Like wait. So the stone wants to go to the darkness, the ship doesn't, then the darkness will grab you and pull you down if, if you try and resist. Is, is that is that right? I, I, Am I following? I so really, um, it's more so about the motivations of the ship and the stone rather than what they are, I guess. Well, because when when Gladrill swimming later on, right, and the, the, the ship bits float by, that ship, it was not striving moment by moment to master the water and pull her under. I, I don't know... This is this is not the thing you tell an adult, let alone a child. It's 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 this flowery, very like ah prosy, poetic sort of conversation that you have, and it doesn't really relate to anything. It's not it doesn't have any applicable wisdom or knowledge to it. it it's not going to matter to the person you're telling it to. It's extremely out of place. It's kind of. It's like th th there's so much self filating going on when it comes to the writing for this. It's like someone who watched Lord of the Rings and they didn't know why that worked, but they still tried to copy it. Um, almost like a like a like an AI trying to recreate the Lord of the Rings in a sense. Mm. And I think this conversation is right off the bat. Our first big example of that kind of conversation really That's utterly pointless and meaningless and is not helpful it's a conversation that's supposed to exist for the audience to listen to and for us to go ah oh ooh, it's so deep and all oh, meaningful but it's just it's empty and shallow and useless well and it felt like yeah. it was like oh we're in for this are we like yeah eh, we're in for not a good first impression you got all that and then he's like but the ship has a secret like wait wait, wait, wait. <laughs> now yeah you're adding even more variables <laughs> like, what, it what has is a poop deck what is the what? How does that work? It's like for unlike the stone, her gaze is not downward but up. Right. So the stone was looking down, the ship was looking up, but the darkness is oh, grabbing wow. the ship down. Meanwhile, I guess it doesn't grab the, sh the stone because the stone is just heading down anyway. Well, the stone just wants to go down, so that's why yeah. it sinks so easily, I guess. Because the stone um, is a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Fuck stones. All right. Yeah. Um, but boats, I would figure boats and, go uh, forwards, right? Boats aren't going upwards. They go like, yeah, or like a the, bird the, the looks fucking, up, right? Like a tree. A, you could even say um, a tree is so growing so upward. The implication is like using arguably that to, to, as a guide. He's like the, the light guides, like the, the, I don't mm -hmm. know, the stars maybe is what he's referring to. Well, so the, the root of all of these problems with this uh, analogy is that they had one thing that they wanted to achieve, which is, I guess, what is meant to be the theme of the show, which is, oh, when it's too bright, you can't see, like, the bad things. Like, that's, that's like, what they wanted this, uh, this scene to which convey. I think and it's so fair to, to say <laughs> some will pick that up, some will be baffled. Her response was like, what? Uh, uh, it's it's the one-two punch. It's his preachiness and her bizarre response. It's practically a non sequitur. I would yeah, I would even go as far as saying it's just like you know, um, uh, a stitch in time saves nine. Right, is is a thing that people say. It just means solve the problem early on, and it'll be much easier to solve than when it's left alone and yeah. it becomes much worse later. Bounce of prevention. If, if a child responded to you saying, "But what if your needle is broken?" Be like, oh, but. I that's well, not it's really. A, it's a metaphor. Yeah, yeah like, yeah, like that's point. not. A metaphor uh... <laughs> doesn't rely on the needle. The needle isn't an actual needle. Well, that would be a useful way to maybe describe what metaphors are and what what symbolic language is and you know you, epithets. Not to be confused with epitaphs. Very different. But you could yeah, and, you could tell them what epithets are. And you know what? I think I was too generous with that. It would be more accurate to say that her response would be, "What if stealing, like stitching it, makes it much worse? Or what if stitching it is actually not stitching it?" You just be like these questions are like I'm sorry what basically for those in chat wondering she says but what about when the light shines so brightly that it bounces off the water and it makes you think the water is actually the shiny thing? It's so bizarre. I've never had it's just it's like I'm here but in a bad way. You know how when you have a scene and you say wow I feel like I was actually there and they normally mean a good thing. This is the the, the negative version of that where I feel like I was there and they were talking to me as an audience member and ignoring each other. Mhm. Mm 
Yeah, and, and she's like, so which light do I follow then? And it's like, well... Wait, follow... What? <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it's so uh, bizarre. In, the, in this metaphor, you are in a boat, and the light is shining from the sun, theoretically, and it bounces off the water to the point where it's so bright you can't even tell which way is up. It's like, I think you've got other problems at that point. <laughs> like, yeah, you could... uh, you've got a bad case of her. we got to bring you back to, to Valinor or something, because you're some just... shades. Yeah, yeah. Middle Earth's doing a number on your elf brain. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I like, trying to understand this, I was just like, what the fuck? And then what is his response? How does he, you know, square away all of these complications with his metaphor? Um, as, as, like, he whispers to her, and I think, is is this something we get later, or is it just something we never find out? Yeah, I, I don't that, think, that, that, I don't think we get it. We do get it, we do get it. We do? It's, it's, yeah, it's uh, right before the end of episode one. Oh, okay. But, um, oh wait, this is episode one. Also this is named the end of this episode. <laughs> his, his name is Finrod. It is Finrod. Is, a beautiful is name. Um, Finrod is a very. Yeah, I just oh, uh, wanted to clarify that. Fins though, that... and she jumps into water at the end. That's so deep, dude. Wow, that's very deep. Yeah. But the the, the, like the, the water. angle that he adds on though, that you got to discern it for yourself, which means all of the advice up to that point was just useless. <laughs> <laughs> you got to figure it out. It's like, oh. Did you hear everything I said? Yeah. Just try it out, man. <laughs> Yeah, and then he says, like, I won't always be here to tell this stuff to you, which feels really weird coming from a race that doesn't die unless... An immortal you know, race. You know, like, sort of thing. Yeah. It like, does feel weird. I won't mm -hmm. always be here. It's like, but... You like, won't... You, you will, right? You won't like, always be here. Like, unless you, like, fall down the stairs. Yeah, any more or less than she will. It's, it, 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 it doesn't quite... For me, it doesn't quite matter. It's, it's more of a thing that men, or the race of man, would say to their younger... Yeah, it's younger. a very mortal it makes thing more, to yeah. say. When you... Because, like, she'll be just as... You know, like when you guys are both like fucking five thousand years old, you're not gonna be like, ah, oh, yes, my very young, much younger sister. At that point, it's like you guys have both lived for a real fucking long time. Yeah. Uh, there's like, yes, but I will but... still die before you. It's like not necessarily at all, actually, with how this. Yeah, works. kind of. You hit that middle age as as an elf, and you just sort of linger there, right? And then you keep living. With I guess it's odd, but they're used to it. Um, just to clarify, some people yeah, are like, very... if they're immortal, they wouldn't die. So, immortal, in this case, meaning they live for as long as they're not killed. And I know that sounds yeah. retarded, but what I mean is that they don't age. They, they You know, as long as they left yeah, alone, they, they would live forever. Yeah, they fall off a cliff or get yeah. hit by a bus, but they won't, you know, they, they won't... So, I, I have that line written they... down. I, I don't know if it's actually the line anymore, because I don't remember the whole speech he gives. I don't know if... Inrod's speech? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to keep it for for the end, or should I just say it, and then you can? Um, I mean, I'm not too bothered by jumping around on this. Um, but okay, because we... it won't take wait, us long wait, to wait. get there, obviously. Only episode. Sorry. It, your your question is whether or not you want to talk about what he says in relation to the the boat at the end of the episode, right? Yeah, no, because we were wondering if we get it, and I think we do get it. But I'm now I'm not sure anymore if it's not just a normal flashback to what he said before. Well, but it, it seems it, like that's what he what he whispered. No, it does flashback. It does. No, Mel, I think Mel's saying, does it just flash back to what we already heard rather than what? Yeah, we didn't the hear. whisper. Uh, yes. We don't yes. hear. Um, we'll we'll talk about it when we get there. I, I figure actually. Okay, okay. It won't be hard because, like I said, it's only an episode. It's an hour, and it's more so like twenty minutes worth of things. Um, <laughs> That's so generous. Yeah, you got all that, and then and then they give us the lore dump, which is that, um, and again, I'm going to treat this like we don't know anything. So they had a big old tree that was a source of light in their little, little elf place, and a big bad guy called Morgoth burnt it, or destroyed it. Real mean. What, what a prick. Tree. Yeah, we don't like him. What an asshole. Uh, you are, you are lord. And so the elves were like, well, fuck that. We're going to send our armies to go fuck him up. And so... Question. They, they send a whole big... So there's no sun them. yet, right? There's no sun yet, it's just the tree that's very bright? Um... I don't even have a commentary, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know. I, I have a very different question. So the way it's presented, it's like, oh, everything has been nice and dandy up until this point. Why do they have an army? Or is there just some information I'm missing that there were wars before that? Um... Because the way they portray it to me is like, oh, everything was like super cool and chill up until then. But then they burned our tree and then we send our armies. And I was like, why do you have an army? Well, maybe they made, they constructed or forced in an army once this had happened. Um, you know, there's, there's plenty of ways that, that could oh, come fine. about, I suppose. Uh, I do wonder about the logistics. So Morgoth chills out in Middle Earth, but he did jump over to Valinor to fuck with their tree. 
and then he came I back to so. you know, Middle Earth. Like, I, you know, and I'm not saying this doesn't make sense. I'm just like, I don't think they really gave me much to understand this. I was just like, okay, he went back to Middle Earth, and they're gonna go get him. Yeah, it's him. not as, it's not as succinct as the Lord of the Rings opening. I don't know um, why you'd compare it to it's... that, Rags. I, just, I don't know. Oh, what was I, I, I guess it just occurred to me. I guess the thought just floated into is my head. Is it because this, the name of the show is the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power? Which again, what a terrible <laughs> fucking name. Just saying. Yeah, um, it should have just been the Rings of Power or something, uh, but uh, uh, I don't know. I the the whole opening for this feels very the, like they made a lot of odd choices in what to actually show and what to mm -hmm. tell me. Um, I feel like we did a pretty darn good job in the Lord of the Rings, um, just sort of setting things up. And this feels less. It feels more messy, a, li a bit more wandery in yeah. terms of the visuals were presented. It felt more, and not only with the visuals, but a lot of the music choices were strange um, in this opening, in particular. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I'll try and highlight one of the ones that I think that you pointed out as well. When we get, we're, we're pretty close. Yeah, but uh, yeah. finally, they've sealed the plot hole. Okay, everybody, see, look what happens when the eagles go to Mordor. They get fucked up. Yeah, they get oh. fucked up. Look at this. Now imagine that Damn. eagle that got fucked up was carrying a little midget with magic ring. Exactly. Man, that would not been good. Uh, so yeah, you, you Why did Morgoth a... destroy the light of uh, the the tree? Did they don't say do I that? I think he's just an asshole. Yeah, oh, what like, a Oh, that tree is bright. Burn it. God. <laughs> what, a, what a dick. Am I right? Does he like suck the yeah. power from it or does he just Chews is he it. just sick of all this light? Mhm. Mm I think so. Yeah. Cuz he's evil. Oh, he de he's definitely yeah, he's Okay. Cap capital E. Eve. Damn. Um, okay. <clears throat> so they have a big, big old fight, uh, and we see the 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 brother is getting and getting getting involved, killing a bunch of got a big old fight here. Uh, mm -hmm. a bit weird. Like the, there's like three orcs, or I mean, it gets to the point of being like five around him. It looked like they're just trying to go for a hug, not really doing anything else. But hey, it's like a mosh pit at this point. Yeah. Everyone's just yeah. everywhere. And. uh yeah, you know, and it's just like so. The big fight happened, and they're like, uh, you, you know, they they said it would be over quickly, but the war left Middle Earth in ruin. Like, how how large of a, like how 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 large of a fight was this that it left Middle Earth in ruins? That must have been some crazy fight. Yeah, it spanned yeah. across everywhere. I guess that's the thing. We don't wow. get a lot of info on sort of left to the imagination a little bit, which I guess is fine in terms of. We need just the information we need to understand the story they're telling this show. But, um, you know, I get distracted by small things. I've, I've said this before. I've seen it on Friday Night Times as well. But you see Galadriel's, like, mourning the dead. Lots and lots of elves. And they just have this shot. It was in the trailer. What, the what is this? Do you think like, more than dead elves? You mean the helmet pile? Don't the helmet pile is so stupid. Pile? Yeah. That, that, that takes so much work like this is a piece in of universe art, unironically and to animate it in cgi like, <laughs> this, this is an the artwork to get this to be this perfect and to stay still um and uh yeah this, this will be one of the counter examples i would bring in like do you remember the the big pile of smoldering urukai in uh and orcs i guess in in two towers yeah. that was just a legit pile of things that, that they made yep. And they were burning it to get. Well, yeah, of course. Get, 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 we gotta make this pile. You need to build movie. scaffoldings for doing it this perfect. Yeah, I, I actually. Yeah, I, I said you'd, to, you'd need a crane. To constantly, <laughs> little elf well, crane. You'd have to throw the helmets and then hope that they sort of stick. So there'd yeah. be a lot of times where they threw it on and it just like bounce off, and they'd keep trying to get like you're playing basketball with yeah. the helmets, yeah. trying to get it to stack just right. And then more and more just fall down when you throw it and f fail, and it's just, yeah. And I think silly. Um, it's very silly. I thought it was fun as well. Just that if some guy was like, "Oh, this would belong to my brother. I'll take this helmet," and he takes it, and it's just like a few more fall, and then a few more fall from where they were, and they're all just goes, <laughs> oh, the whole damn, stack. my so brother's like, helmet's oh. at the bottom. Uh, you know, it's I gotta have this helmet. I know it's gonna come crash, but I gotta have the helmet. So, I mean, it it that's what happened. They are the ones who stacked it up. You can see they even got two <laughs> helmets just outside of it on the floor, like like to show. It. See, it's not perfect. It's like. It is. <laughs> it's very it perfect. Is very Look perfect. at it. Uh, 
incredible. You could put this in a, you could put this in a graph and it would look, look normal. Yeah, to me, like, it's oh, a matter yeah. of uh, you know any normal person would be like, oh, it's it's to represent uh, the the great loss of life. It's it's not supposed like why are you looking at it this way? It's like yeah, I just think it's an amateur way to present it. I'm sorry, I just think yeah. it looks silly. Yeah, you could have done this by like having a narrator who might have sounded sad, or maybe an actress who looked sad, or it's just something else. Because I just see a pilot, a helmet, and I'm like, oh, I guess a lot of, there's a lot of dead elves. Which I don't, I don't really care about a lot of dead elves yet. Like in this story, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really feel a connection yet to this world. Um, so trying to people die. lay on the emotions. I think that's enough yeah. in the opening to say that. I mean, if they'd shown a series of corpses, I guess, or a whole field yeah. of just death and blood, I feel like that would get the point across better than this. this the music matched better. Of... That might help. Oh yeah, that it sounds yeah. almost triumphant and like happy and hopeful. This music, or it's. It doesn't feel like it matches the tone of what they want to say. Because if you were to look at this image of the massive helmet pile, and then were to say, "Okay, imagine music, imagine orchestral music over this," you probably wouldn't be thinking of what's actually playing over it. <laughs> I love this commentary. Silly is a style issue, not very objective. So I already highlighted all the ways this, the the helmet doesn't make sense. I'm also saying yeah. I think it's silly. Yes, I think it's silly. I don't think the music matches. The, right. Not everything we do is strictly objective. Sometimes we give subjective opinions and explain ourselves. Yeah, when I say something silly, then yeah, I, I guess that's not really objective. Kind of the point of the yeah, word. It's all you got us. No, no. everything yeah. we say is objective. Everything. <laughs> we'll have to go over it. Every, even the people who fucking like this show might even make the mistake of being like, "Wow, that's not very objective." <laughs> We're not always. We just like the, the. We want there to be a difference. We never said that we'd never say something that we feel. Yeah. Jesus. Um, so, they they casually just say like that we defeated Morgoth. It's like, yeah, they would show yeah, they that. Say, oh, this this war lost uh, yeah. lasted centuries. Here's the helmet pile. Also, we won. Yeah, we beat. Yeah, Morgoth. I just I was, saying we beat Morgoth. Okay. I was just like, we didn't even get to see him. Like, okay, we saw Sauron get beaten in the Lord of the Rings opening. I guess I'm referencing that for some reason. I don't know. It just pops into my head every once in a while. Yeah, weird. That was hmm. cool to see the final battle and his finger and he shrivels up and explodes and. You know, Isildur grabs the ring. That was neat. So but how, in, how, in this, what a, we get what a just way like... to get get you invested in 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 the in the, uh, in the movie. It's like, damn, look at all these soldiers. There's so yeah. many, and there's this big. Fight. We see Isildur like, watch his father yeah. get killed, and we're like, oh, that's yeah. Oh, that. and said, he has like a reaction to it. It's like, oh, poor Isildur. They may not have had the rights to show it. I think it's weird that they'd have the rights to say it, uh, like use all the names and to say that it happened, but not to portray it. But maybe. Um. So, well, um, we got, uh, that, that's just, that's just actually happened there also, like, but he's still got a servant that remains called Sauron. A lot of people go oh, nuts God. over this, uh, this, this visual here. Oh, before, before we move on, uh, just this, uh, the scene here where she's got that first helmet, um, that, what a thing to wear in this scenario, you know? <laughs> uh, I guess that's I, just what they, it's, it's a little wear. nitpicky, it's a little nitpicky. But not it wouldn't have been my choice of wardrobe if I was going to come out here after a battle to clean up the mess. With all not, the mud. I don't. Yeah, I I wouldn't have worn this. I you know I agree. I wouldn't have worn that either. <laughs> I wouldn't have worn that. Would not have been my first choice. <laughs> I would have probably worn gloves. Uh, I feel the same. My fan is too loud. It's pretty, I can barely hear Why it are myself. Why my subtitles so. in Arabic now? I didn't tell Blue it to do that. Is. Sorry. But so she had to put it on the helmet on top. She had to climb all the way up. <laughs> it's either that or the basketball maneuvers. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe they just all throw it generally and it, the pile just sorts itself out. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, I can't wait to believe that worked. God damn. I imagine just off screen there's a little guy who sorts it all out from lets them put it wherever they want and then he fixes it. <laughs> my pile. No way she's climbing up that with all of it, that all of it full. Like you know what? <laughs> you know, maybe because this is the part where she says, now we learned many words for death. It's like, you know what would have been really meaningful? It's like, maybe if you cried, like you had tears, if you showed an emotion that just wasn't resting bitch she face, is, she's maybe. She's stern, mm. Rag. She is stern. Very, very stern. That's what stern. they call it. Trust me, I'm sad is a, is, is a choice that you could make narratively. So... Uh, yeah, Sauron, he's, he's around. Look at him go. 
People are like, this is fucking glorious and amazing as a shot, and I'm just like, ah. Uh, I welcome. forgot about that shot. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's neat. I mean, it's just it's the cool factor. Look at him. Yeah, all look right. at him. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, it's a neat shot. Oh, you know, you got you got all his minions, and they're like, all right, boss, we're ready to go to the battles or whatever it is we do. And Saren's like, yeah, let me just, let me just be up here for a bit, looking out over all of you minions. I'm so proud of what we've accomplished. He's like, yeah, me too, boss. We're, we're, you've done um, a lot together. Yeah, and then and then she's like, my bro, he died. And uh, because he was looking for Sauron, uh, but unfortunately Sauron found him first and killed him. And, also not something we get to see. Yeah, and, and put his mark on him. And she was like, you know what, fuck that. I'm going to take up Why my brother's quest. Yeah, I, I guess <laughs> I, we'll find out. Um, she, and she did. She dropped a tear there, Rags. Look. See? Oh. Um, oh, oh, yeah, she does thing. that twice. Mm. She does it on the the on the, the little ship shipwrecky thingy. There's like there's a single tear that comes out of her eye. Almost feels but like it, um, it, it like her face doesn't really give it off, but that's fine. You know, just yeah, like, maybe she's just that. Maybe stoic. yeah, yeah, well, stoic and stern. Yeah. Okay, uh, so yeah, yeah. Well, it's stoic. very sad. But she's that's gonna take up the job of finding Sauron. Sauron. She don't fuck him up. Um. So yeah, they're like they they hunted him throughout all of Middle Earth. Took a while. Uh, More centuries pass. Yeah, which they say very pass, casually. Guys. It was like, just like, damn, a long time. So this could have been thousand thousand years already that we saw in this first couple of minutes. Steals from uh, the dead. A lot of centuries that just go by. Mm hmm. And lots of landscape shots. You know, they're up to all kinds of things. Looking. Yeah, For that Sauron, like, that gonna... pesky Sauron, just running around doing his own thing. Uh, that, that sack of shit. After boats, uh, which takes us to um, they're like scaling a fucking huge frozen mountain thing, and the first thought I had, very... and I think a couple people do, is just like, was this really the best, like way you could do this? Was there no other way? Yeah, this is this is <laughs> horse shit. There's no way you're doing this. Seems I saw that. Absolutely so the thing nuts. about mountains is that you could see them from a very long distance away, so you could plan your route to include not scaling up a, a massive vertical ice cliff with your knives. Um, yeah. Maybe well, Saren's at the top of this mountain. We gotta climb up to find him. That was one of the first things, the equipment. She's climbing with her fucking knife. What? And, and they're a little pointy feet. Well, Shoes. yeah, so just, there's there's so many things to consider in terms of, like, safety and yeah, efficiency, she, but... It, it's like, she, she uses the knife, but the other ones have, like, actual, like, uh, climbing gear. blood hooks. Uh, to some well, degree, we yeah. see a lot like, of that knife. That knife is her, it's her special knife. weapon. Oh, yeah. She's looking so, so they're all the time. Cool, cool. And she, knife. like, jumps, she, like, jumps yeah. and stabs the ice and everything. Yeah, and I'm which like, seems Fuckin so hell, unnecessary, but it's cool looking. That's all I got. It's well, that's so a, cool. That's a trailer shot, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, pretty much the fucking point of it, but, um, oh, just watching, I was already like, ugh, They don't have why, provisions what? or animals with them. They're just, they don't have, like, jackets or coats. It must be cold as fuck up there. Yeah, um, so they, they be struggling to, to get up there. And I think they, they eventually show, she's, so there's, like, a hearing command of a whole bunch of elves who, like I said, these guys are set to trying to find Sauron. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they, they only very narrowly make it to like, a, let's just say a platform of some kind, like a level of safety, and they all look up and she's just going right on ahead. She's fucking speed running this. It's just already just like, really? No, this this thing could have been like a whole season climbing this thing. It's, but yeah. we're all good, it's fine. Um, And I, I think it's supposed to give you a sense of the grand scale and adventure they go on for, for discovering whether or not Thorin is, is around. Um, but it also, I guess, informs the attitudes of her, her elven compatriots. Yeah, which... we are tired of fucking climbing. Can't we just walk around the mountain? <laughs> and she's like, no. This then I the can't have my way. trailer shot. Um, but yeah, he basically tells her that uh, he wants to go back down. Which I thought was kind of funny, right? Like, after all that, you'd think you'd at least search up here a little bit. <laughs> like, yeah, we might as well. We did come what, what a go. <laughs> like, I'll go I have ice on my face. We have ice on our faces. Mm -hmm. Why didn't this we bring sucked. hoods? What, what, is, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, we should have brought jackets. Yeah. 
Um, and then he says, uh, as a point of, like, why we should bother, you know, how long can living flesh endure with sunlight fears to tread, implying that where they're going, there is no sunlight. So what are the odds of orcs and Sauron being there? Which I was like, wait. Pretty high, probably. Isn't that, like, the whole thing <laughs> with them? Tie, they right? they thrive yeah. in darkness? Isn't that the whole yeah. thing? And didn't, uh... It, didn't he put out the big magic tree? So he darkness is all right with him. I suppose. he likes darkness. I'm pretty darkness. sure they're very pro. Yeah, they fought the orcs. They must know they're about pro this. darkness. Yeah, I mean Mordor was like a pretty dark place, and a lot of and a lot of times, you know, it was smoky and everything. So that's yeah. And it's just maybe know. my information is outdated, and the old orcs actually really liked the light. That must have been it. But I, I just I thought this was weird. I I, I was. It genuinely comes across as a character saying like, "Why would fish like water?" And you're like, um. I don't know. Uh, what? The, the, to the point where, aren't orcs, like, scared of sunlight? Trolls, like, burn in sunlight or turn to stone or whatever. Like, they the... Troll, yeah, they do. All sorts of nasty stuff is in the darkness. I thought that's, like, the point. The light is what, you know, all, like, all the critters that come out at night. You know, they're not... Uh, someone said, uh, it's literally in the show. Are you guys okay? Like... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious why an elf of a thousand years of warring and understanding the, the difference and, and necessary implications of orcs is wondering why an orc would be happy in darkness. Do you not, do you not think that's weird? <laughs> that's really fucking dumb? I don't know. Before they have their conversation, they do that thing that they do a lot where they show, in particular, her, like, drawing her dagger and it makes the shink sound. Oh, they like the shinks, yeah. She she takes out the dagger to point at a thing on the map, and that's it. That's all. And then oh, she puts yeah. it back in. Just use your fingers. You have to. You gotta those. show her. You gotta show her drawing that dagger out again. Because someone said, yeah, it's just the fact that they they don't know the law. It's like I don't think the show knows itself. Like I'm not even questioning whether or not it understands the law. We've been we've been shown already that they're very preferable to the darkness. That's why it's weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that, that had me a little bit confused when I was watching it. I was like, that doesn't seem like something that you would, you know, say out loud. Only problem is you said Sauron extinguished the tree. I didn't, if I said that, I didn't mean to. I or Morgoth. Yeah. Morgoth did, not Sauron. Morgoth. Mm -hmm. But Sauron and him are like, they're, they're buds, right? They're pretty close, I think, yeah. So I imagine if, if Sauron wasn't okay with Morgoth putting out the light tree, then, <laughs> you know, that... They they are in cahoots, so to speak. So, um, of course, orcs like the dark. He's saying the elves won't survive if they go there. Bro, look at what he says. It ain't that they aren't gonna survive. It's why the... are the subtitles in Arabic again? <laughs> <laughs> it keeps changing the subtitles to Arabic. And speak their language. He's trying to say that there's no point in looking for the orcs because he's pretty sure that they're fucking dead. And then uh, he's like, how long can they survive with sunlight is not going to be there? Because uh, I just I just think that it's a retarded thing to say. That's all. I, I guess, yeah, he's how long can living flesh endure where even sunlight fears to tread? Which So I guess it's referring to themselves? Like, we're not going to last long in well, places. Wait, hang on. Wait a minute. Uh, orcs not living flesh? That's news to me. I don't know. Maybe... Like, I don't know, like, the spooky thing? Like, they're, he could be referring to either himself or the orcs, right? I assumed he was... Because like, it, came, no... it came right after saying that uh, there's no reason to assume there's any more orcs. So, it, like, if yeah. there's no orcs, and the commanders are right, and their enemies know more, then we're just going to hurt ourselves. Like, we can't even endure here anyway. And maybe the orcs are just dead after all this time, so we should go. Yeah, like, well, I mean, we already know it's dangerous for the elves. It's fucking, it doesn't even matter if there is sunlight if they're doing shit like this. It's hyper dangerous for yeah. the elves. What I'm talking about is it's weird. The orcs in canon are living? I would have thought the orcs would be considered living. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think that would that would mean he's, uh, like I said, I, I thought he was talking about the orcs because it came right after a line about the orcs. Um. It's obviously the orcs. Are with it. Okay, I'm getting a little bit too confused. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> like, it's, regardless, they want to go back. They want to go back and get see if uh, yeah. what's up with 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 everything because this has been this has been trying to say the least. She wants to carry on, 
And, uh, yeah. That's why the scene doing this for a while. Says that, uh, like she's like, the light's almost over. It's almost night. We're losing the light. It, that, that's just how the conversation ends and she walks away. Yeah. Which happens a lot in the show. The scenes just sort of end when I feel like the scene is not over. Like, hey, we all want to leave. Um, it's, uh, you know, darkness, living flesh. We, we should probably go. There's probably no more orcs. She's like, oh, we're losing the light and walks away. And that's our yeah. scene ending. I'm like, oh, I, I didn't really. I feel like we should. We had more to say. There's something I thought was weird is that they they move on and one of their party falls like it happens in the trailer and he's like wait we've oh got to, yeah we've got to help out and she's like no we keep moving they cut it off keep there moving. in the trailer um but in the show she does stop and help them yeah sort of helps him she adds more weight to him uh well also I, I mean i just i just find it weird because it sells a very different uh attitude in yeah the, yeah, she's trying to make maybe the trailer warmer. was trying to say that g maybe yeah I think he didn't probably didn't collapse because he was too cold it's because he's fucking tired of walking against the wind they have to walk single file like sand people against the wind well they do that and then they need to help him then they just stop doing that and they just walk around fine also I don't I don't know what happened to Frank I, I hope he's okay <laughs> I hope he's okay too it, he, it yeah. looks like he just went totally offline, so I imagine that his yeah, it seems like it just, flumed yeah. up all the way. Yeah, yeah, he's he's off on uh, on Discord, but he also yeah. said he was feeling a little ill. So I, uh, we'll find out. We'll get a that's we'll a mystery box out. for you, everybody. Oh he's my been, god, he's been cursed. So um, so, so yeah, it, it, it's weird how they do this single file walk, and then they have to help the guy, and then they just walk around normally, like there's no wind anymore. It's really weird. Yeah, uh, I, it was disappointing that they have a conversation and it, it's almost as though there is no blizzard at all. Yep. Um, but okay. And then it's super awkward too because he's like, we should be there by now. And then she sort of just looks and goes, oh, we are. Like, like, <laughs> there it what? is. Oh, <laughs> oh we lucky. should have looked up this they whole have this... time. There it is. It's right there. <laughs> it's this fucking... massive evil fortress. Is I don't right there. Yeah, I was, I was totally lost with this because there's constant lightning strikes, right? But they imply that a lightning strike reveals that this thing is here. And it's like, no. I'm sorry. Just chat. You can see this. How did you miss this? <laughs> I feel like Especially you can see cause... this very far away. Because it, what's weird, too, is that he knows to turn around and look at it when the lightning strike, when the flash happens yeah, and there's yeah, light. Like, oh, he knows to turn around and look at it. Like there's been some sort of like sound effect that you've discovered a secret in the video game. Yeah. It's the Tomb Raider. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> ba -da -da -da. I don't guess stuff like this sometimes when they're filming because they must have been like, it's like, wait, you've been walking here this whole time. You, how did you not see this? Like, you, you, And then you... she turns around and looks at the other one. Well, yeah, there's, like, there's how like did a... you know to look at both of them into back to back? It seems to me that they have like a logistics thing of there should be this statue over here, this statue over here, and the thing we're looking for is in between them. And then they realize, oh, we're uh -huh. between the two things. That means we must be there. And then they look and they go, we are. But it's like, yeah, but look at oh. this thing. <laughs> Come on. I hate the Amazon player. This is the third time it has just swapped the subtitles to Arabic for no reason. You have like VP VPN on or something. No. No? Okay. Weird. Ain't no one. No one speaks Arabic in Arkansas. All right. <laughs> Fine. But yeah. Uh, so we're here. Um, yeah. I forget. Uh, what are they, what do they say this place is? Like the last place they knew that orcs were, or something like that. It's like yeah. Spookyville. Yeah. Terrifying. Um, this is where they something. Yeah. Orcs something gathered here for the last time. Almost must yeah. have escaped than we ever imagined. You'd think they would have been, they would have checked this place before. It's this been is where centuries. they gathered. This is like where the orcs gathered after Morgoth's defeat, she says. Which means they must have checked here before, right? You'd think. I mean, but it's been hundreds of better. years or something, right? Like the, our timeline, this, an insane amount of time has passed. Um, so, yeah, the, the, this is, this. like I said, just the, that's why they're here to, to inspect, to see if they can get any clues as to the. You know where the orcs are now, where Sauron is now, and we get quite a quite a famously interesting line from this show. This guy has put his hand on on his torch, uh, and he's like, "My hand is past feeling." His theory, of course, that he's lost feeling in his hand. Uh, it's cold. Yeah, because it's cold as fuck. And, and she's like, "No, no. The truth <laughs> is, this place is so evil. How the, evil is it? The torches do not give off warmth. Wow, that is evil." <laughs> 
That's uh, evil, man. Which, that's a new one. I, I haven't heard that before. I laughed so fucking hard when she said that. <laughs> oh, man, I couldn't believe that was an actual line that she said. It's evil. This place is really evil. It's so evil. Oh, torches is give off no warmth. It's like, Jesus Christ. Why we're would a, she write We're in a problem of just, you know, how fucking physics work. Or I think this is physics, right? It clears classification. It's like, you can't have... It's light. Like, it's, it gives off... It's the, the way that fire... Uh, it's magic. It's evil magic. Does that even make sense as an answer? It's magic? I don't even know that that yeah. works. I don't. I don't, I, the, I don't know that it does. The magic means the magic means that no warmth is coming off the torches because it's so evil. I don't know that it's like saying he's a married bachelor. Yeah, because magic. Like that doesn't. I don't understand how magic. Well, makes no, it it's work. not. Magic is like it. It's a special sort of rule set that sort of can be blanketed onto things. And as 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 long as I guess it's consistent here. Like, I guess I don't mechanically have an issue with this special place being so fucking evil that. It's like like an evil magic and torches don't give off warmth. You don't Do take issue with evil stopping fire from having heat. It's it's like evil magic fortress. <laughs> okay. I don't know. It's my que I have other questions like do we not give off warmth like our bodies are we just going to fucking die? Are, are, is our, our blood is our blood gonna freeze in our veins because we don't give off warmth? I have no fucking clue how any of it could possibly make any sense. Is it is it like an aura within this castle or whatever it is? Or yeah, when you so. you get to the door, right, and then like legally they have a like a domain, right? Like and, and so when their their property line ends, then you could start feeling the torch again. Or maybe it's progressive where. In the center, like that, like at his at his throne, it's the most evilest, and that's where the torch there's like no light at all. And then the further you get away from it progressively, then the more light, the more warmth your torch puts out until it's just a normal torch again. Does that mm. go for the body heat as well? That's that's what I was asking earlier. I was like, body yeah. heat wise, is our blood gonna freeze in our veins and we just die? Because if the torch can maybe it's just fire specifically, like fire. Like oh, like we we all know how much Morgoth hates fire, so he. It's so awkward he, because in a, in a bit we see something with heat happening, so that's awkward. Yeah, there's. <laughs> uh, I, I guess it's weird. Yeah, I, I I guess there's something there that I'm I'm like I'm less like eh, like it, this place sure is evil. I just that I our think... torches don't make warmth. Having it be like super windy and cold in there and the torches just aren't as effective or something would have been fine. You don't need to say it's so evil our torches are less heaty. Like I just I There could have been a it would have been a better way if if they said that there was like some uh, like some unnatural chill to the air. Cause that's often regarded as like a spooky thing, is that it's unnaturally cold and you shiver. That's an evil thing. They could have said something like that instead of going with the torch no warmy route. Could have been something else. Like, oh, it was like even like like you could really show their breath being super visible because it's that's how cold it is. And or maybe the one of the elves says, How come it's colder in here than out there? Something along those lines. Mm. Um, and so he punches a wall of ice. Dude, she's strong. To be fair, to be fair, Mahler, she does see her reflection in the ice. And much like many of <laughs> people much like many people in the audience. She just wants to punch her. Man, this this expression as she's punched, she's very. She's like, um, no, she's, she's like mm. you might describe her as stone faced. She's uh, yeah, she's ice faced. Also, also the way she does punch it, it doesn't even look like she's punching at full power. She's like, no, mm. it's like and then eh. does it the second time and it goes through, and it looks to be pretty thick. So I'm like, god damn, you're very strong apparently. That's yeah, she's real crazy. strong. Uh, yeah, so she why just the walked fuck over she... to it. She yeah. she just sees her reflection and punches it. I mean, it might have been worthwhile and using a tool, but instead you punch the ice like an idiot. Yeah, By the <laughs> way, everyone at home, everyone at home, don't punch ice. You'll no. hurt your hand. It hurts. Don't yeah. punch ice. We it's like, it's like punching it. a rock. But do not do it. What? Why would you do it? Okay, it's fine. It's fine. We'll just right along. She's uh, she, she figures out through the ice. It says a door was filled in here. Yeah, there's there's a secret little room behind this place. 
fucking get rid of this wall. I, they probably used actual tools to do that. I don't know. Yeah. They just sort of they, <laughs> just just, they don't of really punch. show it. They just keep punching. Kind of. They all just start punching it like Chris Redfield. <laughs> like, oh, oh, oh. And uh, it's just like a door. They they just sort of punch it. And then they didn't CGI enough rubble. I think that's part of the issue. So they just sort of have this big old opening. And there's just a little bit of rubble mm. on the floor. And so we enter. I wonder how she knew. Uh, she looked into the eye, saw a reflection. I, I think maybe the... the did, was there? Was it thin? Was that the idea? I d didn't look thin, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, well, the other ones seem to have been using their swords and stuff because you see one guy putting a sword back in. So they used maybe. Tools. So he hit. He used his sword to hit the ice. I guess you. I. I would have picked up like a rock or something instead of using my sword to try. Well, and... they have their fucking climbing tools they can just use. Yeah, there's a point. Like one hammer between them all. I assume they thought maybe that they may need one. Just, I don't know. Just gonna be rocks flying around to just hit it with rocks. Yeah. Like a hammer. I mean, the the backside of that pickaxe thingy they use to climb that has like a hammer thing, if I recall yeah. correctly. So yeah, the, 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 yeah. I mean, we don't see any of this, but well, you know, yeah. They enter a spooky yeah. room where orcs were experimented this is a very on. Very room. Mm -hmm. Um, she sees this as like, oh man, this is we're looking. This is lots of good proof. But he's sort of he's sort of like, nah, this happened this ages ago. This Oh. These orcs were meddling with the powers of the unseen world. Yeah, how about that? So I, I, I accept that. All right. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I, <laughs> I will believe you that they were doing that. One yeah. of them's like trapped in a wall. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh... yeah, like a, it's like an episode of Star Trek. Dark sorcery of old. And uh, mm. so she's like, "What's going on here? What is this all about?" It's not even that newfangled dark sorcery. No, it's all that old. It's, old it's all stuff. that that old classic, that good shit. And so yeah, she's like, "Oh, okay." So uh, you know, I guess, I guess that's it. But then a snowflake falls on something and goes sizzles. Yeah. She watch. She watches it as it falls. It doesn't even have to do anything. She just really wants to look at this snowflake. Yeah, in front of her. <laughs> it's, just like, and well, it's just in front of her, and it focuses on it. She really, well, really is interested in this snowflake. The thing is, it should just be sizzling all the time because it's still snowing inside this cave. So Correct. there's just plenty of. You're right. Actually, why around. wouldn't they make it so that the sound made her go? Wait, what? Sound. Mm. It should be steaming this whole time in yeah. this one particular it? place. Yeah, like oh, what's this? Is this an altar or an anvil? And they just sort of notice little th 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 as the snowflakes hit it. Yeah. And it so, didn't have to um, do something stupid like this. This could have just been, oh, wait, what's this weird sound? As it just says, like, oh, look at this. That's odd. I'm not quite sure how this works exactly, but there's a there's a marcasar on here, and she drops water on it, and it all steams as though it's super duper hot. And then it freezes yeah. around it. Um, yeah, apparently only the marks, mark parts are hot. The rest of it is cold. Yeah. So the... So the so that increases the coincidence of her having to just randomly focus on a snowflake. Mm -hmm. And that snowflake was the one that just happened to hit the tiny, tiny, tiny bit of the rock that was the symbol part. It's, it's very odd how they did all I assume all it was this. the whole stone was was like evil. Um, also, how did they keep their own water <laughs> unfrozen, like liquid? Shouldn't and wait a second, well? if it's... If it's so evil that the torches don't put out warmth, then how come the rock with his symbol on it, well, which should be like the most different. evil thing of all? Oh, okay. Yeah. He's, I I, he's I retract yeah. my observation. Well, this is why that's entirely. what Mel was bringing up. Is like his mark gives off loads of heat, and yet yeah, uh, the, but the, the evilness don't takes heat away. You're like I I, I sure. maybe he's jealous. Like I'm the only hot one in here. Maybe maybe he grabs maybe. it all up for himself. He's taking it from. Heat oh sources. yeah, he yeah. sucks up the energy so that he can have a hot symbol. There Maybe it's evil heat, and evil heat is fine. Yeah, that's true. It's like a lava monster, or so, a Balrog, or... Then comes what I feel is a one-two punch of strange lines. One, the Marcosaurin is here as a guide for orcs. It's like a trail. They have to follow it. It's like, oh. It's like, oh I didn't know that was a, true, but okay. That's a hypothesis that you um, just came up with. Someone might be like, why would you take issue with that? It's like, well... Is that not something all of them should know? Is that true? Is that proven? And if it is, then yeah, we should be following this, surely. But if it's not, and she's just made that up on the spot, then they should be like, what the fuck, where'd you get that from? 
It's one or the yeah. other, right? It's not just, you can't have it both ways. Like, she's telling him as though he didn't know, and it's like, but their whole mission is to extinguish Sauron from yeah. the world, so they must know about his marks, and they must know what the marks mean. Or, uh, she just made that up, I, I don't know. And surely um, his fortress would have his marks everywhere, just anyway, right? Bit, yeah, that's, I mean, that's fair. But later on, um, I think it's uh, it's Elrond who says they looked into the mark, and they're, they're not, like, really sure about it or whatever, so it's like, so she did just make this up, right? I, I guess so. Which I, is... I I do not know where she's getting this information. Wherever she got it, I guess she hasn't shared this with the rest of her group, or they're not aware of it. And then, as if that wasn't enough to make me be like, uh, uh she then says, the last time I saw it was on my brother. As if yeah, to imply like, the orcs what? have to follow the brother's body as part of a trail of symbols? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Well, if they find the brother, maybe they'll find more elves. In I, fact, they'll almost certainly find more elves. And I remember everyone that that was centuries ago then yeah, that she last uh, seen this mark. While they were all out there memory. for if, centuries hunting these fuckers. If, you don't forget that sort of thing. You don't forget a mark on your brother's dead body. Of all yeah, the times just they've seen... They haven't seen it. All the times they've seen marks of Sauron, right? She has concluded they they've designed sort of uh, they they represent a trail for orcs to follow. Like, okay, so what are the, what are the ones in total we've got? We've got this one in this fortress, like sure. And what's the other one we've seen so far? It's like the one that is on the corpse of my brother, that is probably buried now. It's just like so. Yeah. Really, it doesn't feel like you've got much to go on. But they they didn't tell me anymore. So I've, I've, they put this line right after it. Like the mark was left mm -hmm. as a trail for orcs to follow. It's like that's a piece of information. What else we got? The last that's one. Certainly a hypothesis. It, last time I saw it was on my brother centuries ago. So you've yeah. only seen two. <laughs> one of them's on a corpse underground, and you've concluded. Well, to be fair, it's much like it's just like America Chavez's portals. Okay, the mm. mark on her brother led her here to this mark. It's like a trail, and this mark will lead her to the next mark. I it see. makes total sense. <laughs> so yeah, I this was already... Is, is totally plausible. I was already super confused, and then she says, we must follow it, and I'm like, okay, I, 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 I just, just... where? I just... Wherever it goes. Don't... Like, maybe it's do, pointing do we... in a direction, like the little prong. Yeah, yeah that's what it was, but pointing... it's like, just follow the pointy end? I don't know. <laughs> And, and then, also, like, good luck doing that, because what if, how do you know where it's point? Like, once you leave the fortress, like, okay, we have the, we have the symbol in this room. Once we leave the fortress, we're going to have to have a really good sense of direction to mm -hmm. know where that symbol on the inside of this fortress was pointing relative to outside of the fortress. I, I, yeah, I was getting so fucking lost trying to understand what the fuck's going on. And then she's like, it's a symbol of they're probably lying in wait, gathering strength. And he's like, oh, they're long dead. I was like, okay, so you guys have been tasked with finding that out, correct? That's like your job. You got to go make I guess, sure but every I, every orc is and extinguished. They've been doing this for centuries, but they're so they've been they've been doing this for centuries, I guess. Mm -hmm. But they were, but early, later we learned that she was months past due. Yeah, yeah. which well, we, is we, like I mean, we learned that now. He says we've exceeded our orders months ago, which is a good argument for going back. So the only reason yeah, why yeah. I would say now. If she's been months over and you haven't found anything for those months, but now you just found this place, like, uh, I guess, I guess I'm stuck in between. It's like, is that good enough reason to continue or not? What, what do you usually do when, when you find stuff like this? Because it sounds like you haven't found a, a mark of Sauron is a pretty big deal, right? If you haven't seen one since centuries ago, it sh definitely should be, yeah. Seems and even then, like I, how far are they from home? Because at this point, you're like, well, we know the fortress is here. We know there's a symbol. We have been gone for far longer than we're supposed to. The people at home might be worrying about us because we're months late. That's probably something we should attend. We can come back. You know, we've been at this for centuries. What's yeah. another, you know, trip back and forth to regather our strength, to rest, maybe to bring like a larger force now that we have a clue? Um, it, we can come back here later. The fortress isn't moving unless it's so fucking evil that it moves or whatever. So we can come back later <laughs> and do more. I, uh, that's the thing, that conversation never happens, because I don't, I don't know exactly. if the, the counter-argument would be, well, we're here now, so, uh, like, but I don't know how much more she wants to explore, she just says the north, or going north, so that could mean, yeah. that could mean another whole century, I don't even know. Or it could mean just go look and see if there's anything obvious or not, I, I, like I said, I, I do not know, uh, so, yeah, the, it's clear at this point they all want to go back home, um, yeah, he's like, not. Back home. 
wants to get that that saw on. Um, I think that when we get the uh, big old fight scene. So fucking dumb. Um, very shortly after, yeah. Yeah, because she says, uh, we we gotta wait until everything. It's, it's clear that the the enemy is gone, and I mean, if those were the orders, that's a, finding that mark, I think is good enough. But he keeps, you know, he keeps saying that all oh, this is long dead. So I don't know. I just I kind of wish there was more discussion about it. It sort of uh, just ends. Yeah. Yeah, and we get this. She says, like, I until we're certain that every trace of our enemy is vanquished, she says, I can never return home. I can never return. That's more of Which is own, like, I don't know, you can take a thing. break, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, like, you're leading Man, a group that passion, of though. You know, keeping going for centuries. Not yeah, bad. Yeah. She really. I'm not saying it's impossible, Man, just saying, you know, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I could ever hate anything that much. Yeah. You sort of. <laughs> just other things happen, and then you sort of. Yeah, at some point, I just, just want to go home. I just want to take a shit at home, you know? Mm hmm. Um, my, my, I'm going to go poop on my own tree. So this, this poor guy, he's just having a little wander in the cave, unfortunately. There be a snow troll. And he shouts snow. out, Snow yeah. troll! So, and then it goes, blah, 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 blah. And mm -hmm. uh, that, however, the shouting, the rumbling, the screaming stuff, that's not enough to alert Galadriel and friend. I thought well, it was really weird. Chilling. It's a big fortress. It's a big fortress. They not even, well, it is big, but they're not that far away. They're just through that yeah, little doorway. The, the fortress is so evil that ah. their voice puts out no volume. <laughs> Well, then why did they get alerted by the volume in a minute? <laughs> well, that's because they sense the vibrations in yeah. the stones. I see. Of the running and the torch hitting the ground. The troll they could see the up. light, but they couldn't feel the warmth. Yeah. He throws a big old ice block at them, and they're like, wah! And then Galadriel pops out, and this part is weird, right? She turns up, and she's a good, <laughs> I think, two meters, maybe three, three meters away from the snow troll. But if you, like... Keep an eye on the time code. She just sort of watches it annihilate everybody for a while. Yep, she does watch a little bit. Um, it's a bit awkward. They got their swords on their arms like that. I'm like, what are you doing? Um, and yeah, this poor guy's just getting getting fucked up. And I don't stand a chance against this guy. He's a, he's a big old chungus. But uh, then we can't. <laughs> I don't. I guess this is something they do. He, he like draws his sword and uses it as a ramp for her. Um, this yeah. is pre they pre-planned this. She knew exactly what to. Th this was. I guess this is something they often do. Planned. Okay. It's, it's, yeah. That's really like cool. Standard also, I maneuver. Get, before we do the jump, I just thought all the way that all the elves just get like punched and everything. It's mm -hmm. like, what? Do you, what were y'all doing? A lot oh, of yeah, you guys, all... you just like ran up to it and just got punched. Like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? <laughs> they were all doing a very suck. shitty job. It's not. It's undeniable. But yeah, so she does this retarded fucking jump. It's yeah. very, and then. Oh god, I want to make sure. I think it's not even a ramp. I think she, he actually kind of throws he, her. Yeah, he like throws the, her with up. The sword. With the oh, sword. Really? <laughs> Is that what they were going for? I didn't notice that. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. He, he like lifts this. Once she, she, he has that motion where he's like throwing her with his sword. Yeah. Whatever we're describing, it's on the visuals probably. Oh, I see are, what you mean. Yeah, I can see it now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeet. <laughs> It's so fucking dumb, dude. Out, yeah. This guy's go get it. Yeah, it just looks it looks like bad wire work. Like it's really hard to not see how awkward this looks. So Yeah. She slices it just before it's gonna get some guy, and then she does flourish flourish to like what are you doing, woman? Right there. Oh, I hate she that. She should have just ran. She would have been there faster if she would just ran instead of waiting for this. Oh thing. man, look at this I... editing. When you because we did this with She Hulk, um, it's a similar mm. thing that happens, but right? So you got swish, 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 and then like slice, hard cut, and she's already back to being like readying a stance, okay? Mm -hmm. And then hard cut again, she's slicing. It's like, what? Wh ah, the continuity of the fight is hurting my brain. Mm. Um, but yeah, she's just slice and slice and slice, and she's dominating. Beating it up. This this is to let you know that Galadriel is not to be fucked with. All right. Yeah, she won. She single handedly kills the snow troll. Hey, she remember when really cool? Remember when trolls were like really dangerous in Lord of the Rings? Um, <laughs> like <don't... laughs> he just pokes it in the head and it dies. It's very silly. Dude, the the poke was really weird. Yeah. Um, it was very strange. All right, thoughts on blood splattering onto the screen. I didn't even notice that. That's super fun. I didn't cringe. notice it either. <laughs> I did. And it was kind of, kind of, I don't know. 
Doesn't Wait, really where, matter. Where really is it? Like... When she ki when she cuts its jaw, right? Is that when it happens? The frame that's just... being shown right yeah, now. Uh, yeah. Oh, I have to look right. at this stream. Uh... I think it. I think it just like for a brief second kind of took me out of it. It's like, oh, this, this. I don't know. Seems like a little bit weird in a fantasy show, you know, to acknowledge. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. But yeah. Like, it's, I don't. You know, whatever. It's. Not it's... A big deal. It is absolutely, yeah. I wouldn't even say it's a nitpick, it is a nothing, but I'm interested yeah. to hear what people's feelings are on it, that's what I'm saying. Uh, my god, mm. it really did. I think it's actually pretty fucking cringe. <laughs> I, I, it, I think, yeah, I think it's cringe. It's trying to make it like, she's even more badass. She's spraying the orc blood all over, like, you're a part of this. Like, you're, oh, you're, you're an so. accessory in the, the, yeah, the witnessing this. It's totally different. It's just that it seems weird to me in a fantasy fantasy it seems fantasy. To the camera. <laughs> this is a fantasy like, so, show, just so we're clear. Yeah, <laughs> fantasy. I don't. It's super out of place. You're I, right. I, Fringy's also right. I. I. It is weird because it makes me think of a camera, which oh, is yeah. not a very fantasy thing to think about. So I think John said it in chat. It's just like it, it took him out because it does not feel like it suits. It's way too gritty for something like what you would expect from what the show was going for. And I think that's pretty much the take. I, I don't know that uh, this. That, like, yeah. Again, it, 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 I, I don't know how else to explain it. Um, it was just like, wait, what? It doesn't feel like an aesthetic choice that matches this genre at all, which is yeah. doesn't mean you can't do it. Just, okay, that's happening. Which, by the way, does, does this happen like again in either of the two episodes? I don't think so. I, I mean, I didn't even re remember that. Didn't even see this one, so I. I'm just I don't glad. Know. I'm glad they didn't spray the camera with the chocolate cow milk. Ew. <laughs> that would have been nasty. That was some grade A hot cream. Or when, or when the little, when, or when the nasty ass proto hobbits are squeezing berries and all that shit's flying everywhere <laughs> like I've never eaten before. I don't want that on the camera. No, no, no. I don't. Froze. No, that's not good. That's that's a classic, is that that is. Metal, uh, you, so, um, yeah, I, yes, you almost in yes. a bigoted way brought up this other thing called Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I did. Uh, and you were doing it specifically to talk about the efficiency, or the, 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 the sort of scariness of a troll and how long it takes yes. to, to kill those boys. Um, because if you remember, I'm thinking of the Moria fight specifically, where yeah. we have the whole fellowship fighting the big-ass troll in this one room. Uh, to be fair, plus... a whole lot of orcs but we have a lot of very capable fighters there uh that are very yeah. very good at fighting very good and if i recall correctly it's been a while since i've seen the the the, the, the rings of the lords uh but as al always at least two of them focusing the troll uh at once i think maybe <clears throat> maybe even three sometimes uh and they, they are struggling against that guy. And it's a very engaging fight to, to watch. And Frodo almost even dies. So, yeah, uh, it's just much more interesting. We see that this thing is actually really scary to fight, even for these super good, capable fighters that we've known to be yeah very good at fighting. And it's a very effective way to show how good our characters are, but also showing that there are stakes to be had. People are in actual danger. And here we just have like, oogly boogly, slice, 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 dead. Yeah. Kind yeah. of, yeah. It's like, aren't I a badass? It's like, yeah, aren't you? This is writing opportunities is what people would probably call it. Um, in Fellowship, mm -hmm. you have them synergize quite a few times. You have characters saving mm -hmm. each other's lives. Uh, Baromir is kind of on awkward terms with Aragorn at this point in the story. He's already made clear why you'll understand better as well as... Uh, the more you understand about the whole story, but there's a point where Boromir is about to be killed and Aragorn saves him, and he's like, oh shit. Um, yeah, yeah, Merry, Pippin, Sam, and Frodo, all making a difference in this fight against this giant monster. The fact that uh, the orcs are event and the goblins, sorry, are wiped out and it's the troll that's left and everyone has to work together to take it down, and you get obviously the is Frodo dead sort of moment. There's loads of... Feels um, very boss fighty. Yeah, well, I fucking yeah. love the the fight in Moria. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, awesome. And it, it felt like a huge victory when they get him, and that's why it makes even it's it's the fact that like we're like we did it right, and then Gandalf's like we have to run, like something worse is about to arrive. It's like oh shit, yeah. talk about raising stakes and stuff. Um, and, you know, in Rings of Power, it's like the way she kills it isn't necessarily um. You know, like it, it, it slice, 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 and it it runs out of its health bar eventually. Um, it's just like 
Oh. Okay. She just single-handedly does it, and it looks like it was really easy. She takes no damage. It, it's, yep. it's very... Like, she looks bored, like, and annoyed that she had to do this. And she was mm. also watching her guys getting yeeted around for, like, a couple of seconds before even realizing what's going on. Or yeah, doing you, something. You have the question of just, why didn't you make it so that she arrives? And this is someone else suggested on Friday Night Tights. Like, you, you have her be like, she calls them by name and tells them what move they should take. And then, you know, it synergizes with friends to yeah, get some hits off. <laughs> And you have her Lead get it hit to at the some such point. And such room where there's pillars or we have cover or it, don't fight it out in the open or something. I get something. It's the word of the day. And I would something. even suggest using fire, but of course fire doesn't have any heat anymore, so... I don't know if it's useful. <laughs> it's like to annoy the snow troll. You'd think it wouldn't like fire, but I suppose it wouldn't matter in yeah. this area. Um. So, yeah, you're just like, oh, okay. So it's a really awkwardly edited action moment where she just dominates uh, while everyone else was shit. It's just like, alright, fine, if that's what you want to do. Um, yeah, and right after that, they're like, fuck this, we don't want to play your games anymore, you suck. Uh, I think at this point they've given us enough groundwork to understand why they want to go home. They don't like this adventure, okay? It's a, not a fun one. It's not fun anymore. They also, don't. she's stealing all the XP. Yeah, <laughs> didn't even share. But, you know, it's one of those situations where you're just like, I don't know, I, f I don't want to walk around for another century. I want to go home. I want to play video yeah. games. Go home. Yeah, yeah. I think two centuries were enough, Commander. Can we please go home, have like a shower or something? It would be nice. Yeah. Right, so, yeah, I guess they decide to go back, right? Because they're like, yeah, they're, they're all like, we're going to... We're gonna fucking abandon they you. They put their swords down, yeah. They do, yeah. which um, I guess that's symbolic because you're not gonna leave them, right? You are gonna take them with you. Surely not, yeah. They need those. They do good stuff against snow trolls, for example. Fuck them up. They they talked about this earlier because he pulls out his sword and she's like, "You, if you're gonna go, you're gonna do so alone." Mm -hmm. And one of them puts down his bow, <laughs> or it, like it's it's just what like it's symbolic. The time. Like we're putting down our weapons. We're not following. You're quite the opposite of you have my sword and my bow and my axe. You know, it's it's you do not have them. I'm putting them on the you floor. No one has them. them. Um, so yeah. that that's that's yeah, that's your opening almost. Well, I guess we you had the op that's our third scene or third event. I'm trying to categorize yeah. this better, but it's time to introduce the the Harfoots, which are like Harfoots. totally not hobbits. I think I guess is the angle. So. Uh, uh, chat me up here because I'm I'm so confused what happened there. They weren't allowed to use hobbits, so they had to make up Harfoots. Or Apparently, the legally, yeah, they can't they can't touch hobbits. Or something. Um, so they. Or I think what Gary said was that there's there are no there are no anything in this era that the of the of, they want hobbits, but they're not allowed them. So this is the closest they they could get something like that. Okay. Um. But uh, people in chat will know better about this. I, I am not as aware. All I know is that uh, they... Apparently, Harfoots are older hobbits. Okay. Proto hobbits. Hobbin time. <laughs> it's hobbin. Uh, so... They're hobo erectus. Well, yeah, the first thing you learn is that they're not, um, they're not a clean people. They don't, they don't like being clean, which is... Oh, they, you know, they, no they, one too. likes... Mahler, no one fucking likes being clean in this show. In Everyone this loves being dirty <laughs> and covered in grime. And Except nasty. the elves. Yeah. Except the elves, yeah. Except the elves and the one uh, village protagonist who's allowed to wear color. But apart from that, everyone's just dirty and grimy yeah. and nasty. Mm -hmm. Imagine this fucking smell. <laughs> no, I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, yeah, we get introduced to our, I guess, POV character for the Harfoots, which is Nori. Um, no. Oh, we see. What no. about the two little traveler guys with the big ass fucking I, I, I don't know what to say about them. The the two guys traveling with it, big old antler things on their back. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's, that's all what we got. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. That's about them. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, and you got Lenny Henry is like talking about how that's a sign. Those travelers are a sign of something. Mm -hmm. Uh. You'll say more of that as time goes on, but yeah. So currently, Nori is out gathering berries, and I think the first lines she has are something like, um, "If we did everything we were supposed to do, we wouldn't do very, very much at all," which is basically 
constant in all of her like intro scenes. Everybody's talking about how she's she's a person that doesn't do what she's told to do. She's not like other girls. They Mahler. keep saying it over and over mm -hmm. again. It's like, why can't you just show it? You for don't sure need to tell me that. that. When a character says for you're sure not supposed that. to be out there fucking collecting berries, you asshole, and then she's like, oh, I wanted to. That's already it. You've already done it. Yeah, you did it. Yeah, but the why, thing not, is, why not go out and collect point. berries? That sounds like a really useful wolves, thing to do. Because there's wolves, rags. There's spooky wolves. Oh wolves my goodness gracious! Climbers. Dangerous, no. especially dragging all the kids with you. Which, very true. But she said the wolves aren't uh, usually here at this time of year because things are things are getting more spooky. I guess I don't really know. Uh, so yeah, they're out there just they're out grabbing some berries. These these half footers. Um, I love me some berries. This is mm. this is gonna come up a couple of times. There'll be some scenes where we can spend a million years talking about all of it, but then there'll be some where I'm just like, um, where they gather berries, and then they well, see. Well, it's, it's almost all the Harford scenes don't... in this episode. They're like, oh, we do this, okay. They don't just anyway. gather berries. They eat them in the most obnoxiously it's retarded really way. Really gross. <laughs> I really, <laughs> I, like, oh, I no. really don't appreciate any of like how they eat. I don't know why they chose to do that, but that's just not how I, those. I don't know if those these are dewberries or something or blackberries or every if they if, if they specify. Point being, you don't like chomp through half of it and get it all over your fucking face like you're an infant and you're some disgusting creep. No, you just put it in your mouth and it's done and it's over. <laughs> I, Why I, do they I completely so dirty and nasty. <laughs> Some people might think he's nitpicking. I completely agree. What are you doing, woman? Like, why? why they specifically, <laughs> they they went out of their way to direct these nasty creatures to uh. eat berries in the most disgusting, messy way, like you could. And I want to know what it, what are you trying to tell me? Is it? Is it? They're is gross. the angle that That's they were like people me. might not believe they've been eating berries? They don't see it all over their face. <laughs> like, I don't know. I was like, okay. I, the chowing right in, right down. Like, but you're right. Yeah, berries are very simple to eat. Very. They're simple. really, yeah. really simple. How do you fuck up eating a berry? You pull it off the bush and you put it in your mouth, and it's done. It's it. That's yep. it. Yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, before I forget about it, because I I thought it comes up later. But before we get to this scene, uh, we see Sardog's weird prophecy book for the first time. Uh. You know which one I mean? Like the book he yeah, checks yeah. constantly. He's the, yeah, he's the got one, a bunch of pictures in one, him. Yeah. And... yeah, but it's like, oh, there's the antler man in the middle, and then we have wolves next. So it's like, oh, they're going to get attacked by wolves then. But then that like, doesn't happen in the first wolf. episode. Therefore, that... So, yeah, yeah I, I, I wonder if this... I, I want to know more about this weird book. <laughs> Who wrote it? Where did it come from? Was it Sauron? Was yeah. It, was it? Was it? <gasps> Sauron. Who knows? But enough of that, Elrond, he's getting introduced now. Not oh. played by Mr. Smith, all right? Big uh, sad. Much younger, okay? This is this is by the guy who played Ned Stark, actually, in the flashback in Game of Thrones Season 7? Or 6. It was 6 or 7, I can't quite remember, but... Yeah, he's, um... And he's writing some, um... Prose. Yeah, I can't remember, is it's this... Like a speech. He's writing the speech. Is this the speech he's writing for, uh... Yeah, this is the speech yeah, yeah. he's yeah. writing, yeah. Okay. Because he gives that thing to some Randy. It's like, give that to us for a ceremony. It's like, okay. So, um, so yeah. I I guess before... Well, no, we're bringing up later. This this place looks fake as fuck, though. Oh, I, there you go. I, I got a good shot of it. Real. Give your assessment, Rags. Go ahead. Uh, oh, on the Hold. screen. Let me... in the, yeah, in the, this the is... Tree. I'm, I'm oh, getting yeah, Black yeah. Widow Forest vibes from this. Like, I just don't believe it. You know, like, I can't, like, this isn't a real place, I don't feel. Maybe it totally is, but I just, I don't know what it is. Like, I, I can believe he can, he's on a tree, but a lot of places in this, like, nature locations and stuff, it just feels so, like, they're in front of green screens all the time, and they're not really in a world. Like, I can't reach out and touch it. For the most part, the Hobbit, the Harfoot stuff, it sort of escapes this. Um, yeah. But... Here with this elven stuff, I just it's like I just get fakey fantasy forest vibes, mm -hmm. and I don't know what I don't know, maybe it's just me. No, I get what you mean. I think it's fair. I, 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 I understand what you're saying. It feels like they're on it, could be that volume screen or um, uh, just regular. They try too hard, maybe, with the forest stuff instead of just putting them in a, in a nice, lovely forest. They have to go with 
you know, the trees need to be this color and this big clearing, and there's one that he's sitting in. Uh, like, they're trying to make it too idyllic instead of just having a nice forest and having them have a just a, a, a gay old time in it. No. Well, I guess I, I should like have mentioned one. as well, the, or, the or reason or they run away from eating their berries, the, the half is because they realize there's wolves in the area, and, and they're being watched by one on a cliff, and another one turns up when mm -hmm. they leave, and I was just like, was that just luck then? Because... Man, if they'd attacked them, they might have just <laughs> been were, fucking yeah. dead. Yeah. Well, they ate a bunch of berries before, so they're not hungry right now. Maybe but, the wolves were uh, waiting for them to eat the berries to fatten them up. Ooh, Maybe. yeah, that's right. If I eat a Harfoot that has eaten berries, it's like they're yeah. eating the berries for me. That works. Almost certain. Yeah. yeah. It's like a turducken, but instead of a turkey, a duck, and a chicken, it's a Harfoot and a berry. Oh. It's a <laughs> Harby... That's probably a really messy food to eat. You probably. The Worg everywhere. probably eats Harfoots cleaner than a Harfoot <laughs> eats a berry. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like, the, the, the Worgs just throw, like, arms and legs to each other, and then they laugh when they catch it in their mouth, and they maybe, spin around and do this gay dance. Maybe that's why, they, why the wolves actually didn't eat them. They saw them eat, and they were like, ugh. Ugh, Ugh, go not, away. Uh, <laughs> like, I know there's probably poop in there, but I'm still... Now I'm not yeah. eating it. Ugh. Now it's like, ugh. 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 Basic, like, interaction these sorts of things, right? Uh, Rags, I believe, is my life when we're checking it out. But uh, just, you have, <laughs> someone turns up to, to Elrond, and they're like, you're not going to be permitted in the next council meeting. It's only going to be yeah. Elven Lords. And he's like, eh, all right then, fine. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, and he says, anything else? And she goes, your friend has arrived. And he goes, whoa, why didn't you say so? It's like, <laughs> I, I, I feel like the first thing was a little more important. But... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just funny, because it's just like, well, I mean, she said, that was pretty fast. She she got that information to you pretty quickly. And to be fair, you're the one that prompted her as well. She didn't even finish what she was necessarily going to tell you. You were just like, is there anything else? As if there wasn't anything else. But it, it's just it's just strange. It would have made a lot more sense if she was leaving and then she said it casually or something. Um, it, it just, it just strange dialogue again, but that that's mostly yeah. fine. Um, and then, yeah, so uh, it's it's... Galadriel has returned. Oh, Elrondus is oh. like, woohoo. We're in Linden, capital of the high yeah. elves. That shot actually looks pretty good. I like that one. That one looks pretty A lot of the landscape ones look pretty neat. Yeah, landscape ones are good. Uh, yeah, that one looks all right. Yeah. There's one no. Eight. One thing I noticed is are there any like people in this uh, vista? Like, are there any people wandering around or is it just a location? I guess there's one on the bridge. Yeah, okay. There's one on the bridge. Two on the bridge. You have okay. um, good old fashioned, just yeah. an annoying exposition where she's like, ever since I was a child, I blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, and look at you now, commander of the Northern Armies, warrior of the Waste. It's like, shut up. Yeah, Jeff, shut up. Uh, yeah, she's great. She's amazing. It's not only that, it's just her actual roles and then how, how it's, it's so like clunk. It's just like, okay, all right. And it felt a little bit more natural, when, especially when these guys have known each other for forever, as far as I gather. Um,. We have a lot of that. We're going to be pointing it out whenever we get to it. They even have someone in universe point out that that's happening. It's great. Um, yeah, the short I version is that uh, she broke the rules, and he's like, "The king said it's fine. Don't worry about it. Just don't do it again." Yeah. So we'll have to see where that goes exactly. Yeah, she's also given the um, the the mark of Sauron to to let him give a bit of a study to it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and she's like, I want a, I want a uh, audience with the king because I want to go out again. I want to go hunting. Fuck up that was, Sauron guy. I, w I was thinking, do you, do you need to appoint an audience when you're just like this super commander for your army? I guess she's just Can't... not high enough rank wise to, to demand an audience. You gotta. You're right back to this moment. Got to appeal to the next rank up, which in this case right. is Elrond. I guess I don't know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so that's just a little update on, on here. And th see, this is what I mean about the way... You guys have seen us break down stuff before. Uh, we can go pretty fast. I fucking hell. I, it's so funny, right? I look at the timer, like, so we're almost at two hours. Uh, <laughs> shut up. Uh, we did stop for a little bit, but I don't know. It just feels like we're kind of now rushing through the episode a little bit, but it's just there's just not much to talk about with those bits. It's all very fine. Um, yeah, this is, what, this is what I was realizing when I was done watching the episodes and had all my notes like i mean there's, there's a lot of things where it's just nothing to talk about yeah it's, <laughs> um... well, no, i would uh i would describe the show as vacuous I, yeah. I just find it like really uh empty there's a lot of stuff 
Like, in terms of runtime, sure, but it's really empty. And all of the characters say exactly what they mean. And there's no mistaking what they believe in or what their arc is going to be or what's important to them, you know? Speaking of that, it's, uh, yeah. our next scene is with Nori and... I was going to say a mum. I, I think that's a mum. I'm not actually sure. Uh, right. Yeah, Another example it. of a scene where characters say exactly what they mean and telegraph the arc like in a way mm. that is impossible to misunderstand. Yeah, and so she, she's like, why would the werewolf, why would the wolves, sorry, not werewolves, be up here? And she's like, maybe there's trouble down south. And the, the mum is like, why would you care about that? And then she's like, haven't you ever wondered what's out there? I want to see more yeah. stuff. And then her mum person is like, well, elves have forests, dwarves have mines, men have grains, and harfoots are just ripples in a stream. No one goes mm. off trail. That's how we survive. And it's like, I get it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Nori will not be that person. Nori is going to be the one that breaks tradition. She's, She's going to go off trail. She's going to do wild the stuff. Ventures. Like, okie dokie. Um, I, I just I think I've written down one sentence it was like oh basically she wants to see the rest of the world and not just chill with the clan for the rest of her life got it yeah <laughs> I mean like... we've spent this much time and they've really only done that again and again they keep telling us how Nori's not going to be like every other offer mm -hmm. it's like why are you keep you keep telling me this over and over again just show me what her, what she's like show me her yeah yeah <sighs> so anyway uh, we move on to where are we next? Oh, back to the the elves again. Oh, they're doing a little ceremony. They're like, yeah, yeah. So he just sort of gives us the information that this this little group of lads led by Galadriel were meant to cleanse the world of the remaining bad guys, and they've done so. Yeah, like, have they though? Have they though? Because guys, the, that Lord of the Rings thing that comes out way later, and it's about all the bad stuff. Even they even mentioned Sauron in that one, so I'm pretty sure. It ain't cleansed just yet. But anyway, they're getting their rewards. They get a little crown, get a nice little armor, and they uh, they are allowed to go to uh, the the what are they called? Is the Undying Lands, right? That's the... the the blessed land of Valinor. At least that's what I've written down. Yay! Um, but obviously for all eternity. Galadriel's like, hmm, hmm. Don't know about that. Don't know about that. Uh, the rest of them are like, no, I'm fine with that. That's that 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 great. Lord. King even notices, but he doesn't say anything. He's mm -hmm. like, you take that fucking crown, I'll beat you up. Yeah, the king's like, you're being a little bit said. cringe, but that's okay. Yeah. It's okay, not not too cringe. Uh, Nothing, not surprising, I've known you for centuries, so I'm, I'm, I'm aware of They probably cringe. know each other pretty well, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And so, I don't know if I was the only one who thought this. Uh, it just, just, it just thought it was kind of amusing, but they, they, you know, the celebration is complete. We get some looks. And big old looks of like eh, things aren't. Then we cut to like mm -hmm. their big old celebration because of course this is very good news. Fireworks. Evil has been vanquished. But you remember yeah. the firework sequence in Lord of the Rings, which was pretty early on as well. So it just felt to yeah. me like they wanted to have their own. Look at this fireworks display. I feel uh, like that, they're overcompensating like, at all. That's like, that's a weird like fucking fly. That's crazy. Go pew pew pew. <laughs> like all right, I get it. A little it. star. Got a little big butterfly. Dude, there's so many at once. I'm like, you're gonna, you're gonna. I'm missing a lot of them by trying to look at some of them. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. It's too hot. Man. Yeah, and so Galadriel's chilling in the forest of the, uh, yeah. the the statues of the dead. I don't know if that's the name of it, but she's just like, hmm, I'm all sad. And we have a big long conversation that I was very much yeah. not a fan of. Uh, let's let's almost stop. I think there could have been something here, but the interesting parts are not being addressed by Galadriel at all. <laughs> yeah, so also, I felt I, like Elrond made all of the best arguments in this conversation. Yeah, I was like, based yeah. Elrond, you got you got it. Seems we get another shot of her sheathing her dagger again. It's, man it's mandated that every scene she's in, she has to be shown pulling out or sheathing her dagger. I think this is this is the conversation where I think I decided and told you, Mahler, that I was just I'm not a fan of this actress. You say that like I own her because she's Welsh. <laughs> like, I, oh, is, is she? <laughs> a lot of a lot of people like feel like they're stepping on like it's just like oh, it's well, Morvith Clark, I think her name is. And I was just like I don't fucking know who this lady is. <laughs> no, I, I uh, either she is a good actress who has been told to act like a brick, uh, and uh, more so, I don't even mean that in the way that you might think. I mean, in, she's, again, stone-faced with everything. It's like she doesn't want to show... Like, the character is trying to resist showing emotion Emotions or something. Emotions are not allowed. Um, yeah. 
but uh, or it's that she's just not very good at portraying the emotions she's supposed to. I'm more willing to to opt for the former, but it doesn't really matter, does it? The reality is that she's very um, in the show. Yeah, she's not. Yeah entertaining or interesting in really any way whatsoever either on a character level or on a more surface level she is not an interesting <laughs> subject for my attention would we demand welsh reparations from all her <laughs> hey we got um your rec fans in in house of the dragon and he's one of the best actors there so it balances out okay we won one we lost one that's how it works uh, right, so we yeah, also have a wwe WRV show running in the Welshlands at this right moment right now, yeah. So, your brother would be proud, is somebody says, and then she's like, my brother's task is mine. I seek the enemy that escaped to the north. And then he's like, Sigil doesn't mean anything. Evil's gone. She says, then why is the evil not gone from in here? Pointing to her heart? Which, uh... This line... <laughs> I think I joked with you, and I, and I was saying from Elrond, is like, I don't know, man, that's that's on you. That's up to you. Yeah. I feel like yeah, that's a demon you gotta wrestle with, like I therapy think, or something. But most people Sounds come like away with PTSD the obvious to me. interpretation just of just saying. like, are you saying you're evil? <laughs> also that, yes. like Security! Security! I, <laughs> if I was Elrond in this conversation and she said that to me, I would be like, whatever do you mean? I don't know what you mean, actually. Yeah. Because you elaborate. Are you evil? And so, um, Elrond makes the mistake of saying, you're conflicted. Laugh my ass off. And then she's like, conflicted? I got big Wanda Fucking vibes when he you. said that. I was like, uh-oh, you shouldn't have said <laughs> oh, something no. that implies she's not as strong as she likes to be believed. And she's like, you don't know the evil that I have seen. You have not seen what I have seen. He's like, oh, I've seen, I've seen a lot. And then she's like, you yeah, have not like, seen yeah, I, I, what I have oh. seen. It's this, like, this Jesus is, Christ, I don't like this you. This is where, <laughs> like, earlier on, as we were setting up the backstories and establishing things, it would have been useful to see her. May, if they want to they want to have her be this super battle hardened warrior and she's so amazing and she's just a what a slayer and she's Layer. her her the acting is so blank and she's so just stone faced and ice cold and, and just there's nothing there for us to pull away with i can't relate to her or empathize with her cuz i don't really know her I don't know yeah. what she's thinking necessarily. I don't know what she's feeling in scenes. She's just so so flat in the acting. And if if they're trying to play this up as the whole, you know, you haven't seen what I've seen. It's like, no, we really don't. No one does. Who are you? <laughs> I don't even know that. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, going just from what we've seen in the show. Yeah, she was around for centuries when everyone was getting killed, I guess. Like, wasn't Elrond? What was he doing? He was writing speeches? I guess so. Um... <laughs> So, I don't know, it just, yeah, definitely the kind of, like I said, same Wanda, Doc Strange vibes. I was just like, mm. Yeah. All right. Not, not, no bueno. So, if you think about the progress of this conversation, she's like, no, evil's definitely, definitely, definitely out there. And he's like, it's not, though. And she's like, it definitely, definitely is. You don't know what I've seen, yeah. buddy. And so he, he decides to change tracks. He's like, all right, maybe it is out there. Yeah. Is, what if you are right? You know, doing that, is that going to make you feel better? Because you, you, you seem kind of nuts right now. Um, kind of. You seem obsessed. You've been doing this for centuries. You need to fucking chill. But then he says something that I was like, "Oh, this is a little bit, a little bit interesting." He says, "Like, how many more elves are you gonna risk dying so that you feel better? How many, how many more statues are gonna be made here so that you can yeah. kill more?" And I was like, "There you go. That's a pretty good fucking argument. Awesome." I was like, "Oh, now it's getting interesting." Yeah, because uh, it, it tells us something what Elrond cares about. It's, it's, it's more yeah. than just, you know, stop going on your crazy adventures. It's like, you're actually kind of, you know, putting elves in yeah. danger. He yeah. cares about her. For I guess he sees something in her, or I don't know. But he, I get he's using that aspect to appeal to her, like, to chill the fuck out. Yeah, and I like that about him. It's one of the few moments in the content that i've consumed so far of this where i was like oh that's a thing that's mm -hmm. something yeah because he tells basically tells us like oh you should totally go to that blessed land it's gonna go chill it's gonna be great you, he, uh, yeah i brought you this wine a victory yeah um just just go go up there heal up chill chill for all eternity cleanse your mind all, all that good stuff after you do centuries of war sounds like a pretty pretty good idea pretty good deal i would say 
Uh, a lot uh, of people pointed out how they felt this line was clunk. I was going to ask what you guys think. Uh, he says that one more orc upon the point of your blade will bring you peace. What do you think? Uh, I would reword that. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I'm not exactly entirely sure what I feel like. It's not working about it. Yeah. It doesn't quite it, doesn't feel right for me either. I didn't yeah. even think about it. I was just like, yeah, it's a line. I know what he means, but I don't know. Could have said it differently, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I would have rephrased it. Something along the lines of, um, uh, it, you know, how many, maybe just refer to blood, uh, blood and thirst. Like, it, cause some, some, is there any amount of blood that will, you know, satisfy your thirst or, mm. you know, is, is, is a, maybe a pile of, you know, bodies or victories, maybe refer to it as victories. How many, uh, or, or, you know, slain, somethings but yeah I, I don't like the way it's phrased here um yeah so now that he made all these amazing points uh can't, can't wait what galadriel has to say about that because that's uh that's that's a good point i hope she she thinks about all these people she might get killed if she continues her crusade yeah. if you will especially because we're here in the the grave grove or mm -hmm. whatever it's called and it's like this is a you know it's like being in arlington or something yeah I have never been to Arlington, so I don't know what that that a reference. Uh, is. Sorry. It's the big. It's the big uh, military cemetery. Hmm. Um, yeah. But what what does she say? She's basically. Oh yeah, he also yeah, adds to it oh, that, that uh, she'll be if she remains here, she'll be an outcast. Yeah. So, well, did you wanna did you wanna see what happens next? Oh yes, yeah, basically. Yeah, but I'm just gonna not gonna feel good, probably. Yeah, so I think so, you're right. In terms of the matter of the conversation, <laughs> this is not a satisfying answer. She's like, do you think I'd be That's... better off in terms of my mental state in the yeah. West? And it's like, so that's what this is about? Yeah, I feel like there was much more flesh on that bone that Elrond gave you that you probably should address. Well, you, the, like, you don't want eh. to say you're putting other people in danger in the response to be, yes, but I feel bad. Yeah, because you could have said, say, yeah, but what if, if I'm right, there might be even more deaths if we don't do anything against it or something something like that not just say i'm gonna feel bad and the songs would mock the battle cries in my mind or something uh yeah it's just it's just a nothing answer the that's a lot of her answers though it just sort yeah, of I, yeah. these don't feel like real people talking to each other Oh, it's uh, dude, like I, they don't feel like how conversations would actually occur to the point where I was actually I'm going to read out this line and I want you guys to tell me exactly what it means because I got a couple ideas, but I'm not entirely sure. So she says, okay. you say okay. I have won victory over all the horrors of Middle Earth, yet you would leave them alive in me to take with me. What? <sighs> so yeah, what does that mean exactly? Alive. You would leave them alive in me to take with me I'll, I'll say it again you say i have won victory over all the horrors of middle earth yet you would leave them alive in me to take with me i would leave like i would leave the horrors of middle so, earth alive in you yeah. to take with me is she saying that the efforts and the effects of having fought for so long are like kept alive by her being alive like she almost want is she trying to say she wanted to die in battle she didn't want to live with this. Is it this. PTSD? I believe so. But so this is the part that gets if a little so, bit confusing because but... he he explains this to her and she should already know this. Going to the West, going to Valinor, going to the Undying, the, it's a form of uh, it heals you up mentally and stuff. It makes you feel a whole bunch better to the point where uh, I don't see this as a hard choice if that was her concern. So what I'm trying to say is her two options here are like go heal your 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 PTSD, which apparently is your major motivation for hunting Sauron. It's like so you you'll be good on that. Um or you can continue trying to hunt him for centuries. That's how yeah. long it's taken you so far. I don't know why you're thinking that it's coming to an end soon. So see what I mean? Like like her highlighting this just makes me think like, oh, well then the answer's clear, isn't it? You should, uh, you should go to the You go should the go boat. there. The boat. Yeah. As if you Not needed, as if you needed more reasons. That's what I'm saying. I was, I, I was just like, okay, I, 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 if that's what she meant, then yeah, I don't know. And she kind of just ignored the uh, putting lives in danger part. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, completely like, anything okay. on that. I was like, man. So uh, yeah, he says, only in the blessed realm can that which broken 
uh, be mended, I think he said. So, yeah, yeah and that's that. something that they all know. So I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem yeah. to be something she takes seriously. So maybe maybe that isn't her motive. I don't know exactly. She's a bit of a bit of a character, to say the least. She is certainly that. And he says, "Put up your sword." And she says, "Without it, what am I to be?" Character really, from the trilogy. Uh, really annoying to hear from Galadriel, but not when you have no other context. So it's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. This lady's like, "What am I without a sword?" And he says, "My friend." My friend. Which really doesn't address uh, what she's talking about, but whatever the scene yeah. is, so I guess it did. This is where it ends. Like, <laughs> it's it's like what, a this... waste. what a fucking waste of my time. It feels it like some of, stuff was yeah. highlighted, but none of it was addressed properly. So it's just yeah. like, okay, fine, I guess. Oh, but wasn't it such a... It was such, so deep and meaningful and... Oh, they're just, it's so, such wonderful flowery language, and it's so art, uh, artistic, and uh, there's mm. so much artistry in, in the in, in the writing of the show. It's so wonderful, these elves talking to each other. Yeah. How could you not That's like this? There's this one thing where he says, like, oh, yeah, but if evil stuff comes comes up, I'm going to take care of it, so don't worry. So I'm just confused. I, I have no idea what the blessed land's actually going to be. Is it just a one-way trip? You just go in there and then you're trapped in there forever. So you, I think there's I don't no know, coming I don't know back. If trapped is like you wouldn't even want to go back. I think that yeah, I think that's part of the idea. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know enough about it, and the show doesn't give us enough context to understand it. Beyond yeah, because I was confused. That, like, yeah. Because my immediate my immediate <clears throat> reaction to that was like, wait, could you just I don't know, give her a little little elf elf call? It's like, hey, that's evil stuff. You want to come back and fuck it up or something? Why don't but they I, all I go? Guess that's, so. I, I guess that's not a thing. Is there a reason why they, they don't? don't, they don't, 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 don't they don't have all to just go it? back? I think you have to earn it. I can't just you can't just go. Okay. No. Um. So, character introductions, right? We got another new guy coming, and you you wonder what what do you do to introduce a character quickly? Like, well, how do you? Uh, what? And there's loads of different ways to establish traits real fast. And it's true, there are. This one, um, are. this one annoyed me in the same way that I believe it annoyed Fringy as well. There's two guys playing chess here, or let's just call it an equivalent of some kind. And now a new yeah. character is walking past them. Now, if you're a, a writer of any particular sort, you know, I'm not saying that it it's makes you a particular big. kind of writer. It's totally fine. He just explains to one of the two guys how to win the game in three moves, I think. Yeah, as he's walking past. And it's just, and then the guy's like, ah, and he does it and wins. So he is I so think, smart. I think the writer wanted us to believe. Man, he just won a chess game on the fly while walking into wherever he's going. This guy knows his stuff. That's pretty cool. Meanwhile, what I think this actually portrays is like, so that guy's a fucking full of himself. He just destroyed a chess yeah. game just because he wanted to prove he could. Like, that's all that is. Why would you do this? Two guys having a fun game. You just made it unfair by giving one of them yeah. information he didn't necessarily have. Why did you do that? Um, it's really dumb. Maybe it's he just wanted their chess life. game to be over with so they'd go fucking take a bath. <laughs> I guess <laughs> this is an example of you can, when you make a character do something, you're displaying like multiple things. One of them is you're displaying what they can do, but you're also displaying a choice that they've made. Yeah, what they In this case, this choice is that he wants to demonstrate how smart he is at the expense of their game. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bit stupid. I, uh, just re it was really amateur to me. I, I could totally see the right being like, hey, ain't he clever? And it's like, yeah, sure. Uh. <laughs> see, yeah, I could see why, I can't imagine why people in this town are fucking racist. <laughs> <laughs> they just hate this guy, he ruins chess games all the time. It's like, all the elves are here, quick, cover up the chess boards. <laughs> right, We so... were having a nice game, we were having a fun time, and then you showed up. We got the stank place, with all the stank people live, and they're all doing stank things. Uh, that's just how it goes, I guess. And They're all so gross. <laughs> they're just real gross. They all... The, 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 uh. Except for one of them. The super hot girl. Whoever could that be? Oh, the mm. hot one who gets to wear colors. Yeah, everyone's in like drab, stanky, just darkness. Yeah, <laughs> they have greasy hair, they've got dirty clothes on. They're just, they just look grimy and nasty, mm -hmm. and it, uh. Um, Luckily, they made, like, the town leader the grimiest and nastiest of them all, as he's chopping his meat in front of everybody. Yeah, uh, so what we're gathering here is this is just, like, a settlement of 
men, I guess, in some area, and, and there's mm. elves looking over it, and they come in for a report every once in a while, just to see what what's going on. And uh, the the guy who owns this place is like, oh, everything's chill, you know, you get your normal this, that, and the other thing happening, but everything's fine. And then the elf's like, you were talking about uh, poisoning, something was poisoned. And uh, he was like, oh, uh, you know, it's fine, it's fine, it's just like a patch of grass or whatever. And mm -hmm. so uh, this elf is like, I guess you could you could say it's, it's a weird thing, isn't it? It is a bit the weird. The patch um, of grass was poisoned. If <laughs> that's odd, right? Yeah, I'm not it, weird it, for thinking that's odd. If he's like a sentry, I mean, whatever. May as well inspect that. If there's nothing else to do, yeah. it reminds me of like the work they do in Hot Fuzz, where it's just like everything's chill. So when someone's swan goes missing, I guess you just go and have a look. Because <laughs> what yeah. else? Yeah. <laughs> just like yeah, a patch of grass is poisoned. It's like I might have a look at that. That's weird. I don't know. Whatever. That's and, a um, thing to do. That this is other guy who's like, it's just a patch of grass. Fuck off! Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, oh it shit. Calls him a knife ear. Yes. Uh, yeah, which is, which is uh, oh, wait. wait, is it knife ear or is it someone oh, else? Knife ears. I, yeah, no, no. It's, 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 you know, it's either knife way. Ears. Stay abby ears, which is uh, from what this I gather, people saying where... that's more so from Dragon Age than anything to do with Tolkien. Uh, mm. I think they say knife ears. Don't I think he does. Well, it's just that people felt like this was very unusual for, for Tolkien's work. I wouldn't know necessarily, but it's in there, all right? And I thought it was I kind of the, funny. The mistrust between races was was not quite as um, uh, lowbrow, I suppose. Like, yeah, it, um, it, it didn't seem so just like you you so believed it, it, it more is it is something I give don't know an example really right you have it. uh I, th I think that they're not very good at writing bigotry anymore um they used to be so for example when everything's pretty chill except for maybe a couple of looks between the dwarves and the elves in in fellowship of the ring except when it's implied someone will get the ring and gimli is like i'll be dead before i see it in the hands of an elf it's like ooh, okay ooh, like it got spicy. a bit serious and it's like that's that's a pretty obvious like statement in terms of what's going on there but it's um it's because things just got very serious it's like uh, you know actually i do actually have a position there instead of instead of let it go knife is like okay yeah <laughs> like, all right just in general the way they portray it here's just really lame and basic because like Oh, the humans are racist against the elves, and the elves are racist against the humans because they helped with the bad guy. Oh, we'll, thousands we'll get to of those years lines. Ago. Those are just as yeah. fucking over. Yeah, there's just, no. But that just goes goes through everything, and it's just like, oh, everyone hates each other except these two characters because they, they they're normal or whatever. Like, oh, I don't know. You also have this in She-Hulk. They don't know how to write sexists. They're really bad at it. Like, uh, they create yeah. cartoon people instead of like. What could be an interesting layer to their character that's got clear bias? Instead, it's fucking Darth ears, get out of here! I hate you, ears. <laughs> you lumpus in with those who died a thousand years ago. When are you people gonna let the past go? And it's like, oh, all right, throwing that light in, uh, nice and subtle as well. And he says, the past is with us, whether we like it or not. Yeah, all right. That's so that sounds like no. you're excusing your bigotry against us. Well, he doesn't have any. He's chill. I guess he doesn't. Yeah. The other guy that we meet does, though. He does. He he makes sure to really He's walk really up the stairs it and in. tell him. <laughs> <laughs> he really wants to let him know. Uh, but yeah, he, he's like, just a, he's a twat, this guy. And, and, and our elf friend makes a choice to actually reduce the anger and the violence here. It's like, all right, see, the chillman. Uh, he's just trying to make sure everything's all right. He's nice, all right. It's just there's bigotry in these pots. Um, goes both ways, I guess. So, I have nothing to say about his interaction with the lady. Uh, uh what is there <laughs> to just, say? They just need to fuck, dude. <laughs> dude, I've seen everybody talk about this scene, and they just have nothing to fucking put. In. Like, it's just she's. I don't know. They. What is it like? Do you have the little pot of things? And she does, and he's like, "Ah, oh, yeah. you crush them up to make a thing." And he's like, "Ah, oh, don't crush them." She's like, "Softly crush them." Okay, all right. As if uh, crush them. Yeah, as long as you don't crush them hard, they're still crushed. I don't know, man. I just, I, I didn't. I thought. I think what we're supposed to I gather found... from this is that they wanna, they wanna fuck. All right. Yeah. Fine. I found this weird where she's like, "Oh, you're a healer." It's like, "Yeah, do you have healers?" It's like, "Yeah, but our wounds." Mostly heal on their the own accord. Yes. Was, well, it, it sounds weird. Like, human wounds heal on their own as well. I guess elves oh, heal better than humans. <laughs> otherwise, that would be yeah. a really fucking weird thing to say. 
Yeah, but that's not what he says. Just oh, if you go to Odin, of course. Like, yeah, yeah, it's that's it seems pretty normal. It's, it's just a really weird conversation. It's I, I understand what you dumb. mean because healing is automatic for most living things in, in the exactly. world. Exactly. Uh, but we have healers. It's it's like he's saying like, why would we need a healer? We heal anyway. It's like, right. Yeah. yeah, but in order to assist in the process, you know, maybe yeah. yeah. Imagine also, Ghibli what a strange Legolas question. Legolas Does your <laughs> He says pointy ear to Legolas, didn't he? Oh, a pointy eared elf or something like that, yeah. I have no pointy uh, elf out scoring me. I fucking love that. For this. Also, what yeah. a dumb question. Do you have healers? <laughs> I, 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 this is what I mean. I had nothing to say about this conversation because I was just like, I guess they just, it's like, it's like, um, what would you even say? Like, like stand in dialogue because there was nothing else the writers had for them to say. Like, do you have healers? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> cool, yeah, all cool. right. Sweet. Cancel Gimli. Yeah. <laughs> so, this guy um, says, oh, by the way, he, he pours out the little bottle she gives him, and there's the seeds inside, and says, I haven't seen this flower since I was a child. He's like, how fucking good is your memory? Holy <laughs> shit. You remember the seeds of a flower that you haven't seen since you were a child. That was likely... It just that could like be like you forget hundreds about. of years ago. Yeah, like that seems like <laughs> hundreds of years ago. And for, for them, it's like centuries, but I guess they just have really, really good I mean, memory. Because he's been here watching over this town for 79 years because elves don't, like, rotate their watchmen or whatever. Um, so, like, Jesus Christ, what a thing to remember. So, when he came to this town, he would have had his bow attached in such a way to travel. Then he would have taken it off in prep for presumably something, only to put it away again. No, I think that that's all bullshit. The only reason they did it was to do this. Look how fucking cool this is. Is he cool? He just spun it. I can do that. I would just, I don't know, <laughs> I would just feel like if I was the friend, I'd be like, it seemed a little bit unnecessary. But like, I'm the only one that can see you, pal, okay? And he's like, no, I'm in a TV guy show, buddy. <laughs> the guy just goes like, you need to stop doing that. It's just, I know you can. Like, I can do it too. Look, it's like, just stop it. Um... I'd like yeah, to summarize anyway. the dialogue between these two as you're up to no good over there because no I'm yeah. not and you smell. Yeah. That is that oh my god, that's yeah, literally yeah, that's, it. That's, that's, <laughs> that's literally the scene. That's perfect. Wasn't that hilarious though when he said that you smell and the other guy's like, nah uh and then I he does don't. you could you could predict what's gonna happen because he sniffs himself right before the scene ends. Oh yeah, that was really funny. Um That was really funny. I definitely didn't see it coming. And, and then they do I the definitely thing again. didn't call it out. Where you're, like they're walking, and he says, "Only twice in our history does an uh, has an elf and a woman, or an elf and a man, el elf and person, whatever, done stuff together, and it always ends real badly." And then he's like, I don't "You don't need to tell really me that. Advice. You don't need to remind me." And it's like, "Yeah, because yeah. he fucking know all of this shit. Why are you telling?" Uh... It's got to be more than twice, though. Probably, you'd think so. Yeah, with the, the, just, yes. The humans are probably just fascinated that there are these creatures that are just not covered in dirt and grime all the time. They're like, <laughs> I just can't believe it. How come they're not disgusting and dirty like us? It's, if only there was a way to not have all this dirt and muck and grease covering us constantly. If only there's something we could do. So the Randy guy is called Magoth. Neat. If you, I know, just written that down for some reason. <laughs> it's three times, but Amazon doesn't own the rights. <laughs> <laughs> True. They can't mention the third one. <laughs> I can't mention it. Um, so the war is over, everyone, <laughs> and the outposts are being disbanded. Woohoo! It's over. Everything's chill now. And, wow, that's uh, great. We get this guy who turns up to talk to our main elfman, and he's like, "This is seventy-nine years I've been here." On and top of the tower, yeah. You're like, oh, a, you know, whatever the goals of this conversation are going to be, I guess that's a fair way to start it. He's just coming, he's, you know, his time has ended. 79 years, wow. Mm -hmm. And then the other guy's like, um, can you believe how oh, shit it with was? The ladder. Oh, do you have to talk about the ladder? The ladder, we got to talk about this ladder, right? So, so because before like, that really conversation happens, the there's this there's this tower and they use this ladder to climb up the tower and the ladder is a single piece of wood it's not two long pieces with all the steps in between them like lashed together you know or anything like that they're, they're not like pegged in or nailed in it's a single piece of wood that this ladder is that, oh, you're right. that's that's <laughs> fucking bizarre i didn't even notice did you that. never like 
what is going on here? And it's got like a, it's it's a weird ladder too because it's like two parts. Like your, your left foot goes on this side and your right foot goes on that side, and there's like a yeah. beam. Yeah, someone just pointed middle. out it's probably from the ladder tree. There's, there's a whole bunch. Uh, oh, that's true. Uh, that makes yeah. sense. Man. Okay, that is that is that probably does make sense. I I do like la ladder trees. They're pretty good. Yeah, but <laughs> this what a weird. That's that's just weird. It's just weird, okay? It's just weird that they have a single piece ladder that goes all the way up their tower, I assume. True. Well, at least now um, you know where all the money went for the show. The ladder. Make um, a ladder. <laughs> yeah, our guy's like, wow, been so long. And then this guy's like, can you believe how shit it used to be? And then that guy was like, uh, well, yeah, things change, I guess. And he goes, nah, the men here are still shit and all more garbage. Yeah. <laughs> And he's like, okay, well, you know, that was ages ago. He says, he says, the blood of those who stood with Morgoth still darkens their veins. Like, like legit hyper-racism. <laughs> it's like, yeah. holy moly. <laughs> Thousand years is like, just so bad. And, uh, that he, like, so the guy, like, <laughs> the vibe is like, you know, hey, well, you know, that was a while ago, these guys, they're, they're alright. And then he's, he, like, doubles down, he's like, you should know, the whole reason you're here is because the people here are shit. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Be happy you'll never have to see them again. It's like, and the scene ends after that. It's like, did they really come up here just to say humans are fucking rancid? I, mean, I hate them. Yeah, <laughs> like, I did. You okay. know what, what What? you could have done in an alternate show is that is just an attitude that you notice over time as you spend time with these elf characters instead of devoting a scene to it like it's a checklist. Like, oh, we gotta have the scene where the elves are racist. All right, we did that scene. Now to the next scene, instead of having it come out a bit more naturally. Because he just, he climbs up the one piece ladder to the top of the tower to be racist twice, and then he yeah. leaves. <laughs> I just thought it was fantastic that the, this entire point of this whole scene, all the dialogue he says is all in favor of saying, men are fucking mm -hmm. gross, don't trust them, evil. It's like, and right. to be in his in his defense, after what I've seen, he's kind of right. They're they are they're really pretty gross. grimy. They're pretty grimy. They're really they, grimy and they dirty are and gross. Literally I, rancid. I see why elves look down at humans when they just <laughs> like refuse to bathe or wear colors. Oh yeah, you know, with that news, he's got to go tell his GF that you know, oh man, it sucks. I'm being you know, be moved out. No. Yeah. And then. uh before he can say, like, I love you, she gets a visitor. Man with a uh, cow that's uh, feeling a little under the weather, you might. And, Do uh, you heal animals too? <laughs> or yes. heal or make it have less no, he... goopy udders. The man, the man comes in, he says, Do you have healers? <laughs> and then she says, Oh no, we humans, we heal on our own accord. <laughs> But what about cows? <laughs> She's a doctor out of vet. She's the local vet as well, yeah. <laughs> maybe she. <Why> maybe <laughs> the farmer asked the cow if the cows have healers. Mm. Maybe he did at the farm and he didn't. Cow is like we only have artificers. You just hear Aaron Deer yelling from the background. We have artificers. Can, can I help? <laughs> well, he, no, he does away. just sort of walk in and start helping, quote unquote. And the guy like gives he, him a bunch of looks, like you fucking. Elf. <laughs> You fucking knife ears. Uh, so they they check out its milk and it's all black goo. Uh, it's full of hot cream. Yeah, it's pretty. Um, Stop. It's pretty nasty. <laughs> like you know what I don't. What I don't get about it is that. What do you um, not get about it? I Mahler? think the goo is CGI. Um, it is. Which you I know, don't know. What you... That's a separate thing. But like you know, the second you spot black goo coming out of udders, you pull your hand back. You go, oh, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Like, he's I just don't like, even... mm, all right. He doesn't even wipe it off. You don't see him, see him wipe it off. He he's probably like, wants to eat it. That's, that's like, <laughs> it's like, I, I kind of want to taste it. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> when I does. saw this on the second time, I was like, why are you fucking, it looks like you're liking this. They put this. CGI like, flies on the cow, by the way. Why not? You don't want to hurt the animal with real flies. I could kill it. But um, Because it's really, like milk. You, it's weird how they have it just on it. You know, uh, I I'm glad this. I'm just glad the cow isn't CGI. I'm I'm glad yes. that they got a cow. I'm glad Amazon sprung for a cow. So it's like, well, uh, he grazed on some part of the land over there, and he's like, right, I gotta go east, inspect. And right? she's like, I'm going with you. And it's like, why? Yeah. Can we talk about that? A bit, that his cow apparently walked away. That is like a whole day's journey, apparently. So that also, cow was gone for like. 
two days at least. And we is just had normal? them. No one. Well, I guess it isn't normal. It's <laughs> it's not normal enough to the point where he points out that the cow wandered, right? Which I which yeah. I guess is if they normally wander that way, then he may may maybe not have said anything. Um, but there the an issue with the scene seems to be that this cow ailment takes precedent over the fact that she was just told by him that he's leaving yes yeah the like this the end of the outpost has been overshadowed now by the cat the cow's got some weird milk uh, <laughs> uh yeah i don't know I, I was about to say like well it's really weird and it's like i don't know is it uh, is it unprecedented maybe it is like um, you love each other right and you know and you just like like if you're like that's kind of a big deal cuz you should be you know thinking in your mind are we ever going to see each other again if we're going to be together like do we have to run away together do are you going to are you going to stay here with us can you can i go with you how is that going to work out do i need a passport how like <laughs> oh, what is our relationship going to be like now cuz that's kind of a big deal cuz for his her entire life he's been there and yeah, and he's got to leave. Happened. He's got to leave on this for a day, and she's like, "I'm going with." And it's like, "You have a son. Uh, it's fine." Yeah. Also, the town vet, town healer, leave for a day. Fine, I guess. But no, that story will progress. Uh, th then we get like her son and some guy. Uh, it's the racist guy, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They uh, they go to like some barn, and he pulls out his like Sauron sword. Yeah, he, he says he, he accidentally stumbled upon it because he, I don't know, he stepped on this weird thing in the floor and he's like, that's weird. And then he checked it out with him, I guess. Um, I don't know what the fuck's going on with this. It's just like some kid holding a spooky sword that has Sarah's yeah. bark on it. I was just like, all right. Uh, it's like in the box and everything. So I wonder who that's from. This is one of them. They're starting up a storyline and I guess we'll find out what's going to happen with it as time goes on. Some I point, yeah. Uh, evil Sauron sword. It's great. Um, then we go back to Galadriel, and uh, they're Galadriel. doing their very long ship journey. And it's just funny because it's like. So you, I got uh, actually confused here when I watched it. I was like, oh, so so she left and even got an army. That's that's cool for her. And then the scene later, I was like, oh, that they're going to the thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> This is the awkward yeah, ceremony going... where they have to stand on the ship. What if it gets real wobbly? Be like, Ugh. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> and it seems to be a very long journey from what I've s I could gather. I mean, I saw the map turning at the beginning. That looks like a long ass yeah. way. Like I think Ogre actually made a tweet own... about it. Hang on, let me see if I can find he it. He did. I believe he said, on estimation, the distance between the shore and Valinor is similar to the distance of the Shire to Mordor. Holy uh, shit! <laughs> So this is a long way. That makes the fucking thing at the end even I don't know what you mean, funnier. Mel. I don't know what you mean. Right now, <laughs> this is just a ship journey, okay? Which is fine. Okay, Ships can do this. Fine. Yeah, they can. That. They can do, do. Man, they've been on. They have been on the ship for a long time already. When they're it, anyway. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, I'm moving right along. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Um. So the king says, had Galadriel continued, she may have encouraged the evil she was trying to stop. And then Elrond's like, oh, so the evil was real? And uh, the king's like, don't you worry, boo. The right thing was done. <laughs> now go work with Ke Celebrimbor, our engineer man. He's like, oh, okay. And he's on a new plot line now. But there you go. That's our little hint, I guess. A... The the king, king might be up to something. Who knows? He seems oh, to... My. You'd think the whole, because he said the evil was vanquished, but he also seems to think that it may not be. And it's like, what's going on there? I don't know. I guess we'll get more on that. I don't know. Um, I would like to point out that this guy, the, I guess we can have this talk. Maybe I'm just weird, but mm -hmm. like, I don't, I feel like these are people cosplaying elves and not actually elves. Uh, yeah, don't, I, don't, I don't disagree. Don't, yeah. Like yeah, I know they what just you mean. Don't, they don't seem like they're elves. You know, they're just guys with pointy ears. There's nothing elvish about. It. They don't have this fairness yeah. and this, this, this elf-like quality to them. Their presence is lacking. Yeah, they yeah, just feel they like have... just feel like some random dudes. They're not like elves. It's like, yeah, we're doing the things and stuff. Uh, um, someone um, just wanted to let me. Uh, I'll, I'll tell him. Uh, Rags does know that elves are not real, but. What? 
Wait, <laughs> what? You take or, that back. I just wanted to rip that off as soon as possible. So, but yes, it does. It so doesn't sorry, feel quite out that way. Like there is, uh, they are what they are. Which um, does and I also... he know that the plural of elf does not have an f in it? Apparently, he doesn't know that. Elfs. So you could tell him that. Well, you can tell me that because I did a typo on on the Twitter and someone pointed it out to me. Loser. <laughs> I was hoping nobody would see. Oh yeah. Um. Then they're like. Have you ever met Kella Brimbor? And then he shows up, and there's this that like, is such selection a of Wombo name. Two it or is three, a Wombo name. like two <laughs> or three seconds of him just sort of like, hmm. what's up? I'm, I'm here <laughs> like, now. I'm gonna hey. explain all the things to you. They rehearse this, where it's like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Kella Brimbor, and then I'm gonna turn to him, and then that's when you start walking down the path, so that you're on the bridge when he turns around. They totally orchestrated this. Because he like shows up at the, exactly the time he needed to for the conversation, and he stands there. He was and hiding he smiles, behind the tree, and he was like, "He's gonna say my name. He's gonna say my name. You're gonna wait for it. It's gonna be so cool." <laughs> he looks like um, he looks like one of the Doctor Who's. Which one? Which one is he? He looks like one of the old ones. Which one? I, do I, think I, I don't know. know. I don't know. Kellebrimbor. He just <laughs> looks. He looks like a Doctor Who. Um. <laughs> he does. Chat yeah, but which one? Up. I don't know which. I don't know. Though I, I don't know their names. Someone I'll said which. Uh, he looks like. Uh, Someone says the third. We got Matt the Smith, third? Sylvester Decoy, and Pertwee. So it seems like people are not sure which one you mean. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll get a, I'll get a picture. He just, he makes me think of one. Um. Mm. Let's see. He looks like the suspense. I don't. I don't it's know. Crazy, it's killing me. Like sort of. Look <sighs> really at Christopher know. Eccleston. I gotta. I gotta. I'll like look at pictures of them. Well, yeah. And... Let us know if you uh, you discover. No, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you know. It mm -hmm. could be that it, he just doesn't, and I mm. I just associate his look with <laughs> a look of a Doctor Who. But I don't know. It's some. It's certainly something to mull over. Something to think about, really. What if I don't want to think about it? So I think you're going to be missing out on a really interesting bit of a. I mean, it's going to be more interesting than a show. Do. That's for sure. But Lenny well, Henry. Well, ironically, uh, probably is. Yeah. <laughs> Lenny Henry's talking about all the signs just from his house, just announcing the signs are all weird. And then Nori's yeah. like, what signs? And he's like, fuck off. Stop listening in on me. And it's <laughs> like, weirdo, go away. You might want to not be announcing it from your podium if you don't want people to fucking be listed. I don't know. It's yeah, he is idea. talking out loud in public. Reading his little future book. But yeah, he says the skies are strange. That's from the trailers. I remember that. Wow. Skies are strange. See then. He's like, what does that mean? Come back. Oh, Nobody damn. knows. So, um, and that's yeah, the scene. He, that's, that's like yep, two that's minutes. It. It, was, it was just, <laughs> yep, that's done. So back with Elfman, and he's like, so you know the people from the place you're born? They were pretty loyal to Morgoth back in the day. Wink, wink. And then she's like, wow. Whoa. What the fuck that are you was trying literally to say, bro? 12 million years ago. And she's like, I am <laughs> offended. Even... You're implying I have evil blood. And then he goes, no, 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 no. What I'm trying to say is... You are actually the kindest touch I have known in all my days, oh. which is one of the simpiest lines I think we've ever heard in history. But, you no, know, he's an elf. Nice. Uh, that's awfully simpy. You've been awfully simply or simpy over there. <laughs> Look, he's running out of time. He's got to. He's got to take his chance now. This is how you do it. Um. But anyway, they they were they were having that back and forth, uh, and I think is is that is that it? Do they discover the reality at this point? The Oh, there they do. Yeah, so yeah, they were she, heading. She, she runs up. Like, yeah, they were mm -hmm. heading to the dark patch with the 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 evil thing that the cow grazed on. Instead, they discover this, which to me, <sighs> is like catastrophe, as they call it. Holy yeah. moly! That looks pretty. That looks pretty awful. Um, Everyone here has been a fucking right tax. They've been. They've been. A, they've been. Clearly, they've been stolen from slash destroyed on with purpose. Like yep. some raiding party just has assumed fucked them up. they're all dead. Basically, I just assuming you're all. Also, they, it's they do that thing where the camera angle shifts, and now they notice all the smoke. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You would spot that smoke a while back, but uh, the thing that bothered me the most about this is that she's like, oh no. 
<laughs> oh, that's that be a little bit more <laughs> destroyed that's annoying. About it? Um, yeah. Instead of having her spot the smoke from the distance, or him with his elf eyes, if I'm allowed to say that, yeah. and, and she's just like panicked, like, oh god, oh god, I gotta go, fuck, 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 and she like it takes after it, sprinting, and she's worried and distraught, and then she comes across it, and you have that sting of her seeing this thing. Yeah. Like, no, they just sort of like, oh, let's go over this hill, take a look. Oh, oh, how about that? Yeah, after telling us, oh, I have I've grown up there. There's good people there, so you probably knew knew, yeah. knew a lot of people in there. And so was like, and, oh, and good it was, fire. It was that's, odd to me nice. because this is a, a day's walk. This is another yeah. village that is a day's walk away. This is a place she's probably been many times. Why wouldn't you? Like, yeah, you probably know a lot of people here, which gets confirmed soon. Well, as we later, and yeah. She, to the point where she knows who lives in which houses, but she just doesn't give a fuck. She's just like, oh, this is kind of lame. Uh, happened here. Um, they crank up her care factor when she gets back to the other village, but it was bizarre. I don't know if it was an acting script or directing thing, but they legit forgot that she yeah. would be absolutely yeah. panicked but, by seeing this. Do we go in here in this episode or is this next episode? I think it's when next they episode. check out the thing. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I, I, I thought it was really odd, and I was hoping that they'd fix that the next time we see them. They don't. They don't. So, yeah, now we get... Uh, we're actually close to the end of the episode, I think. Yeah, the, the, we're about to go, we're about to do the celebration, but Galadriel's having some thong, thonks. I was like, thonks, I'm big thonks. Is this what she wants? Is it? And she starts to think back to that wonderful speech, I guess. Or wait, not yet, actually. Yeah. It's kind of, we get a lot of visuals here. Oh no, we we got the meteor stuff. It's like all <laughs> mashed up of everything right now. It is funny to see all of those visuals that it's just like Finrod. Do you know why a ship <laughs> floats and a stone can I like oh not again? <laughs> oh <laughs> no, no, god, you, this fucking You story died centuries again. ago. Let it go. We already know what just fucking god damn it. Um Yeah, so that that the there's a comet. And it's spotted by many people across Middle Earth, and the funniest one to me was the Kellabrimbo Elrond one, which it, it goes past. It just shows them here as though they were just standing around. Like, oh, look, a comet. They all look at it. And it's just like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's just in the woods. It's just like, oh. Like, like they were all right. their way to a comet will go past Morris them place. pretty quick. So it just feels to me like yeah. this was a, we're just waiting for a comet. Oh, look, a comet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Neat. Like, ooh. Um, I've been party. waiting for this for centuries. Yeah, of course, they're just trying to give the impression that uh, everybody's seeing this thing, which kind of binds the... Um, the narrative in terms of timeline. Uh, mm -hmm. Can't get out of that now. But yeah, they start giving the light a little feel, giving a little touch, as you do when you go into big light. And she's like, oh, jeez, oh, God. She's backing oh. up. She, she don't want it. Don't want it. Uh, um, oh, yeah, I guess this is a, a bit of a random thought, but um, yeah, you do wonder how coincidental it was that the cow guy showed up to her at the same time as he showed up to her so that he got put onto the path of going to the uh, the burned out village. In the mm -hmm. burn, I mean, in the, and they never referenced the idea that on the day, at 79 years to the day that the elves are being called back from the village, that's when the town burns down. Yes, which, yep. They never yeah. mentioned that, I don't think, in the show. It's like, what a, what like, a surely the elves should be going, wow. That's yeah. a coinky dink. I've, I've written that down for for the next episode all the way at the end. It's like, man, this all happened. They just disbanded all the watchtowers, then unmanned. Yeah. And now they just do the thing. It feels like they should have waited even more with this. So they know the elves are actually gone, gone. Because there's probably still a fuck ton about that they can get, you would think. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a couple of those. So it's a well, we only got two episodes to work with, and we still got a bunch of them. So anyway, yeah, it's like, <laughs> how do right. I know which light to follow when the light bounces off the water, the water's darkness, the flame flam, and he's like, you gotta figure it out yourself, little sis. Yeah. I would always be here to give you riddles. Sometimes you, sometimes you don't know until you touch the, the darkness. Give it a little touch. Give it a little, give it a little touch. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. So yeah, the, and 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 her like elf friends are like, oh, you, you gotta you gotta focus, you gotta miss it, just be careful. And then she's like, oh, nah, God, I'm coming, I'm out, and she jumps into the water. 
<laughs> and at this point, it's like, man, how far yeah. away oh, are you from dead. the store? So, hey, let's be good like, faith. She'll obviously have a backup plan. She might have organized a ship. She's she's going to use her magic to ride a dolphin. There's going to be plenty of ways that she'll be fine. I don't think we should like, assume she's, she's swimming back. Gonna swim all the way back to Middle Earth. Yeah, that would be stupid. That's not what's happening. That would be I, I, insane. Got, obviously, guys, there's a backup plan. Guys, guys I've bad news. I've bad news. You well, mean? you couldn't, because you... none of us have seen episode two until we cover it scene by scene in this. That's how that works, okay? That's the truth. That's what everyone knows that to be true. true yeah. We've oh, not yes, seen episode I... two. Nobody has until we've we mentioned definitely it. definitely haven't. I don't have bad news yet. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. the comet lands <laughs> right next to Nori, who's possibly the one person in the entire village who wouldn't tell everyone. <laughs> we'll get there. Anyway, it's, yeah. it's, it's a, 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 a little leaf falls next to the king guy, and he's like, oh, it's a spooky leaf. And he looks at it, it's a fucking, it's, it's a goop leaf. It's got like the black goo on it, yeah. <laughs> this leaf with black goo. Like, yeah. I, and it's funny because, like, his reaction to it is just so meh. But, like, guys, look at this fucking leaf. It's a venom leaf. Something's, something's wrong he, with this. Yeah. Express with your face, please. Emote. You know? Like, huh. No. Apparently, according to the show, you know, it's whispering black speech, too. That's probably not good. Oh, hey, we need to do that. Do you think the elves are like, <laughs> oh, the trees are speaking black speech? <laughs> you might be high. It's like people who have people who have orc PTSD from the war. <laughs> they think the trees are speaking black speech. So, um, yeah, he doesn't. I don't know what to make of his expression. He's just like, huh? He's like, huh? He's like, he's definitely paying attention to it. He does, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Those leaves Maybe get all Maybe it goes stanky. away if I stare at it. Stanky leaves. But, um, yeah. all right, well, that's that's that, I guess. And the, the comet has landed, and Nori's going to go and have a look, see what the fuck's going on. And I think, is that how our episode ends? Very, very epic. Yeah, we just see we see the, the naked man the surrounded eye. by, by that the fire. That is funny. That, that is looks funny. like Sauron's eye. Yes. Oh, no. Right. I guess we are not Jump on the gun a bit, but this fire is also not hot either. Yeah. What? Hey, well, this is a very. It makes sense. This is a very evil place. It's like the two times that we see fire in the episode. What? <laughs> and what's interesting is that Fringy points that out. Also, I also point this out when when I was watching it with Mahler the other day. I was like, "Wow, <laughs> fire is just shit in this universe. It's, shit. it's really <laughs> bad." Get some fire else. sucked. Good. What was cool? It ruined fire. Guys, yeah, everybody that, directed by the guy who directed Fallen Kingdom. Woo! Yes, that's right. Are maybe, they trying maybe... to set up that this is evil? Like, remember when fire didn't work up in the ice fortress of evilness? It's maybe, also not maybe, working here. Maybe. Oh, maybe that's, that's Sauron's cool. plan all along. He just wants to get rid of all the heat and wants to sell his marks because they still have heat. So he's just he wants to monopolize to the heating cash. industry. He the wants to monopolize industry. the heating industry. Yeah. The fucking. <laughs> that would be a plot twist. Which gets Would us. you like to buy some heat? <laughs> gets us to episode two. Sour on the robber baron. I'm gonna go for a pee pee and refill my drank ledgers. Be right back. Okay. He actually um, wants to be able to sell people fire. That works. <laughs> I mean, this is gonna be a huge industry for that. I think. Revolutionary might even say. Fire is a big Maybe deal. Maybe he wants to use fire as a weapon, and he wants to lure people in with a false sense of security, like, oh, that's Sauron's fire, that stuff never works. And then they go forward and like, oh god, it works, it, it works, works, it works, oh god. It works, ow, this is like normal fire, ow. Um, so we get our intro. Oh. Well, so maybe something that might be worth highlighting before we jump straight into episode two. Think about how much was accomplished in the Fellowship of the Ring in that's an hour and pot. ten minutes. Well, yeah, maybe maybe Let it's a good time to get a get a vibe from the audience who haven't seen it. We've just described to you an hour of, of Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, and an hour. Um, hour of power. Not a the lot of, of power. characterization. We're very very thin on that department, actually. Um, it's incredibly thin. It's um, shockingly thin. I've seen people say, yeah, because they're world building, which uh, I don't know where you would. I... There's a lot of dialogue scenes we just went through. I think um, it's. I certainly felt this by the end of episode two, but even by the end of episode one, all I could think is like, what, what would it be that anybody is latching onto in this show that isn't just, it's Lord of the Rings? Like, who is the character that's going to be, who is the character who's already, you know, caught your interest and you want to see where their journey's going to take them? Because like, as it stands, they're all pretty straightforward they say exactly what they mean. There's no misunderstanding them. 
and what they have going on isn't that like multifaceted you know at least right now at the end of episode one yeah it definitely is um it's a lot of not stuff happening it's it, there's not anything meaningful happening they do not do a good job well, with it's, it's um aspect, which is the characters after an, an hour i don't care about anybody it's a really odd case because th- it's long like it's an hour um it's over an hour even it's yeah. it's both long and the scenes are long and yet it feels like what we achieved in the episode could have been achieved in like 25 30 minutes um it's pretty it's pretty bizarre to like drag on for so long yet a lot of the time these scenes feel like they're missing like important lines of dialogue or important context you know where characters don't you know you know it's like kind of the um uh it's something it that i noticed in a lot of it wasn't structured poorly they didn't plan or, it feels like it's um it's 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 almost as if we have the time so we need to use the time and so it's almost like it's it's um ballooned rather i don't know it's it's um Alarms. for for an hour and 10 minutes we didn't get that much done um feels like we could have easily done it in half the time yeah or that if we were going to use this time there was a lot more that we could have achieved with these characters i feel like there's a I lot of empty calories where you have uh, the the tower empty scene with the one piece right. ladder i think that that's a good it's a really good example of they could have done that throughout in a meaningful way but they just decided to devote a whole scene to just elves are racist sort of and he came up here to tell him that yeah, there wasn't. Um, like they, didn't... they took a lot of time to tell us that the human, well, man and elf hate each other in that area. But it was done like it took a while instead of it being relatively easy to do while doing other things. Yeah, they they devoted a whole little sequence to the uh, our our two elf guys chatting about what are you doing? Are you smell? And that's a scene. That yeah. tells us nothing. And how well, and how and you should, it's forbidden for an elf, or not forbidden, but bad bad luck comes with man and elf getting together. And she's like, oh, okay. Yeah. It was like half of that scene. You know, it, there's just there, there's so there's no planning. Like it wasn't stru- it wasn't organized well. They didn't think about trying to be efficient with their time. I wonder if it's my problem not- with the dialogue is that it's like they were so concerned with uh it's very uh well, it depends which characters we're talking about, but especially with the elf characters, it's it's very uh purple prosy. Like it's uh it's it's kind of like it's long winded and um at times like confused. I mean we talk about that opening scene, right? The whole analogy of the rock and the uh and the, the ship, that to me is like such a clear example of it I don't makes... know. You try to make an idea that isn't that you. You really um. You really got caught up in trying to to write some really poetic, you know, like sort of a uh, explanation of of the theme that you want to go for. Maybe for the whole season, or maybe just this episode. Um, to where like you're obfuscating like what you're tr- no, but that's, they mean, everybody they... says exactly what they mean though. Like that's the, that's kind of like the problem. It's this weird um, I. I'm I'm really struggling to hone in on what exactly it is that's annoying me about the uh the dialogue. It's lipstick on a pig. It's we're going to th- this conversation is very flowery and poetic and we're really going to like we're really just stroking it and we're trying to be very artistic but the fundamental thing of what it is it's still just not good. Well, yeah, I think that might be the way to describe it. It's very flowery, but at its core, nothing that's being said is particularly profound or interesting. Yeah, well, like, it, um, it, it fools you spend, for a moment. How much time we spend with, uh, with with describing and assessing Nori, and what have we learned in total? It's that she's going to be a rebel. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Um, okay. But nothing else. I don't know much about the rest of the uh, the village or what they've been up to. It's 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 both f- focused and yet like pretty uh pretty shallow you have these groups of people who don't operate as if they're part of a close-knit community which happens a lot but in this in particular you have like two two communities the harfoot one and the human one and you don't get the sense that this is actually a 
community. They're just like they're like window dressing. Well, because we have our characters, right? And and we're focused on our characters, but as for like the world in which they exist in and other people, eh, you know, like it's not as important, I guess. I mean, and I you, totally you believe if if you look at the Shire from Lord of the Rings, it is easy to believe that it is full of families and people and that different groups know other different groups and there's a little social hierarchy going on and like a like an existence goes on here like you could well, yeah, live what is, here what does it mean for a world to feel lived in what it, what i think it often means or, or a good example or an indication of a good world building is when you can have your main characters interact with other characters in the world and those characters don't just feel like they're props that exist solely to advance their story but that they are their own people with their own history that informs what they say and how they act um you it's know, the, the of, world feels yeah. a lot bigger than just a few people. Yeah. Uh, in Yeah, in the Shire, I believe there's tons of stuff going on. And it's a real world, you know. And here I'm just like, I just don't... Like, this world doesn't feel real or... It doesn't... It just... Uh, it, I, I'm not sure how I would... Because, like, at times the production values are, like, really impressive... Um, both in terms of like visual effects and set design and everything and costumes. Maybe they squander yet, it on the wrong things, you know. Like I, like they they I'm don't sure use it, it is. wisely. Um, maybe that's what it is, right? You have access to all of this uh, material, but um, well, so a couple of people are saying in chat the world doesn't seem lived in, which is probably that might be part of it. Yeah, it was. It was a world that seems invented for the show which is like a, if, yeah I, of course it is but it shouldn't feel that i shouldn't know that i wonder I shouldn't part think of that, that is because um something that felt really uh in episode one i was really struggling to understand the uh the the timeline you know like how because yeah cause it takes hundreds of years travel in this world you know like it's it's middle earth it's fantasy it's um it takes a long time to travel to places but i never got the sense that it you know, like, how long did it take for Galadriel to, on the ship to go across the ocean? How long would that have been? Like, at least, like, a few days, weeks? right? At, probably weeks, really. Um, weeks. And it's like, I mean, okay, so that's happening over the course of weeks. It across the Atlantic back in the day. Yeah, exactly. And this is, this is way earlier in, you know, the timeline if we were comparing it to Earth in terms of technology. Um, yeah, like, definitely weeks. If that's happening over the course of weeks... When exactly is uh, the plot line with the human village uh, and like the elf ranger? Like, wh wh where does that slot in? What about the um, the hobbits? Like, where or the uh, like? What wh where is their story set? Like, what time? I, th I think um, like a sense of time and a cohesiveness in, in that distance. regard might have helped a lot in terms of making this world feel like a place rather than a backdrop. For whatever stories they need to tell in any given moment. Yeah, we we don't have much of a sense of time and distance. Um, yeah, which makes us. But anyway, two, we presumably. Um, the the, yeah. uh, the the title sequence isn't. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't pretty, like it. Uh, I'm just going to say I don't and like I'll... it. It doesn't seem very inspired. It doesn't seem like it is cohesive in terms of its design when the text pops up at the end. I think they oh, wasted... No, when the text the, popped up, that seemed really... That felt like, man, it's like you went into Vegas and just typed in... You'd expect in, the, 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 okay, all the, the sand, rings of power. you expect all the grains to be reformed into the rings of power, not the... Yeah. You would think that, yeah. Instead of just random oh. symbols... you got to no, show we, them, Walla. you got to show everybody what it looks like. It's on the way, don't worry. Yeah, it. You know how like the the longer you watched Arcane, the more the title sequence like made sense. You know, yeah. and this is just like, oh, how did this get approved? You could have done all kinds. Of, you could have had maps. You could have had you know some really artistic stuff with the the, the style of the world. You could have had all kinds of things, right? You could have foreshadow foreshadow of uh, foreshadowed events. Mm -hmm. And this is well, just like, oh, are. here's Who some knows, dirt. Right? Maybe here's some dirt on a metal. Maybe. Hey. Could they be? I guess maybe. Don't put dirt on me. 
It's probably it probably means more than we're gathering. Um, I just don't right, know. There it is. Yeah, what, there uh, it is. What we're doing exactly? Um, like, what 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 is that? Like, if, if it doesn't feel like it's it doesn't feel like it's part of the intro, you know? No, just put over it. Just, oh look look here it is. Someone said someone said it never took months to cross the Atlantic Ocean. So when the Pilgrims arrived at Cape Cod in 1620. It it took uh, it took two months sixty six days so it took just over two months two so two months, months in a week two months and sixty six days sixty six days isn't that that would be four months right I think I said or did I say or two oh, months or sixty six okay. days I thought you said and right no no that would have been oh what a trip but it it took yeah. sixty six days to cross the Atlantic so that that is two months in a week so yeah right hey, it took at least nine months to get to Ozland. At least the what intro is not the thing people were thinking it's going to be. The weird. Oh, game. what the uh, oh the, god, the thing where it was all of the characters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the thank characters goodness it like, wasn't Ooh. that. Yeah, but this to me was just meh. I was like, okay, it's very generic. Um, I don't know that. Yeah. I felt that even the the track felt generic to me. Mister yeah. Shaw made it correct. Yes, Howard Shaw did the main theme. Ben McCready did the score overall. Yeah. Well, suppose we'll move on. Uh, so we got yeah well we're starting up with our landed stranger man um did we just well th th yeah Galadriel's just in the ocean whatever um start swimming we're gonna be calling <laughs> him by what we assume him to be I assume we may as well uh, I, I called him meteor man in, in my notes <laughs> he is he is expected to be Gandalf <laughs> just he's never gonna meteor be man. thanks Ringy thank you. <laughs> I like video man, that's funny. Yeah. I didn't laugh because I didn't think it was funny. Oh, Wanted to make sure you knew. Um but as See, far Rex as I know came, Rex came around as well, you can do it briefly. Come on. No, he's gonna he's apparently I'm, gonna become gonna either around. Gandalf or Saruman, but more than likely gonna be Gandalf. That's but now he's just naked. But uh either that they're not gonna name him for a while or that they're not allowed to name him. Um that, I don't, man. That must so be like, crazy. really difficult to tell your story when it's like you don't have access to significant parts of <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Yeah, so I don't know. Can we? Yeah, it, it that that is so fucking bizarre. Like you can't say Hobbit. Yeah. Uh, I get. Like yeah. I don't know any of this to be true. It's what I've been told. Uh, I haven't looked into it myself. It's just it amuses me. Um. Someone yeah, said it's Radagast pre bird turns. <laughs> yeah, Radagast was taller. Uh, I thought Radagast was a little one. So if this is Radagast pre turd birds, then I said he was taller. He was taller Instead. pre bird turds. So the, the the Hobbit happens after this. Yeah. Yeah. So he would have been taller if this is Radagast, because Radagast is short. You got it? Okay. All right. Wait. Um, so, yes, as was stated, the fire is no longer hot um, in oh, the world, no. I guess, again. I think the the assumption that it's supposed to imply to us that this could be an evil man, that's probably it. Um, yeah. So I imagine that's just a red herring. We got... Uh, th th we find that out because, I guess, this friend turns up, who, of all the other people to have turned up, is the one person that you can keep this a secret with. Yes. This is the one who eats berries like a fucking savage barbarian. <laughs> yes, she does. Like an animal, like an actual animal. Um, and she's like, "Your mom's gonna kill you," and she's like, "You won't tell her." And then, so I was immediately like, "Oh, we've decided we're keeping this a secret. Why? No one's gonna come check it out." Yeah, nobody does. Yeah. Uh, of <laughs> course. If it's and this close, right, I don't know. If a man fell, walk over to it. Man fell from space. I really don't think you should be worried. Like, oh, they'll get this is going to get me in trouble. It's like I don't think you can be blamed for this. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. think that. Um. So to me, it just seemed like they're trying to get an excuse very quickly to make it so that we're going to have our little adventure team that are yeah. just these guys. Because we don't want him to be a part of, like, entered into the village, which I just don't think would happen. I think it's it's like this fucking weird dude fell out of the sky. I'm going to tell people who know better than me about everything about this. That would just be the most yeah. normal thing ever. He eventually gives her reason, and it is fucking crazy. Um, yeah, uh, they're creeped out by him. Oh, she, she has fallen in at this point. I'm just trying to keep track of the... 
Yeah, yeah. What what they're saying. Okay. So when she is falling into the pit, I want you to watch the fat one. It's funny how okay. she what her her what she's doing. Searching for this. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh no they didn't tell her what to do did they they didn't tell her what to do oh so she just squats down and puts her arms forward and she holds that pose <laughs> for those who missed it she does this and then if you keep an oh, eye on wait, it I she's will... just doing that the whole time <laughs> she force pushed her <laughs> 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 oh, and that's really awkward. Yeah, that's awkward really shit. bad. Yeah. How does that happen? I don't know. I don't know. How it's does like... nobody on set go? That's a bit stupid. Let's how does the have actress, her do something else. How does the actress go? Like, is this weird that I'm just well, I squatting in this pose? Like, I guess they said they'll fix it in post, or like it'll make sense when it gets cut together in the final. They'll yeah. CGI Final her cut. arms fleeming around. It'll make it look way better that they didn't. So, um, yeah, she says, uh, we can't leave him. It's not who we are. And then she goes, not who you are. Oh. And I'm just like, Ugh. what a line. What a line. You don't it's need different. it. You just have her do it. You don't need someone to go. Yeah, yeah it's Nora. You know, you wouldn't leave a person behind, would you? Because that's that's. Oh, like, oh, we need yeah. to end this. We need to quit this fucking lazy ass someone tells someone their own traits for the sake of the audience. It's so shit. That doesn't happen. Yeah. You know? That's oh, yeah. The, people... the, the conflict here, like I said, it's just strange because if some guy fell out of space, like the first thing you'd expect is not only for more people to turn up, but for her to be like, we got to get him back, see if he needs help. We got to, who the fuck is this guy? What the fuck's going on? Uh, their conclusion immediately is to get as many materials as they can to help keep him hidden from the village. The old group of people. And just like, okay. They think very, very highly of their own people. I just clearly. don't... Yeah, I I thought that was bizarre. I was just like, why? Are you going to kill him? Like, are are they going to eat him, you fucking barbarians? Maybe. Oh, little in the woods? Nothing wrong with eating people here and there. Right? You're hungry? <laughs> just once or twice. That's if they okay. fall out of the yeah, sky, yeah. like, nobody cares about them. It's fine. Just eat away. But, uh... <laughs> That's a good meme. Oh wait, is that a is that a reference to good old? Uh... It is. It is. Hang on. <laughs> All right, chat. I'll get you up to date. Whoop, whoop. Um. Yeah. So, you get a a lot of scenes of space man fallen and. Uh, Doing, doing flames with good old uh, thing, yeah. Because uh, Lenny Henry's like, and it's uh, there's, you know, there's some weird shit going on, and um, I think they say like the orders start migrating now, is because that's the doing soon. But it's like, no, we got to do the festival first. So they all mm. you think know they that something weird. Ahead. They know something weird has happened, but none of them want to go see what it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, We're right, too I, scared. I, I, I forgot. It... When 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 they they grab him up for the first time, or he stands up for the first time, the fire goes out and kind of into the spaceman. But all the rocks falls... float around. Yeah, and then he falls back down, and the fire goes back on. Well, I, I I mean that's probably not going to happen ever again. But I'm just wondering what the mechanics for that are. Mm. To just oh, put him it... on the floor and everything starts to set fire, set on fire. I don't know. It's, it's just weird. Um. Yeah, and so they're like, is he a troll? Is he an elf? Is he a... And they're just like... Again, this is what I mean. This is what the episodes are filled with. Is dialogue that really doesn't do much of anything. It's just sort of nothing stuff. Is... And then some of the stuff that is actually meaningful is baffling sometimes in terms of what We've people are saying. We've talked about it a lot before. That uh, good dialogue is often dialogue that's achieving multiple things at once. The dialogue in this show is often only achieving one thing at once. It's a useful stuff. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's even superfluous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, it's like, you know, like, is he a troll? Is he an elf? Nah, he's too ugly. Like, this is for comedy, but it's just not... Another thing that happens for comedy is they, they leave him for a moment and he starts rolling down the hill and it's just like, man, this is like level fucking, like, three out of ten comedy in terms of, like, potency. You're just like, yep. Ain't it funny that he's starting to roll down? Like, ugh. 
Yeah, it's just random slapstick. Yeah. I'm like, oh, uh, that's, no, that's actually, like, really I don't want him written. to get hurt. You know, um, we have a, it's, I don't know, like this whole, the whole Magic Man and Nori and Fat Kid and the, the Harfoot Village, this whole bubble of the story is really tough to have any sort of engagement with. Um, yeah, Harfoots are. I get they're they're timid. They don't want people to see them, but they're so cruel that they won't ever help an outsider. And they're curious enough. They're they want to leave. They want to move their whole village because of a meteor that lands within walking distance. But, but they're they don't too check scared out. to not. Yeah, they're too scared to check it out. Yeah. And, and on that note, worried by the way, enough to move everyone at once. If that were the argument that she doesn't want him to be seen by the villager out of fear that they'll kill him, that's just fucking hell. Like fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, wow. Y'all don't seem that bloodthirsty, but I guess you are. Wouldn't it, would, I think it'd be more interesting if they were very, especially if these are like proto hobbits. They sort of keep to themselves, but they're not cruel or mean. They're just mm -hmm. not big, and they can't really defend themselves. So they're very just skittish around outsiders, but they're they're a kindly people. They they're very they don't seem nice to each other even. You know, no, they just, just seem kind they of seem like a bunch at of each other all the, all the time. Yeah, they're a bunch of short, dirty pricks <laughs> who don't know how berries are eaten. On the note of everyone says what they feel in this. You get a friend saying, pricks. Nori, why are you doing this? He literally says, I feel like he's my responsibility. <laughs> oh, um, we talked about like, this when we watched it. It's uh. like, this is different. Um, she says he could have landed anywhere, but he landed here. And it's like, okay. It's like, I know, to find him, I know he's important. Oh. There's a reason this happened. I was supposed to find him. I know he, I have to know he's safe. I can't walk away from this. Good God. Why can't we just do the standard meme where first time around she's very evasive, second time around she gives a bit more of an answer, and then finally the third time around she states what she means. Like, even, I don't think we've been given anything that. to understand yeah. this. She's crazy. She's like, where did she get all this from? Some guy fell out of space. Yeah. She's like, he's my responsibility. It's like, wh Where exactly why? was this established in episode one that this was something that would be really important to her? And if someone was to say, like, well, What's... this is establishing your character, but like, wow, what a strange person. <laughs> don't you when we were watching the episode i was saying what's weird about this exchange from a, a learning about characters perspective is that her reason for helping him seems to be that she appeals to sort of cosmic fate like he was put here for a reason for me to help him i've been like this is just sort of what i'm supposed to do in that sense not well of course i'm helping him because you help people that's just the thing you do is you help people that doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be what her explanation is. She isn't doing it because she's nice. She's doing it because she thinks he fell here for her. Which is bizarre. bizarre. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and she's like, I want to make sure he's safe. And it's just like, I mean, you don't even know if he is in trouble right now. I feel like your, your friendos in the village could help out. Unless, of course, you believe they'll all eat him or something. Which, again, I yeah. just... But that's our plot line here. And they keep telling yeah. us over and over again, including from her and her friends, Nori's just a great gal. She takes care of anybody that is in trouble, yeah. and and she doesn't she doesn't follow the rules. Hey, she's not like other girls. Okay, like <laughs> fine. Doesn't mean she knows how to eat berries. Um, I don't think she did. All that. Damn it. But, um, Someone said uh, it's very conceited and narcissistic of Nori, thinking the stranger fell there for her to take care of him, and be responsible for. I mean, like, kind of the idea that this all happened because of me. Not it, it's it's kind of the opposite of the Lord of the Rings, where you have like, well, you have to do the best with what you're given, and you know the situations might be bad, and you know, you know Theoden has that, you know, like why is it that you know these times should be mine and stuff like that. It, it's almost like the opposite message. Um, we come back to our elf friend and his his human girlfriend. Uh, they're having a look around. That's what he is. He's our elf friend. Ron Wynn. They're talking about how they've spied some disturbances in the land, and they theorize whether or not they say like a ground quake or whatever. I'm just gonna call it a fucking earthquake. They, she's she's basically saying, I'm pretty sure, yeah, probably probably an earthquake did this. 
they're like in a, on, really? they're in a ruin. Like it's <laughs> been destroyed and ransacked by holy. The, the clearly, probably a yeah, whole group like of crazy fire. people. Everything is and, on fire. Like, and she's like, how did the I'm cow sure die? How did, there's bat. like a cow laying there and it's dead. How the fuck? How the, how the earthquake killed a cow? And once again, like I can understand him being stoic about this. This is, this is totally fine. But he's not as attached to it. He's in like job duty mode, I guess. Yeah. And she, there's like there's fissures, and um, she's like, so it might it might have been that. And I just I cannot believe that they don't think it's all connected when there's no bodies as well as they establish, and no wounded. He says, and and she just doesn't seem to give a shit. She's just yeah, sort of like, no yeah. survivors, hmm. no wounded. You're right. There's it, it, this is so strange. Perhaps they all fled. If they all fled, why they would have come to your <laughs> town? And also, it. they might have run past you right as well while you were out walking. You would have, and also remember the cow and the the goo. Like, the do goo. you not think that that <laughs> goo. Might be, not my goo, obviously, but like, don't you think that I might didn't be? Say a, that. A bad yeah, moment? I know you did. I'm just making sure. I don't know why you would, but that's fine. Go she ahead. walks into just, this house and she's like, "Oh, this belongs to Kieran and Hannah," and it's like, what? <sighs> "You know them by their name. This is their yeah. house, and it's yeah, their exactly. ruins." Like, oh, and I guess they're probably dead. Oh, yeah, man. they're probably fucking oh, dead. Okay. Whatever. But then he, he goes Here, to like quick, a, look more stone faced. There's a big hole and several tunnels that lead off from it, and he's like, "This wasn't an earthquake." It's like, man, <laughs> he's smart. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, we saw him at the chess table. He is very smart. That's, he yeah, is, that's but he's, he's the big smart. And so he's like, "All right, you go warn your people. I am going to go into the tunnel." And I asked Rags this when we were watching it because I just I can't wait to talk about it. We're not there yet, but I will say, what is his goal? It's like, well, he's inspecting these tunnels, I guess, which is my I, you know, yeah. I think my guess was he wanted to see what was in the tunnels. Yeah, what did that's this? Because right? yeah, like what did this? Yeah. And so, like you know, if I was his elf friend, I'd be like, well, all right, man. This they, they did annihilate a, a village of men, so, as in like you know, man. They, they are yeah. capable of defending themselves to some degree. So, are we sure about this? Because uh, you know, you go looking in the enemy tunnels, you're probably gonna find something. If um, I was her, I'd be like, "No, you need to come back with me. This is super dangerous. We need to, we need to go tell your elf friends. They're like the cops yeah, around here. Exactly. We need to go tell them." That is the first thing you should yep. want to do. But no, he wants to go inspect the tunnel, and you must be like, "Well, he must be really hoping to find whatever did this." So I guess we'll, we'll come back to him. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Um, my my, I I know that my people sided with Morgoth or whatever. Uh, so, but I, it seems like a bad idea to me. I don't know. So you got Celebrimbor and Elrond talking about their new partnership and how um, Celebrimbor wants to make a big old tower. Um, I thought it was funny, by the way. I said this uh, to Rags when we were watching it. Uh, so Elrond is like, uh, what do you want to make? And then Celebrimbor is like, what? That's going to come far later. What first comes is how or something like that. And it's like, oh, OK. Like, I guess he's saying in relation to maybe materials slash workers. And then he puts down like a, a equivalent of a blueprint and shows exactly what what they're making. I was like, so that's the what hmm. right there. <laughs> like you just add I guess. This, this, the what has now been done. I don't know. It just it, it seems like an unnecessarily cryptic sort of like flowery way of saying you know I'm not telling you what it is. And he's like, here's what it is, by it, the way. It, it seems like some, <laughs> if 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 I was Elrond, my snarky ass would just be like, oh, so it's tower. So it's the tower. It it, it is it's literally his what. Right. Literally is what? Why did you say it like that? <laughs> yeah, why are you just, being such a yeah, dumbass? You, a lot of the characters feel like they do that in the show. They just they say a bunch of bullshit. Like, <laughs> like, okay. Also, did we not talk on the way here? No. No. This they, seems like no. something that we would talk about on our journey here, you know? Like we, we didn't discuss anything or talk about anything on the whole trip over here. <laughs> Terra Eregion. They were busy waiting for the meteor. He just Maybe they, that's all they talked about. They literally only talked about the meteor and nothing else. So, um, yeah, he wants to build a big thing, but they don't have the time to be able to do it with the frame that uh, Celebrimbor wants. And so Elrond's like, oh, well, have you tried looking outside of elves for help? And then he's like, how far outside? Which is a really fucking awkward line when they show us the map. And it's a fucking, it's so close by the place he goes to for <laughs> yeah. help to the point where they don't even seem to change clothes or have supplies well, or have like any kind they of. They just walk there on 
foot. They just went for a casual stroll over to the yeah. dwarf man. Now, I'm not fully aware of exactly what kind of distance we're dealing with here, but if you can see this, chat, that's what they're showing us. I think I said to you, Rags, how far do you think that is based on the scaling of this map? Which is difficult to say, but still. Yeah, it's really tough to say. I think I guess like four days. We saw a big Which shot is a of guess. the... It's an actual yeah, guess. We saw a big shot of this city. Um, and the city is represented on the map there to be that size. So like, it just, it seems like that's going to be a fucking long journey. And when I say fucking long, I just mean relative to an afternoon stroll, you know? It's not as much longer than well, that. I mean, the reality is that pretty much any journey outside of, like, whatever city you live in or town is going to be long. This is a fantasy world. I mean, you're like, walking. They don't have cars. Yeah, if they got horses, that might help, but the horses got to yeah. sleep too, you know? Like, they got to yeah. rest. Yeah, the, the horses will absolutely help, but these, these motherfuckers are walking. Well, so I, that's the thing, right? Some people in chat will be like, well, what's the fucking problem? They would have they would have just montage cut to them getting there. And it's like, yeah, but look at them. They look exactly the fucking same as we Again. just saw them seconds well, ago, as if the conversation was from pause. They've got no supplies yeah. of any kind. Nothing. No horses, Again, no supplies, no provisions. Still, is this, are we now, in this story, a month ahead of the story with the hobbits? You know, like, are we now a month ahead? I doubt it. I doubt, I doubt it, that's yeah. what the show it intends. No I think clothes? they just don't really care to and account for how long it would take to travel places. He also very casually talks about how this will be the, the diplomatic move of the age, if they would even achieve this. Like, so this is... Uh, uh, the, the two of you just casually the, stroll yeah, over for the diplomatic I mean, meeting of the ages. There's no weight to this at all. They're doing something just... incredible, apparently. They just casually decided to do on an afternoon. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it feels like what they did was, it's, it it feels like it's a product of working in front of green screens. Yes. Where you're just, you walk into the next... Well, you don't even walk into the next set. It's the same set. You're just like, okay, now you guys are at this place. You know? And so you don't have to worry about those things. Like, if you're at actual locations and you have to actually travel, you might have it in your mind that, oh, we're traveling. We don't have that sequence where when he suggests going up to Casa Doom to talk to the dwarves, he's like, grab your traveling cloak and, uh, it will, you know... It, It'll take a few days to get there. There's there's no none of those lines or anything to imply that it's a journey that they're taking. I, it's, I haven't been this far north and da-da-da-da-da. Or, or maybe Elrond's hesitant to go up there because he might bump into Durin. Who knows? Who know, something. I I guess that's the Oh, point. man. Oh, they could God, have I got done, so much to say about that. Oh, like, oh well. I guess the, the point, they could have done something. The attitude Elrond has here is baffling to me when we find out exactly what the nature of all of this is. He's so yes, casual yeah. about turning up here when he really shouldn't be. Um, yeah, he should be very nervous about, like, oh shit, like, well, if I go up there and talk to him, he's gonna chew my ass off. Maybe, we'll get Not there. Like so we'll, 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 we'll just, get to yeah. that. But now he's just like, I want to speak to Durin. They're like, fuck off. And then he's not getting any results. Yeah. So he says, I invoke the right of Sirin Tarag. And it's like, okay. And even and Cal Brimble is like, what the fuck does that mean? And he's just like, don't worry, bro. Just go home. I'll take care yeah. of it. It's like, go, I'll, he I'll, does. I'll go home. <laughs> like, no, why do you bring me? Like, I walked here. <laughs> he's like, do you I mind if I like, you know, dwarves. can I have a drink and maybe go to the toilet before I leave? <laughs> like, yeah. No, oh, you're damn. an elf. You shit in the woods. Oh. Do elves wipe? I assume they do, with leaves or something. I Point being, I have an issue with the dwarves, and you are, you are a dwarf, and you are at the door of your dwarf town, and it's a lovely place, and your job is to guard the door and let people in, or maybe don't let them in. That's up to you at your discretion. And so, all of a sudden, these two elves show up, <laughs> and their outfits and they're both addressed as like we're lords and one of them is particularly famous and they're like yeah we would like to talk to durin and the, uh, the dwarfs at the door is like he's like no and he closes the door like well what well, aren't you curious you, at you the think... very least like do you not ask any questions are you gonna say let me go check you two are clearly special people like your political envoys essentially is what you'd think yeah. And the dwarf is like, no. And he closes the door. Like, it's supposed to be a comedy scene. Like, all those dwarves. I, I, yeah, just, just really. And this is the thing. There's so many scenes like this in both episodes where you're just like, what? Why would. 
Why does it work? Why are this you way? behaving like this? Why are you acting like this? And then once you get more you context, doing? it makes it even worse. But uh, hey, a little reprieve. I like the way that this place looks, and I like the song that yeah, plays same. with it. I yeah, know. this is a, it's in the it's, yeah. This is some. Wow. Well, so I think uh, what you said to me was that this was the part that definitely sounded a lot like God of War. Yeah, uh, it reminded me of God of War. Yeah, mm. um, it was cool. Yeah, but it just felt like it matches the dwarves and the the style of this place while also just being suitably epic plus thudding. I think is the way I described yeah. it. It feels appropriately hefty and dwarfy and also orchestral. Yeah. I like it. I like the visuals and I like the music. I really now like the visuals. It's yeah, a cool place. It, it looks like a place you could actually live. Like, oh, this is what like Moria was like before things, you know, went tits up. Like, I could totally believe this. Things are nice. Like, oh, this would be a pretty cool place to live. It's better than the fucking shit village where the humans are covered in dirt and grease. Oh, you, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jeez. Wait, you, sorry. You're very hung up on that. No, You're take just a very bath. Hung up on it all. Take a bath. They know what bathing is, and they just won't do it. To be fair, this is very consistent. Rags points this out in everything we cover that has that when it has the grimy humans living in. No, People I are just know. covered in it's dirt. Just, you just keep bringing it up, is all. He's very offended uh, to, uh, by it as a way to contrast it be with how much I like this place. Yeah, right, it's topical. I see. Yeah, it's topical. It's, so I'm very concerned, however, about the lack of railings and a lot of these uh these these pathways and such. I wonder. Wolves don't give a know. shit. Maybe a dwarf is like a squirrel mm -hmm. and they can't die from falling because they their terminal velocity is just it's still not quite enough force to kill a dwarf. So a dwarf could fall all the way down and they would just land and, and they wouldn't die from it. Maybe just, they could Have just we seen a dwarf. Land from a very far distance? Not yet, I don't think so. Not yet, and the lack of any sort of railing sort of implies that, well, it, if anything, it will inconvenience the dwarf because he has to now walk all the way back up. Though they have a, a, an elevator that I like, but... Mm. Now, mm -hmm. um, they begin the rite of Sirin Tarag, and because this show doesn't trust its audience whatsoever, they have Durin explain it specifically and explicitly to everyone here when all of them yeah. know exactly what it is, including Elrond. Yeah. So, they even laugh when it's mentioned, like they, they know exactly what it is. It's, uh, the, it's just that, as you all know, it's like, yes, as we all know, so you don't need to explain it again. You know, the thing that my brain went to, and it's, it's a bit of a distant reference, but hey, why not? Um, do you remember when they play, I think it's like, is it Dead Man's Dice or something like that in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 2? Um, they basically start playing it. And then I think it's Will that's like, how does this game work? What the fuck are the rules? Like, the, you know, that is the most normal way of doing it in a fantasy, sci-fi, whatever thing where you just like, there's a new thing that's happening. In this one, I are actually you think... That POV characters are, are very useful and, and oh, yeah. often popular oh, yeah. in media for some kind of a reason. Oh, liars, So a bunch dice. of people don't stand around telling each other things they already know awkwardly. Mole called it Dead Man's Dice. I don't know what it is. Liar's Dice is what people are saying it's called. I'm not a pirate. <laughs> I don't play that game uh, regularly. That's right. We didn't. That's right. We're not no. pirates. Not for Lord of the Rings. Exactly. Definitely. 100%. So, Dead Man's Dice does sound cool, though. I think so. Dead Man's, Dead Man's Dice does sound cool. Liar's Dice is like, eh. Fine. Dead Man's Dice. It, it, it just, it, it's peppy. Like, Dead Man's Dice. Dead so, Man's um, Dice. You know yeah. Imagine running this scene again, but without his explanation, they're all cheering, chanting, uh, Elrond's handed a hammer, and we're like, what? And then rocks start getting placed on these little, like, podiums, and then uh, you have Durin just be like, what are the stakes? And then Elrond can be like, you know, uh, or, or rather he can explain the stakes, because that's the thing that nobody will know necessarily if they change per game. You can explain that, and then he can smash at the one rock and breaks it, and he cheers. I think there's enough here for us to gather... Oh, okay. So they've got to, yeah. He's got to break a rock. Then Elrond breaks a rock. Then he breaks a rock. And it's, it's it's endurance. I get it. But they make it all like so fucking explicit that you you start to wonder. Like, first of all, do you really think I'm that retarded? And secondly, why are you wasting so much time? All of that yeah. dialogue is worthless now because you've already shown us what the fuck it is. Yeah, I remember at this point in the episode as well. It's like, man, we are really losing precious time. The last twenty minutes, nothing really happens. It's like. This episode feels a lot oh, yeah. emptier than the first, and the first yes. didn't feel particularly meaty. 
Yeah, for those who don't know in chat, we are a third into the episode. Yeah, this one nothing happened. Me when I got <laughs> like, it's nothing. Yeah, it's it's been almost twenty minutes, bitches, and we're we're just we just ain't done much. So just going here, going there. We're back with Nori, and she's she's decided what I should do with my pet hobo for now is feed him. <laughs> My pet hobo. And she decides this. This actually really annoyed me. I was watching it with rags more so than my first time around because I didn't. I didn't really think about it. She brings him snails to eat. Yeah. This struck me as quite bizarre. Fucking gross, man. Of all the things, we, like not even cooked, like not like escargot. Like we cooked these snails because, you know, yeah. But just raw snails. Now, you might Shell be thinking in chat, well, you know, maybe the, if that's what is common food to her, then it should be fine, right? And it's like, well, what about the berries? Yeah, just give us some fucking berries. One of the most, like, know how to eat them. neutral and simple and nice foods that most people like, as opposed to eating a snail, which she probably should be aware of, is fucking not not that usual. Um, no. Now, it's pretty it's, gross. It's just, it's just strange, that's all. And it goes wrong, because he doesn't take it out of the shell, he just eats it with the shell anyway. And, it's just like, and then she's like, you're not supposed to... Oh, oh shit. And it's like, alright. Uh, we established pretty quickly that he has no way of comprehending English, or at least he's not being honest about it, because he seems baffled by almost everything she does. And he doesn't communicate in any way, shape, or form, like, you know, nodding or shaking based on what she's asking. Um, but she continues to talk to him in English as though he will understand. The one that really stood out to me is that... Well, they do the thing. Um, it, they do the thing where she says a word or two, and he repeats one of the words back, and she's like, "Oh, good, you understand." Which like, is totally not true. <laughs> um, but yeah, like yeah, in terms of how it works. But uh, the friend turns up, like, blah, 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 and then he, he he like starts yelling at her because he's scared, and she's like, "No, no, no, friend, friend," as if. Well, well, <laughs> we we already have the thing where he yells at Nori for her son because she's like. Hello, and then he goes like, oh, Yeah, my point the is sky that sky darkens and winds blowing. Nobody notices this apparently. If and she's just like, "Hey, no, I'm cool. We, uh, we're friends, right?" Felt to me like the show thought in this scene it had been earned that her communication with him has improved when really it's still zero. It's zero, yeah. There's, there's, there's nothing. She does some hand gestures and he like tries to copy them, but that's about as far as we get. It seems to me that he has no way of understanding anything from her at all. Uh, except yeah, maybe no. that oh, you provided me food, quote unquote, which I don't know how he would have felt about crushing snail shells in his mouth, but hey. No. That was probably, it was probably thoroughly unpleasant. Probably, probably. Um, so, I'm just yeah. baffled by her non-reaction to that happening. Um, and, and so while that's happening, they're setting up the festival over in Arfoot Town, and um, they're like complaining because... They don't have enough people helping when there's like they have several shots of just random people sitting around in the just background. Standing there. Yeah. Um, they even make a joke out of how that one bitch is sitting there not doing anything. He's like, I'm helping by telling him to help. I was like, no, seriously though, could you help well, me? Like jokes aside. Yeah, which gets even more serious because of the fact that like there's an implication here that because Nori is so obsessed with, with hanging out with the hobo, that her not being at the village means that uh, there's an unfortunate accident that takes place that may not have had she been there, which is her dad sprains his ankle. Is that what they're trying to do? Well, I think, I think that's what I think that's why they're intercutting between her scene with him and the scene of him like hurting himself. I think that's the implication. Problem is, the whole village there are people who could have helped. Yeah, nobody's. Yes. Ha he's one what? man who's, who's who's piling up this log, and he gets he struggles with yeah. it for a good like ten seconds or so before it breaks his. his like nobody helps. That's the thing. Yeah. There's yeah, no sense. There's no helping? sense of community. There's no sense that they're here helping each other and they know each other. They're, it's just like a like a gaggle of pricks, you know. It's. I think I was saying to you when we were watching the episode. Like I feel like they should be like the Amish putting up a barn, and they're just like they really like they just it, yeah. mechanical efficiency. They're just so yeah. good at this because they do it and they're skilled and everybody is cooperating and organized, but. They're just a bunch of goofy losers who can't do anything, and no one wants to help their fellows. So, yeah, that that happens, and and there's just an implication that I think they want us to think that it could maybe have been tied to Hobo in some way, because um, he's, yeah, he's doing some weird gestures while it happens. But I'm pretty sure that's another red herring. And uh, yeah, 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 he's um, and so he starts yelling at 
Nori because she's not understanding him at all because he's saying mana over and over again. And then she just says, I'm a hot foot. That stops him from yelling, and I was like, does that mean anything to him? I don't just know. A for I don't know. I don't know. Um, I wish I had something to tell you, but I don't. <laughs> and yeah, so you, you may be like, so what do we gain from uh, from that in total then? And I am struggling. I'm like, uh, yeah. um, the Hobo Man is clearly... To... The Hobo Man has something he needs to do in this world. He's figuring it out. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nori was busy looking after him in the five minutes that she took out of her day from the village to the point where her dad got hurt. And Oh, and they say, um, will he be able to migrate? That's something they're all very worried about, and I thought that was pretty baffling too, because it's like, have you guys never moved someone who's lost a leg? Yeah, you, just, yeah, just you've never a card. Just put a fucking what, card for him. We saw that what earlier. About, what about people who are? What yeah. about people who are old? What about infants that you have to literally carry? You can't put someone. Yeah, the yeah, the guy is literally working on the wheel of a cart yeah. during this conversation. <laughs> put his ass on a cart and pull him. Like, like this shouldn't be. He could hobble on one foot. You could make a crutch for him. So I just, yeah, I was just like. You can make a crouch, you can make a cart, you can literally have people take turns carrying. I uh, I do not know what... like You can make a makeshift stretcher, like we saw in Prey. I don't, I don't know why... I don't know. Just don't. Also, this is another one of those sequences that you could... If the whole point of half of this, I guess, thing, con construct, is to show that someone gets hurt, and so you're having this social setting... This is a time that you could use to do multiple things. You don't just have to devote an entire section of a scene to him hurting his leg. You could really maybe pack in them talking about stuff and get some world building in that way or just something. I feel like these scenes only accomplish one thing at a time, if that. Yeah. Um, and and I, like I said, so for those who were paying attention, I recently said we were a third of the way through. Uh, we're about. I'm about to summarize that Galadriel bumps into a raft. We'll talk about that in one second. Oh, yeah. We're halfway oh, through now. Yeah. Like, yeah, I guess takes, uh, takes like five minutes. The so. screen time is gushing, and it's just nothing long, fucking happening. <laughs> how long has she been swimming across the ocean? Yeah, it's, so that's the reality. She is as, legit as trying to swim across Elrond, the ocean. And Selimbrimbor walked to Casa Doom is that long? She's just been stroken. And man, what are the odds? That you just bump into this raft. Yeah, so for anybody who doesn't here. know, anybody bumping into a raft in the middle of the ocean. Nah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nah. No. Absolutely not. <sighs> it's just yeah, Looking just microphone. Stop it. <sighs> How very fortunate for our protagonist. Incredibly, because it seems like she was about to die, like she was exhausted. Yeah, yeah, I think it's safe to assume she definitely would have died. Which means the point of it being so far away from the place she's trying to get, she would have known that jumping off that boat would mean death unless she stumbles across a raft, right? Oh, well, yeah. it's kind uh, of the problem is you, you've already made well. the choice, you, like getting on the boat and sailing over, you've made the choice, you know, like this is when you made the choice, not well, when you're about to go through to basically heaven. And yeah, I like, guess the, nah. boat, the boat's not going to stop and pick her up and it's not going to turn around and go back. So I guess everyone, including, so the warriors got the honor of going to uh, Valinor or whatever it's called and the Undying Lands. So all the assistants who take off the armor, I guess they did something too. So they are they they get to go back as well. They're not I taking them, they're so, not just right? dropping yeah. them off. They're not dropping them off and taking the boat back. They must have really done something amazing too to also get to go across. Um, Cuz if not, she would have just stayed on the boat and went back with them. We uh we we find that the the people on the raft are like, "Don't let her on. Do you want to share your rations?" Which I thought was amusing because she's she's climbing on as they're arguing that, but um, our main main man in front says to her, uh, something like the. If fate will decide something for you today, the tide. I, I'll read it out for you because I remember being like, "What?" Uh, but basically, as she's climbing up, he says this to her, and then she like decides, "All right, I'll chill in the water for a bit." Um, yeah. Yeah. Where is it? 
Also, yeah, the tides of fate are flowing. Yours may be heading in or out. What? <laughs> so I guess <laughs> the tides of... That means a, something good could happen or something bad could happen. Is that his way of saying they're going to decide whether or not we let you on? But at the same time, I would have just been like, bro, I'm coming on. <laughs> like, if I stay out here any longer, I'll fucking die. No. Um, yeah, they let her on. Unfortunately. They realize quickly. He's a fucking elf. Fucking oh my nice gosh, this is, this is... I really don't like elves. Yeah. I, I, I was gonna help you on, but now that I realize you're an elf, I'm really against you being here. Just push their off, right? Just push their, her off. <clears throat> and also, he talks about rations, but she just, like, tries to messily pour some water into her mouth while she's resting on the on her back. It's mm -hmm. really strange. Um, yeah, and so, uh, they, they, they ask if her ship was attacked by the worm. There's a monster out here that's attacking shit. And I was just like, oh, gosh, how unlucky, <laughs> like, on top of everything else. Well, <laughs> you know, hopefully... Right, like a minute after you got on the raft. Yeah, hopefully they just don't get attacked by it, right? Because that, that would be unfortunate. Um, but yeah, so they find out she's an elf, and they're like, oh my god, but before they can deal with that, they spot a ship. Another one, just in the... It's like, oh, great, that's... I don't remember at this point being like, what the fuck? This ocean is just like a paddling pool. Why is this pool. all happening? Why is um, this ocean so busy? <laughs> it is really busy, yeah. But this is, I think it was at this point I realized, like, oh, this isn't Lord of the Rings. No. <laughs> nope. So, uh, it's not a boat. It's a big spooky monster that looks like a oh boat. Oh my goodness gracious, it <laughs> Because it's got a <laughs> sail attached <laughs> to it by chat. It's like, what the fuck? Um, it's like, uh, so yeah, uh -huh. they're attacked. And I don't know how else to explain this. The results are everyone dies except for Guy and Galadriel. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Because the luckily yeah. the handsome one makes it. Yeah, the, the the creature just sort of decides it doesn't want to attack him on his portion of the boat. He de he detaches a portion of the raft from the big part and saves himself. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, by the way, some lady just pushes Galadriel off. I thought that was yeah, funny. Yeah, like get off. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. So, um, how lucky they were racist. <laughs> yeah, it just, uh, just, it just fucks them all up, but it doesn't fuck him up, and then he comes back and saves Galadriel. What a bizarre yeah. series of events. And the worm doesn't care about them anymore, as he already nope. said. Just like, I had enough boat bits to eat, and people, I'm leaving now. Goodbye. Is that, huh? Okay. Um, I guess it's, it, uh, you start to wonder, it's like, is this here because they just needed action to make sure people aren't falling asleep? I feel Maybe. like because that took like five, five or six minutes for everything to happen, but nothing really happened. Yeah, again, it's not there's not much to deal with here, except I guess we find out, and this is pointed out, so it doesn't really matter anyway in terms of us drawing it from the content. But uh, yeah. the guy ditched all of them to save himself, uh, but at yeah. the same time, you know, that it was it was I guess the only thing he could have really done has been like jump onto my small one, everybody. That's safer. That's what he. That's what. I, missing, yeah, I, I don't know. I. Sure, I mean, you know, if... That would have been slightly better, but um, I don't even know that she would have been able to see that. She she makes the claim that he abandoned them um, when he came to save her as well. You know what I mean? It's all very... Eh. Well, she did too. She swam away. Well, they were, were mean not, to her. Pushed off, they were mean to her. And then she swam away. <laughs> and then she swam away. <laughs> yeah. You still ditched us. It's like, yeah, but you were mean to me. It's like, yeah, but you still ditched us, didn't you? Didn't you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I guess they're not in any position to say this to her, what with being dead and all. Yeah. yeah, they're all gone now. And the, and the monster's gone too, so don't worry about it. Uh, what? Yeah. I, like, why? You know what I mean? Like, why is this scene? Why? I don't know. It's We got it's, it. It is it, ha it is because of the action man. I mean, they could have just... Absolutely. Really Maybe, because if... It, they, she could have just come across the, the guy on his own raft. He's yeah. like, yeah, I, there, was a sh there was a storm. Uh, I got, I've been floating out here. How crazy it is that we met. You exactly. wanna, but we're gonna yeah. have to set some rules. This is my half of the raft, and that half is yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the food is on my half of the raft, unfortunately. <laughs> Damn, Damn it. it. <laughs> Damn. So what did Galadriel know. like? So it must have. I now look. I don't claim to be an expert on like elf metabolisms or whatever, but elves got to drink water, right? You drink That's a little what bit. I was saying to Mahler when we were watching. My concern was. Like if you're gonna you're gonna die of thirst, Assu let's assume you have the stamina to just tread water and swim. You're going to die of thirst. 
Unless that is like, she can drink the water, you know? She can just drink the water. Hey, they gave her a couple of droplets water. of Lembus water. Hey, it's, yeah. it's like ten, ten times as effective as water. Over for as long as it takes for these guys to find land. Yes. Now, like from this point on, because there ain't no water left. Um, which takes us back to good old Durin versus Elrond breaking them stones. Uh, what a mm -hmm. what a what a convenient right to invoke. Yeah, Stone I guess breaking. so. Yeah, that like I could so no so you don't let me in. Well, actually, um, I can because I invoke this right, so I get to you get to you have to invite me oh, in okay. and break rocks, and there's a chance that I can just like stay or something. Oh, remember that if you lose, you're banished from, nah. from uh, dwarf lands. All of them. That's dwarf true. Lands. Elrond well, will I, never be able to come back. back. No. Yeah, not, not really, unless they decide otherwise. Like they just don't. Yeah, no. What does it mean to invoke a right to something if the consequences of that are just like you can wave them away? Yeah. Or if oh, yeah. it doesn't even matter if you lose, it's like you can't come back. It's like okay, I haven't been here like ever, so wow. it's fine, I guess. I yeah. Aren't we? Elrond is I got defeated. The seed once, so that's cool. Durin, Durin seems relieved too. Like it was maybe close, but um. The only thing about this, there was this fucking. There's so many weird things, but Durin says, you know, a dog may bark at the moon, but he cannot bring it down. What? Yeah, okay, <laughs> I guess. What? Like, what does that mean? Does the dog want to bring it down? Is that why he's barking at it? I, uh, is, Come is, down, moon. Is Elrond the dog, and he's barking at the. Uh, Durin? Is Durin the moon? Yeah, this it, uh, yet another line that while I was watching was just a little <laughs> bit confusing. Like, what are you trying to say, actually? Yeah. It's a fucking weird ass line, but okay. Uh, yeah, and then we get probably the most substance that we'll ever get uh, in this one. Yes. Literally yeah. the only yeah. scene that I like. Yeah. So, and, and, and it, it, it's a complicated like, all right? That's what I'll say. So. Yeah. Durin has been kind of a prick to Elrond this whole time, and we don't know why. And Elrond says, have I offended you in some way? And he says, if I was, you know, to explain that, we'd need a longer lift ride. And then it's like, oh, okay. And Elrond's like, you're squandering your chance here to talk about, like, the most, the biggest opportunity for dwarven kind in forever, ever. You don't even listen to the proposal. And then Durin's like, ah, there we go. So that's why you're here. You want something. And again, I was just like, I feel like we're missing a piece here. Mm -hmm. And Elrond says, I've journeyed here to see my friend who I've greatly missed. Bullshit. Um, so, so, so you're like, oh, okay, from our POV, without knowing much, you're like, okay, yeah, that's fair. Elrond's, you know, Elrond's just a class guy. He's come to see his friend, and he's got a business opportunity. This all seems great, and you're being a mean. And then the guy says, well, you missed my wedding. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay, that could have been something if you did that. That, that okay. Um, and mm -hmm. then he's like, "You missed the birth of uh, two of my children." And again, I am, oh. I am, I am reasonable. Okay, I could be like, "Well, maybe there was a reason he missed all three of those events," you know, in particular. And if if Elrond's been visiting anyway, he's just missed important events. It could be that he was busy with politics slash war slash whatever else. You know, it, stuff. who knows? Maybe this is just a misunderstanding. But we could still get some narrative juice out of that. It'd be fun. So you know. Yeah. What, what what else am I missing here? And, and Durin goes on. You can't barge into my mountain and demand I welcome you with open arms. Um, you can't claim to that which you have discarded. And of course, again, you might be like discarded. They're still friends. And even Elrond says discarded. What do you mean? He goes twenty years might be the blink of an eye to an elf. And you're like, wait a minute. And he's like, but I've lived an entire life in that time. And it's like, wait a minute. Elrond has been gone for 20 years? Yep. And, and the idea that you're like, it's a blink of an eye to an elf? Okay, unless you're going to actually start establishing that elves experience time in a different way to all other beings, which I don't believe to be true whatsoever, 20 yeah. years is not a short amount of time to any being that experiences time no. linearly. That's yeah, that's I never like this when they, when they bring it up. Like, oh, you have some sort of long-lived race, and they just say, oh... Uh, it's 20 years is a blink of an eye. It's like, no, it takes 20 years for 20 years to go by. Time does not pass by quickly for you. Like, a day is still 24 hours to you. You just get more of them. Well, so, right? So, this is if, if I was to like hyper steel man for Elrond, I um, have, have you, have you, um, are you aware of like, I remember seeing it, it was either a uh, like an illustration or something that, um, if you think about each successive year in your life, it, it comprises a shorter amount of your total life. So uh -huh. like if you're five years old, one year 
is like, that's another sixth, you know, that's like one sixth of your life. Whereas if you're 30, one year, it's like, well, that's, you that know, what That doesn't get you that? where you want to go. Still. What, no, so, so what, so the reason why I would bring that up is because at the end of the day, Elrond has lived long enough that he should understand that 20 years for him, like, however he perceives it, 20 years for somebody who doesn't live as long as you, that's a long time, my dude. Like, did you just forget about that? You know? Well, so yeah, there's there's no way this works well for Elrond's character is the problem. No, um, he doesn't. He doesn't care about this guy. He he doesn't because if he did, he would have yeah. he would have showed up. Yeah. Um. There's there's no way that like he would have if he cares about Durin and he's only showed up because he has a business proposition. It's like so you're just lying to yourself. You don't yeah, actually right. care like about him. There, there really is no getting around the fact that you haven't seen him for 20 years and the first time you show up is because you want to cut a deal. Like, there's no oh. getting around that. He is rightfully upset with you. Yeah. Yep. Especially considering it seems to be a very quick and easy journey here that you don't yes, even have to, like, doorstep. bring any... You yep. don't have to change your clothes or bring provisions. It's like, you just walk over. And it's a great place. I don't want to hang around here. It seems to be a really great place. I bet these people could yeah. throw some crazy ass parties, man. Hell yes, absolutely. And and that's the thing, right? If someone was to say like Elrond clearly does care, he's just time has gone away from him. It's like he didn't care about his kids or his marriage. He didn't care about his wedding, like that. You didn't even yeah. come back after the fact, like oh I missed it, but I showed up later. You know exactly, at least, yeah. You know, like I showed up yeah, late, but I did call. come and I was sorry and I brought gifts and things like that. Like no, you you never you, showed up. Friends have a desire to hang out. That's just a thing. And the same with the people you love. You just, yeah. you'll just you get a yearning, right? And it's just like a reality of, okay, so I clearly don't care about you. But Elrond is like, forgive me, my friend. This is like, I, it's two decades, man. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, and uh, we've said it before, it, it, even, even honestly, like a couple, a handful of years. But um, when you when you go 20 years of not speaking to a person, as, as Durin said, it's a fucking lifetime in a way. Like, it, you guys don't know each other anymore. You're not, yeah, you're different people. You like, well, I guess for Elrond, maybe not so much, but definitely. God, I want to address something from chat because someone says he was busy fighting a whole war. This was like 20 years. The war is already not the thing anymore. We, we're doing the hunting stuff. I was about to say, the, if the, it's the Morgoth war, that happened hundreds yeah, of years. Yeah, no, yeah no, no, that's, 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 that's over. From what we've been told after. in this. The whole thing Galadriel was going on a quest to essentially try yeah. and snuff out, find out if there were any left. Like the war itself was resolved. Yeah. This was cleaning up afterward. And yeah, let's like, say only... that was even true. Why wouldn't Elrond say that? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's, yeah, the, that's exactly. the big fuck up is that he should be saying, like, I've had literally no opportunity to see you, which is not true. Uh, we already no, know that Elrond had has had opportunities. He's been fucking writing yeah, prose in his little forest. He's been, yeah, exactly. he's been just doing political tisms this exactly. whole time. So he got he got. And look times. at that Dev with the, the answer. You could at least send a Dude, fucking letter. Fizzle. Exactly. Yeah. Don't defend Elrond's bullshit yeah. chat. Don't you do it. <laughs> this, do is it. A, this is a this is a so, we we stand for Durin in this chat. At least for this thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, right for this scene because this is alas, literally just this a scene. conflict is going to be squandered. This potentially Absolutely. interesting conflict is is going to be squandered completely. This scene has a cool elevator and the only character thing I like, and then it, then it's gone. So let me yeah, enjoy it while I can. Well, yeah, because like we we got the drama, but we've still got a plot that we need to move forward here. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, and, and and he's like, "All right, you can come and see my kids and, and my wife, but I'm still angry at you." And it's like. Yeah, okay. oh great, now we're doing comedy and, again. Well, that's the thing, I already felt like, oh, we, it sounded like I we were really taking it seriously for a moment and... there, but now we're not. Yeah, yeah. he goes yeah. from, I'm going to kick you out of town to, yeah, you can come into my home and talk to my family. Yeah. So Really annoying. All right. There's, there was something yeah. here, but they just pooped all over it. <sighs> so it they have to sit yeah. down, his wife's there, she's all, like... She she said she's a she's a a person who sings in the mine to determine whether where to dig or something. I remember being like, "What?" All yeah, right. I, I didn't even write this down. I did not care. I, I just wanted it to end. <laughs> I kind of I was I was hoping that dwarves would be as as a way to foil them to the elves. Dwarves have this practicality and utility to them 
where it's like, oh, we sing to the rocks. And it's not because, oh, the spirits, the mountain and the soul and it grows like a person. It's like, a, no, no, like, no, it's Maybe because the, the sound waves. Re- yeah, yeah, the sound waves resonate off of ores differently. And if you listen close enough, we have people who can hear the differences and like, like it's an actual like thing. It's like work. It's, it's, all, it's like a science almost. And that sets them apart from the elves who are a lot more into you know, artistry and feels and, you know, that, that sort of thing are more flowery. Um, but no, it's just like, they, she says a weird line, like a mountain's like a person constantly growing is, I, yeah. it's, I don't remember what is it. She just lies basically. Um, <laughs> and I, so, I forget the, the, what it what, was. Again? She says, uh, I, I'm scrolling to get the, um, to get it, but she says, a she says some weird shit about, while you're looking, uh, I was just different. gonna say, while you're looking for that, someone said, uh, Treebeard experiences time differently to him. Everyone else is rushing, saying good morning to him is like a conference to us, as if this helps with Elrond. Like, what does that have to do with Elrond? The Ents actually do operate as though they move slowly, everything is slow to them. Yeah. Elrond's just like a normal guy. Hmm. The Rags don't talk over the Sargon helmets, the ones that the kids are running around in, hitting each yeah. other with. <laughs> Sargon helmets, they're fans. Sargon helmets. Um, oh yeah, that was probably uh, worth mentioning as well. She hugs Elrond immediately, even though she's also not seen him for at least twenty. Well, yeah. uh, not at all. She would know, and she's like, "Oh, Durin didn't tell me you you come in," and he's like, "Durin didn't know," uh, uh, and I'm just surprised that she just doesn't seem to give a shit. This is, she's very much a fan of meeting Elrond, the friend who abandoned her husband. Like, okay, I feel like this and... whole. I just feel like this whole drama with them being friends or not really friends is kind of pointless. It's fake drama. It's it's it's, well, it, it, it's superficial it drama. It, it, it doesn't amount to, to anything. It didn't need to be pointless. Yeah, yeah, they put it in here. It's like, oh, that's interesting, and then they just drop it basically immediately. And it's like, oh, good. Because if, so why why bother? If the drama wasn't there, we could literally have skipped almost everything actually, because the conclusion of this yeah. whole scene is, I will present the proposition to my dad, which could have happened immediately. Exactly. But yeah, I think it was invented just to get in the way. That's all. She says, uh, she says, a mountain's like a person. It's a long and ever-changing story made of countless small parts. I'm like, that's not at all how I would describe a mountain ever to anyone. Yeah, well, I guess I, if you were describing a mountain chain. Like, but like, like, a co- like in a cosmic sense, like a timeline where a mountain rises up tectonic plates. And it's a really, I think it's just a bad analogy. They're not really very good, but well, uh, yeah, that's that's serious, on, so. <laughs> on brand for them at this point, yeah. Mountains Put it on like the helmet pile or something. Um, long and ever-changing story made of countless small parts. Yeah, and she explains like how resonating would work, but only in like a flowery way, not really in a as you were saying, like different frequencies imply different material. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just yeah. Yeah, they, when, yeah. When you think of dwarves, like, it's very practical. Mechan- yeah, they're mechanical. They, they, they're engineers. They, you know, they have cogs and gears, and they have these mechanisms. And they don't do this flowery horseshit like those those goddamn elves in the woods. We do work here, right? We're trying mm-hmm. to figure out how the world works, you know. But instead, it's like they. It's like oh, the, the, the telling you its story and where the story of the, 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 the mountain it's, it speaks back to you and it reflects your thing and it tells you where to mine and where to tunnel and and, and where to leave the mountain untouched. Apparently, wh- that's a weird line. And where to leave the mountain untouched? I guess the dwarves in Moria didn't sing right, or else the mountain would have been like, <laughs> dude, there's a fucking Balrog in here. Don't oh, go God. near. Don't touch that wall. Sing to the Balrog. But <laughs> there is Mithril. But do not come in here. Yeah. Um, so, they, th- there's this weird thing about a sapling as well, right? Like, Elrond gave him yeah. a sapling 20 years ago, and everyone thought Durin was a fool to think it could grow. Um, Even though it has uh, water, soil, and sunlight, and, and sunlight. they're in a city Dot, yeah. where they clearly are, like, growing and yeah, having was advanced of- agriculture yeah. underground. It's everyone really laughed bizarre. at him for thinking a tree would grow in dirt. The person who wrote this wanted to be like, you see, through thick and thin, Durin held on to that sapling, and through love, it managed to, you know, make it. When it's like, what are you talking about? That that doesn't make any sense in the context here. We plant. You've got plenty of like growth in the in in your minds. You can't show us 
a big old blast of light on your tree behind you and be like, wow, it managed to grow? You're like, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. That's, yeah, wow. who knew that that's what happened with plants when they're introduced to <laughs> soil and water and sunlight? Can you imagine that it got bigger? And she, she's and like, this, people call like him a fool is... because it wouldn't grow in such darkness that he's like, it, while they can see the light on the tree in the background, he says, ah, where there is love, it is never truly dark. Like, what are you talking about? What? Uh... This could have been a moment where Durin, like, is like, oh, yeah, this is the, the seed you gave me. It was here when you weren't. Or it stuck through with me in a way that you never did. Or it shows that he is willing to care for things long term so that he gets a payoff. And, like, I planted it so that one day my kids would see it. You know, it'd be big for them. Something. Like, I once again, they could have done something. But it's just, like, brought up as if, yeah, it, they didn't think it grow would grow, but it did. Uh, that's it. And so Elrond's that's like, all yeah, we got. I guess I'll fucking head out. And then Durin's like, all yeah. right, fine. It's just like, why, though? Why, why do you, like, trust Elrond now? Why are you giving him a chance? Like, oh, yeah. we didn't do anything. And, and again, I think that theory is correct. This was just a delay. That's all it was. It didn't actually mean yeah. anything. Delay? It, it's it's all of the cost of a delay, which is time, with none of the payoff, which is character and world building. Yep. And so this, this actually refers to... See, most of that was a waste of time. It could have been done easily. It doesn't tell us a lot because none of it's being adhered to after being established. Yet, I've been told by people, like, you just don't like world building. Like, I, I don't think like that's what this exists, is. And it's purposeful. Fuck yeah, I'm on board with world building. Wouldn't I be? I just like a character here on there. One that's coherent. You can agree with that. That'd be great. No, gross. Stop it. I oh. will say, I like the, I like the dwarven aesthetics of the tables and chairs and yeah. the little fire pots and things. I, I like the, the look of all the dwarf stuff. And that's just sort of where my praise ends. We got that, we got the neat elevator, and we got that one scene with Durin, and then it was over in the next scene, and that was it. It's just a wisp of smoke. Once you realize it, oh, it's, oh, it's gone. So we're back with Galadriel and Guy. Um, and for some reason, he says to her, but you were separated from your ship, huh? I'm pretty sure you were deserted. Like, oh. Why? I don't know. It's just, it's just like, oh, we'll just by the look of you. It's like, I guess we've got to get that conversation started up. So she gets awful defensive. He gets awful defensive. And uh, we figure out that he's very mad because where he's from was destroyed by a bunch of orcs. He's like, well, that's actually what I'm looking for, you know? It even fucking flashes the mark of Sauron on the fucking screen. Yeah. <laughs> like, in case you don't As remember, that's what she's interested time. in. It's like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then she's like, rather than rest in glory or sit in suffering, I pursue the cause of your pain, and I have been doing this for thousands of years, hundreds of years, or whatever. It's like, yeah, 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 you're great, you're great. Oh, yeah, um, definitely, you're great. And then he says, if you want to murder orcs, then whatever, it doesn't make you a hero. And I was like, huh. <laughs> kind of. I mean, it probably does a little bit, right? Uh, just anyone taking it down a peg is interesting to me. <laughs> um, yeah, and she's like, you will take me to the last known location of the orcs. It's just like, oh my god. <laughs> I'm not going to take uh, you there. As like I told Mahler, it's like, I will mark it on your map. Yeah. There. You can I just want to get off. This side quest King has ocean. been added. I just want to get off this fucking ocean and, I don't know, have food. You will take me there. It's like, shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's, that's what they're up to. Uh, yeah. and, and a random thunderstorm appears. Uh-oh. Oh, I can't wait to get back to these guys when that gets further that along. Yeah. they didn't see on this very open water before that. It doesn't matter. It's, they're busy uh, doing uh, stuff. Oh, okay. Well, either way, the next thing we got isn't, isn't them just yet. It's back to good old human village where Lady has gotten back to tell them there was, like, you know, yeah, that whole village got annihilated, by the way. And basically, they're like, nah, you'd need proof yeah, for that. Yeah. Was a sinkhole, probably. Yeah, it was probably first. something else. It's, it's, it's and, another it's thing like, where people are just bizarre. They're like aliens. It's like, oh, it's fine that the village is gone and everybody is not there anymore. It's like, what? 
God, do you hate your own kind as well? Do you just hate everything on top of not showering? You just, like, imagine what it's like. You have someone run in that you know well, and then she describes what happened. That everything's burnt and destroyed. It's like the whole town was pillaged. There's no bodies, no survivors. And he's like, eh. She says in totality, right, that all the people there are gone, that it's all destroyed. There are holes that look very much deliberately dug, and the holes are leading to our village. That's what she says in total. And then she says, we need to warn people. And he's like, no. I will not have this gossip. Yeah. Good God. How yeah, what the like, fuck is wrong you? with you? I yeah, can believe they just you don't back know what bathing uh, is. That's not enough to get those damn elves back. Take uh. a horse and go fucking check. Yeah. Okay? I like, oh my God. Why do you write them so stupid that they're just like, oh, I don't believe you, uh, whatever, there's, there's, there's tetchy ground over there. I don't even know what tetchy means, but apparently it's good enough for these guys. And yeah, yeah. they're just like, nah, lady, shut up. He's like, I've seen landslides less dangerous than a wayward tongue. What? I've seen... I guess he's saying that you're gonna cause a lot of damage by lying. Which is retarded, I know. I know what he's saying. Like, what he's is... like, without proof, this doesn't... That's what I keep repeating. It's like, as if you can't get proof. No. Go and check, dude. Uh, do you horse. not think it's weird? Do you think oh. she's lying to you? Apparently. She just came in here wanting to stir shit by saying that the next... The village next door got destroyed? Yeah, and he's and it's like, yeah, Same. well, just because there's a sinkhole that swallowed an entire village, I'm not calling the elves back. Like, what? <laughs> and then she doesn't even say, like, it wasn't a sinkhole. Like, clearly, the critters came up and dragged yeah. people away. All the buildings are burned down and pillaged. Yeah, you don't even need to get the fucking elves. Like, Just check. See if you can help your people. Like, what the fuck? The point of this scene to me was that they are so racist, it's just bled and some being incredibly <laughs> I'd stupid. I'd rather die yeah. than be helped by an elf. <laughs> Even if all of that village is dead, that means that we might invite some elves back, and we can't have that. It's like, seriously? Like, well, you know what? At yeah. least they died with no elves around. What, oh, what, could it be that we are so lucky ourselves? So anyway, uh, we cut over to, to her son, who is now so pissed off that the mice are scratching at the floorboards that he fucking destroys it. the floor? One of yeah, the most like, bizarre things that? ever. He just uh, he yeah. attacks the He's floorboards. Dead, you, want to make it, you want to make it easier for the mice to get into your house. Exactly. Like, that's not way to do it. Fucking idiot. And, like, it, it, it's all for a payoff. It's a spooky payoff. But, like, yeah. you did not yeah. earn your way there, show. Why would anyone do that? <laughs> I'm so angry. I just fucking destroyed the floor. But, uh, I actually forgot about uh, the. Uh, oh, I just thought it was so funny and distracting. That he mentioned those mice. I was like, oh, that was like a setup. I thought that was just a throwaway ah, thing because they wanted time. Off. Chekhov's mice. Ah, oh, damn it. There are mice doing a scratch. Oh my god. All right, so we're done with that. That's just, you know, things are about to go bad. Your yeah. mother will be very upset when she comes home and she's like, what, what the fuck is happening here? He's like, uh, mice. Yeah. Because <laughs> conveniently, Beavers. it's, it's in, in, in their house that they find that. So that's that's really convenient for her. Yeah, it is very convenient. She's the only up. person in the village who's probably able to kill it. Yeah. And so um, our our elf friend has now discovered uh, a nail, I think, in a wall. And again, I just want to remind you guys: seems like he's down here to find the culprit, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's getting closer, I guess. But then he spots in the distance a spooky hand. Mm. Doing some Ooh, spooky stuff. Spooky? Sufficiently Ooh. spooky. And then he looks behind him and he sees a shadow of something coming toward him. And so he decides to oh, start no. panically running in the other direction. And again, <laughs> I was just confused at this point. I was like, isn't, isn't that why you were here? Or is it? Did you not think this could happen? You know, like, I'm going to head down this series of tunnels I have no familiarity with to find the thing that destroyed a village. Oh no, I found something that doesn't look friendly. You see what I mean? I... Yeah. Also, I thought also, he was a fighter. I don't know why he just ran away immediately. Because this is what... Because this, this is the conversation we're sort of having in terms of... Like, when I was watching this, and he sees the creepy, like, thing crawling towards him, and I'm like, oh, well, yeah. This is what you wanted, right? Is yeah, it? It's <laughs> on the thing. 
But he seems like terrified. He's like, oh no, the worst yeah, thing like, possible oh, has happened. Let me, it's like, let me squeeze from this really tight place. It's like, okay. Yeah, uh, I, I, uh, I was confused. I thought that this is what he wanted, but apparently it was absolutely the worst fucking scenario. So now he's just, like running away and uh, he climbs up a little area. He's getting ready to attack and then he gets ambushed from behind and he's captured. And that's the last we see of him this episode. Yep. Mm, yep. All right. So, uh, rewatching the scene, hey. we have. I'm gonna. This is a picture of our elf, right? He's looking down the tunnel. He sees a shadow, mm -hmm. and then he sees that creepy ass arm coming in, right? Re legitimately quite spooky. And then it's really, it really is a testament to the acting talent we have on display here. This is his expression after he sees the hand coming his way, right? Okay, so you could tell that. I mean, as as pretty, pretty clear change in his Elves expression. Elves stoic rags. Okay. Oh, okay. You're right. I'm sorry. Um, mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, well. Well, all right. I, I, well, I was, I, you know. It reminds me of uh, this happened in Stranger Things season two. Hopper finds out there's a series of tunnels that have a whole bunch of uh, the upside down goo in them, and he just goes down and starts inspecting until he gets knocked out by the the goo gas and just like fucking goes unconscious. And it's just like, what? Couldn't you have told someone? Couldn't you have gone help? Why did you? Mm -mm. No. 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 Just, yeah, the no. thing that you'd expect most likely to happen happens, and then they're like surprised, and it's just like. So anyway, uh, the, the mum heads home, and she's like, what's my son doing, hiding, is, is, everything's destroyed, and it turns out the the orc would have come up, and the kid hid in like a little cupboardy thing, and he mm. survived that way, but now that she's here, she's alerted the orc back, and it's heading there, so she's like, ah, and she thinks I might run away, but no, I can't leave my son, so she hides in a cupboard instead. Uh, We're doing a horror movie now. Yeah, we get a little bit of a horror scene, he's walking around for a little bit, doing his thing, like, oh, blah, 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 blah. have a fight. A pretty weird no, fight, I guess. Uh, it's a very strange fight that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. He, like, like it's it's just it's just a shit weird fight where he somehow gets caught on things and he can't move and he's mm -hmm. just well yeah. Uh, what I'd like to highlight, I guess, out of all things, is he runs him through with this uh, tool, stabs him in the back. Right, see this here, stabs him in the back, and he's like, "Ouch, jeez." And then he turns around and see he jams himself on one of the slats in the, in the fucking staircase. Mm -hmm. You know how incredibly unlikely that would be. It's very, very, very unlikely. Just and then he's just like, "Oh, geez, oh god, oh man, I'm trapped." And, and he can't, like, he's held in because she stabbed him with that that deep. farming tool that deep, and it's so deep in him he can't just walk out of it. Which I don't believe. That thing's probably not sharp enough to actually stab someone anyway. Let alone so sharp that it goes in deep enough to to where they can't, you know, just leave. That's the horse shit. I don't believe you. You're lying. Then a noose goes around his neck. Or rather, just, the, I mean, I think I'm not yeah. sure if it's tied exactly like a noose. The kid fucking makeshifts a hanging in the middle of this fight. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like, wait, whoa. And funnily enough, when he pulls him like that, it actually gets him untrapped from the staircase. Uh, but obviously now he's hanging. Um, just And then the rope snaps. Of all the things that could happen, the rope snaps. <laughs> it's like, oh, for fuck's sake. What That's a good it? fight, Mahler. Shut up. Um, Yeah, so they're, they're doing a little back and forth. I think you just... He just chops his head off then. Yeah, because she fine, fight over, takes whatever. it to the others. Yeah. <sighs> she what does she do what does she have to what does she uh, decapitate him with? Is it just like a it's like I don't a know. saw kind of thingy? Because I, I just don't think there's any object sharp enough in your house to do that. No. So. It also takes a lot of force to do that even with a sharp object, so Then we get another bizarre scene. She Wonks the head of the orc down on a table and says, "So, if any of you are wondering, we're fucking we're going to the Elven Tower now. Go." <laughs> so they just made this huge speech about how they absolutely will not do anything like that because they hate the elves. Then she comes back with the head of something. 
Some and monster. And she's just like, this means we're all going to the elves for help, okay? Everyone, pack up and leave. If like, well, you killed it, that can't be that tough. <laughs> I don't even know what, to, what they would think about this. I just, they'd just be like, what the fuck is that? And then I was thinking to myself, time, imagine the yeah. orcs actually attacked all at once. Like they probably did for that other village. No, they yeah. just had, that's the scout. I see. Yeah. Yeah. He was really, yeah, that's what he was doing. He was just checking things out. Oh. Uh, whenever I see a scenario like this, I imagine, like, what if this was a little scene that took place in someone's, like, Dungeons and Dragons game, and you had your party, right? He's like, all right, the party needs to convince the villagers of something. What do they do? I'm like, oh, well, they would, like, do things. They would, they would make an attempt. An attempt would be made. And then I see what happens in this show, and I'm like, oh, this is just, like, you're not, you're all fools. None of this makes any sense whatsoever. And, uh, yeah, I just, uh, they don't, they, they think she's lying about the annihilation of an entire village. And yet they see this head and then they're like, all right, so everything you said is true now. And it's just like, wh wh why do you write it this way? Why couldn't you have sent someone out? She gets attacked by the orc and she comes in to, you know, explain what's happened there while the scout has come back to say, yeah, she's right, the whole village is gone. And I found evidence that there was, like, lots of foul play. It wasn't just, like, someone leaving or someone left something on fire. There's, there's clearly yeah. battles, fights, and tunnels from creatures that have built them. And then she's like, this is clearly one of the creatures. I killed one of them. Just stuff like that. Instead of just, you drop a head on a desk and go, right, we're all leaving. <laughs> and they're all like, okay. Okay. I'm weird. All of it's weird. It was enough yeah, for like me it. that the whole village was destroyed, but if you plant the head of a monster on my table, I don't know what I'm gonna think of that. I don't I don't know what to No. Like where did you dig the where where what is for, what is this creature? <laughs> what? Is this a, is this a prank? Are you pranking it? Is this a real thing? Huh. So that's that. Uh we we then go back to good old uh, Galadriel and Guy who are in the middle of like the ocean and it's a huge storm that's literally tearing the little oh, raft apart. Oh, this scene. Mm -hmm. And she's like, bind yourself to me while I bind myself to a part of the raft that will be, that'll, that'll do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Then she gets like struck by lightning and fucking drowns. Um. <laughs> so, like, we, we talk about this just, this scene just sort of happens and we'll probably say things somewhat matter of factly. But this, after we had watched it and I was just sort of thinking about what we've seen. This scene stuck out to me as like a what the fuck was that scene kind of memory. Mm -hmm. Like we watched that, right? Like that was just a thing that happened, right? <laughs> like I, it's because it's so bizarre. Yeah, I don't know how else to explain what's happening here other than saying she tried to tie herself to part of the mast, I guess, to try and stay safe, to got, not get knocked off the raft. Unfortunately for her, a fucking lightning strike hits that part and breaks it off so that now she is knocked out. She is tied to a piece of wood that is also tied to a weight that is dragging the whole thing down, and so she is just going all the way down into the ocean while being unconscious. Not a great combo, because when you're unconscious, oh gosh, you still dead. breathe. Um, which means that it's just water. No, when water. you're unconscious, you're paused. Yeah, you're paused. So she's she's kind of fucked. Um, and it's for a while, by the way. You know, we just... Oh yeah, it goes pretty deep. With how biology works, you're expecting that he'll save it, which he does. He uses her knife to cut the ropes, and he's like, okay. But you're going to have to get her some CPR pretty quick. Now let me show you guys what happens. Uh, see here. Uh, yeah, rise into the EC, gets the knife. If we copy right here. All right, here you go. It's showing them. He's, he's Obviously, he's going to be bringing an unconscious Galadriel to the surface, right? No, she's fine. There she is. Yeah. Oh, gasp. Oh, oh that was annoying. Um, and apparently the, 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 the raft is still around. So yeah, it hasn't enough. floated away. Yep. Even so, though there's like this huge thunderstorm. You... Oh, yeah, these are these are choppy, rapid fucking waters that are just going to fuck around with you as much as they want, just like the raft, if the raft is even still in one piece. Um, the point of this scene, when they were writing, was we need to establish that he will take a risk to save her. Um, so how do we write that? And then they made this disaster. Uh, do you wonder if the reason for the lightning strike from God is because they <laughs> couldn't dare show her fucking up, tying herself to the thing, or like slipping, actually? It literally takes a, th a like a lightning bolt from heaven to, to fuck her up, yeah. Like to, to fuck her up. So yeah, uh, 
amazing. Absolutely amazing. And and it was just to show that he'll he'll look after you know uh, if he can. He'll at least offer her some help. Of course, like like we said, she she regains consciousness and oxygen herself. She doesn't need his help on that front. Um, oh yeah, she, yeah, she's fine. So we come back to our Harfoot friendos and the uh, spaceman. He's I I don't, I don't even know what this this scene. We figure out, I guess, figure out, quote unquote. He wants to find a constellation. That that's what we learn in this scene. Yes, we learn it because their lanterns have many captured fireflies, and he. That's why they're so insanely bright, don't you know? He breaks one of them with his mind, and so then uh, <laughs> well, a bunch of fireflies true, come out, funny. and he manipulates them to get in the way of the consolation he's looking for. And then she's like, "I don't know which one that is, but I know how to find out," which is our setup for the next episode, I guess. It's so weird because he could have just pointed at the sky and then made dots on the ground. Like, and yeah. obviously, yeah. That's, yeah. that's obviously what you could have done. Even, like, no one would be able to misinterpret that. It just, it, it, it just wouldn't be possible. But instead, we had to have this long, drawn-out firefly thing, and then the fireflies die, and he whispers to the bugs, and they go up into where they need to go. Yeah, I think the the whole them dying thing is still just a bait for like, is this guy evil? evil? Only evil people. So the fat one cries over the dead firefly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> a firefly dies just to be, a firefly dies in her hand and she cries. I guess they were really close. I mean, you enslaved it a moment ago. I guess that was okay, but now that it's died, that's just a bridge too far, and it's, and and, and now we're emotionally distraught over the death of this firefly. Mm -hmm. Pussy. So, <laughs> we're almost at the end, because uh, it's just so. This is running empty calories. So the uh, king of 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 uh, the dwarves is like, hey, bro, uh, isn't it coincidental that Elrond comes to us now of all times? And we're like, huh? And then Durin is like, oh, I'd know if he was hiding something. And then he's like, would he know if you're hiding something? And then we find out that they've discovered something, which um, on my first go, I thought it was the Arkenstone because uh, uh, of the way it glows and what it is. But uh, from what I have gathered from others, we're supposed to understand this. So this is the first time they've discovered Mithril. Okay. That's oh, I didn't know got. it shined like that. I guess I they, didn't get any. Uh, I, I was I I was just like, oh, they found something and it's glowing. I think it was kind of shiny when Gandalf lit up his big old flames and. Uh, I think it's around. just reflecting the light from his bright ass, you know, mm. beacon. Because when mm. like when Frodo's wearing it and everything, it's not. It, it just looks like it's very light, very white metal. Maybe it's reflecting the fire in their room. That is some. Is it hot fire or is that no cold fire? Oh yeah, that's right. The dwarf <laughs> probably have some bullshit fire themselves. So you know what I hate about fire? How warm it is. Yeah, oh, it's annoying. Um, the little kid picks up his spooky Sauron sword, and leads on it, and it goes like. I don't know what the no, fuck it's, it's supposed to do with any of that. It soaks the blood. It soaks it. It, it sucks what? the blood. It does. It, it does that's, suck the blood. That's yeah. a slightly cool piece of imagery yeah. that is just doesn't like mean anything right now. But that's neat. Like the idea that you get cut and the blood doesn't drain down with gravity, but it like gets pulled towards the evil thing. That's a cool yeah. idea. Ooh. That's some. See, I said something nice. There you go. Oh, that's 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 cool. There you go. Oh, I I will say one thing though that isn't nice. The dwarf king's crown is shit. All right. <laughs> so I will post a picture in case. I just, we're just gonna. Um, she take doesn't a look at this. She, the last thing she saw of her elf boyfriend is he went into the tunnels to go and see what destroyed a village. Oh yeah, which, she's just leaving. Oh yeah, her. I mentioned he, that. Yeah. He bumped into an elf. Uh, sorry, a, a, a orc killed it herself. But she doesn't mention anything about him or even a search nope. party or anything. She doesn't give a fuck. Doesn't she, care. She doesn't They're seem just to care. about to leave. Yep. Why do we They're come leaving. across this so much in the stuff that we watch, where we get to know a character really thinly and quickly, and then we're like, wait, don't they? Didn't they care about the? Okay, I, I, I guess I care more about it. 
Munchita. Full sub reason. Uh, uh, and then, yeah, so they're off. They're, they're moving out of the, the, the town they're in, off to the elf tower or whatever. Meanwhile, Galadriel and Guy on their raft have now bumped into a ship. Oh, because how lucky. How else Again. can you write it? How else could you possibly write it? There you go. Uh, It'll be fine. And, um, and that's, I think, that's is that the PG. end? Please be the end. That's, yeah, that's, that's the end. That's so, PG. that was two Man. hours. That two was hours. two hours of content. Two hours. We covered two hours of content. Do you know how many movies are, that are great are two hours long or less? Many. What? Yeah. What? Many. What's the two hour mark in the Fellowship of the Ring? That was a good question. You know what? I'll find that out right on yeah. the now. I can't find... I don't know where my file is. Uh... <clears throat> Two hours exactly in Lord of the Rings gives you... They are... Uh, Gandalf is trying to open the entrance to Moria. Oh. Oh, but I found my file. Let's see. I, I guess you didn't listen at all to what I... <laughs> no, I, I'm just saying I, I, I found my... I was just glad that I found my thing. Gandalf was open in the entrance to Moria. Yay. And that's... Uh, that almost makes it sound like we haven't, you know, get a shit ton foundation for that. But uh for well for everything, it's just this this show, um maybe the next set of episodes will be so good that we'll realize a lot more was actually given to us in these two episodes than we realized. Yeah. This is all uh, just setups for all those juicy, juicy payoffs. Oh my. How exciting. I can't wait. Um so I mean you know, we didn't do it at the beginning. Oh, no. Why don't we do it now? What, uh, wait, oh, what are you saying? Oh, no, no. Tim, what's happening? Oh, no. Yeah, it is a shitty Why? crown. It's fine. It's fine. No. It's a nice thing to say. Mike Flanagan said he thought these two episodes were really good, which is like, that's that's sweet. He's digging it so that's, far. That's oh. fine that you think that. Just, mm, just, whatever. That's fine. fine. It's sweet. It's very nice of him to say. I uh, guess I'm just not sure what you would pull from these episodes see? that would give you like a really good impression. To be fair, yeah, like, what is it? Uh, to clarify, think, a lot of people thought this be... was great. A lot of people thought this is great. Yeah. But to be fair, a lot of people thought fucking anything is great. So like, you know, it doesn't tell I, us much. Yeah, but, but I guess I guess the thing is, is like, if somebody said it's middling, I'd be like, yeah, all right, yeah, I can see how you I see why. Yeah, that. I could totally um, think that the normie take is that it's fine to man as for uh as for like great i guess i'm just like i'm not sure what you'd be appealing to right now other yeah. than production what is great about it tell me what the great thing is tell me what yeah. the who who is the great character what is the i think great that's plot? i think that's really the root of it like who is the great character in the sh in the show because I got nothing for characters. I'm like, I don't care about anybody. I don't like anybody. Everyone's just a boring asshole. You know? Like, everyone's so, just... I, no I think maybe I'm... Because uh, I get the impression that I probably have, like... I think I have the most, like, apathetic response to this show out of all of us here. I'm, like, maybe. quite apathetic to this show. I'm probably I, don't know, I don't know what it is. Um, I, I, I like, don't... I, uh, I guess we're going to go down and they, I guess you oh, were yeah, we, we, we we going to give our impressions, yeah. you know, of what we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll go left to right. Well, let's go most apathetic to least. How about that? Oh, well, how oh, we know okay. and what we all say. Well, so, <laughs> hmm, yeah. Out of that's... a scale of one to ten of, for apathy, what are you, Fringy? Uh, I guess I'm trying to figure out what my scale is because I probably don't want to include things that I would never care about at all right like a like a film or a tv show that just doesn't appeal to me in any way whatsoever because of course this is on the scale um I, I think so in the lead up to this show coming out i wasn't paying much attention to it um or the discussion surrounding it i think from the outset i was very disinterested in the existence of the show um I mean, I'm pretty. I, this seems to be a pretty common opinion at this point, right? Why, 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 why do we need this? Why do we need to make a Lord of the Rings television show? We got it. We nailed it. You know, we did it. Good job. Like 20 years ago, they got it. We don't need to try again. Um, but obviously, I mean, it's pretty clear, right? This show has pissed a lot of people off. Um, it seems like a lot of the. Um, I guess the apprehension towards it is doing uh, owing to like differences from the source material and the lore and everything, which I'm not as familiar with. So there's definitely less of that uh, 
I guess, personal investment in that part. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I find it, um, I didn't care that much before it came out. And when I started watching it, it's like, man, oof. This is just like such a nothing burger. Um, though, I guess the thing is, is like having this conversation, it's like, yeah, the show's got tons of problems. Like, there's no getting around that. It's got problems. Um, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm super apathetic about it. Well, I guess not super, right? I hung out here long enough to talk about the show, but yeah. All right. Um, but that's the apathy meter. Okay, I mean, maybe we should just go left to right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I wasn't. Uh, I certainly didn't want a uh, Lord of the Rings TV show in our current landscape for things getting made, but I was happy to give it a chance as I do with lots of all of everything. And I often get fascinated, no matter what story I'm watching, if it's high budget and modern, I like to see what is everybody up to these days. What are the writing uh, strategies? What do they try to do? What do they fail at and stuff? And this has just been, for me, that's why it's engaging. I was actually expecting there to be much less for me to talk about when seeing these episodes, especially how with everybody in initially was describing them as incredibly boring or uh, worthless, empty and stuff, which I don't actually take away from the fact that it really does feel that way more so than anything, any probably TV show I've seen, there is so much nothing in this, um, but at the same time, there was a lot of mistakes here that I never expected to be made, so, stuff that's so easily avoidable, so many choices that are made, and so many action scenes, or even just standard dialogue scenes, they're just like, why did you have them say that? Why did you have them do that? What was the point of all that? didn't have to, you could have made it much more uh, streamlined, much more interesting, much more multi-layered. But the big thing that I noticed compared to even House of the Dragon, as someone I mentioned on Friday Night Tights, was the fact that there's no character for me to be invested in. The closest we've got is a couple that are, like, told to us what their basic traits may be. For example, some people are saying, like, Durin is one of the people that they're more interested in. I, I wish I could say the same in terms of, like, I don't even know what, what is his character. He seemed to be pretty furious at... Uh, Elrond, but simultaneously doesn't seem to give a shit. He's also seems like kind of a chilled guy. I, I don't know. Is that is that is that his character? Nori cares about people, and she won't follow the rules. All right, Galadriel. Holy fuck! Where do I even begin with Galadriel? Every single scene she's in, it's like she wants me to s despise her. I don't get why. Why did they write her that way? Of course, there are some theories and answers to these questions, but uh, who else we got? It's like Elf Man, who's pretty eh. There's just not much going on there. I don't know, he's he's guy. He's hoping to find out the mystery of the village getting destroyed, I guess. And so it's like, okay, so it's just, it's just, I'm just not waiting. There's no scene with any particular character where I'm like, ah, oh, sweet, we got more of them. Which, by the way, there's like three people in House of the Dragon already that I'm like that with. Um, mm -hmm. I guess you could say I don't have that with anybody in She-Hulk, but the thing is, She-Hulk's yeah. barely a TV show. This, I, I see as a TV show more so, just, it's just failing miserably to have like, a reason to exist, while She-Hulk is like a weird collection of Marvel's recent, uh, I don't know, goals with with an attempt to, to cobble together a thing from a series of messes from writers admitting they don't even know what to do. Th this is made by people who have some level of respect, actually, on the writing team. I've had people say, like, but it's written by blah blah blah, why wouldn't you know, why wouldn't it be good? And they packed so many dollars into this thing. It was like, so what did we have? And it's just like a pretty balked uh, will building, a plot line that is just, just, just wonky. Like, there's some stuff that follows. There are some scenes where you'll just be like, all right, yeah, yeah, that, that makes enough sense. But, um, <laughs> did Mola say Marvel isn't cinema? I wouldn't have it. Marvel is absolutely, all of this is cinema. This was shown in a cinema, okay? So it must oh be. Oh, my. Um, but, like, I already know when episode three rolls around, when I see Galadriel, I'll be like, here we go again. What do we got this time? When I see fucking the Harfoots, I'll just be like, I don't even know what we're in for. What, what is the, what are we doing? Uh, for, for two whole hours... I really do wonder what mainstream appeal it has, but I'm hearing from some people that there is. There, it does work. People are invested. People are enjoying it. And I was like, all righty. So, um, well, so this, um, this is recent news, but apparently it's it debuted to like 25 million viewers. So it's the biggest debut on Amazon Prime ever. Yeah. Which I would not be surprised. I, I, I told you, I've, seen, I I've seen plenty of people saying this show is a fucking masterpiece. And I was just like, whoa. Okay. Calm down. Uh, that's what I mean. I, I just like, I don't even know why. What is it you see? We highlighted about three things that we genuinely found to be strong in isolation, which is about the similar score to MOM, by the way. It's just that this doesn't have anywhere near as much incoherency. 
Um, yeah. No, in fact, like I, I said, no this, this show sails away with a couple of uh, scenes that are just so nothing happens in them that they are neutral. It's just like, there you go, that was that scene. Oh, MOM can't even do that, so, you know. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, obviously I'd rather wait until the season is over to give more of a general perspective on what this was, but right now it's just incredibly unimpressive, and I think it settles into bad, happily. I, I can't say that I've gone mm -hmm. through this level of dialogue and events with that many complaints to say, oh, it's okay, though. So yeah, that's probably that's probably how I feel about it overall so far. What about you, <laughs> Myrtle? I love it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I mean, what can I add? I mean, to begin with, it's like, oh, great, they're doing a lot of the Rings show with the, for themselves, based, but for themselves. They just do one, make one in this landscape, and then all the interviews that came out, and you're already like, oh, that doesn't that doesn't sound very good. Doesn't look very promising. And yeah, and it comes out, and it's like, oh, they're all just not talking to each other. It feels like they talk to me. It's like, oh, you did this and this. It's like, yeah, I know. You don't need to tell me that. It's like, oh, awesome. I don't, yeah, I don't give a shit about any of the characters so far. Uh, I don't know. if what we're doing next episode the i don't know what time is passing but i think we're led to believe everything is happening at the same time even though i don't believe it uh it's just another show that just has no idea how to do time stuff but I just do things it's like i don't know how much time has passed where are we where are the people how far away are they from each other and then they all tie together with the meteor at least at that scene uh, I, the pacing is horrible because nothing happens and when things are happening they just say the things it's like yeah that happened no, nothing else to add to this conversation move move along and then they, they jangled some good bits in there like the three things we pointed out and then they just poop all over it immediately because then you realize it's just a thing that didn't need to be in there because it just needed padding. Yeah, I, 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 I would call it bad for sure. We'll see what happens next, but goddamn. When you, when you, meant, because I, I, I spent a lot of time taking all these notes because I, I was meant to do a fortunate uh, before uh, this, this was a thing, but then I got busy because they released two of them at Three once. More. So, yeah, no problem. Uh, so I basically took like a whole, I don't know, afternoon taking all these notes. And it's like, oh, great. Now I'm busy for like one and a half days. And I guess that kind of threw a, a wrench in everyone's time, time plans because just, <laughs> if it wasn't supposed to happen. And then you'll, uh, you were like, this is going to be live, by the way. He's like, oh, okay. So, yeah, I, uh, yeah, just, just. Felt like a waste of time going through that as as notes because you go you, you put down the notes and it's like there's nothing to talk about like I've written this down I want to add something to it to talk about but that's all that happens there's nothing else to grab so yeah it's just uh it's baptisms not a not a fan so far we'll see what about you Rubes? all right well. I, before we started watching this show and in all of the months leading up to it, I was very concerned that this show would be of a kind that I would confuse it with the Lord of the Rings in the sense that I would link them together. Uh, but I have found that it is very, very easy for me to separate this and the Lord of the Rings movies from 20 years ago. So that's very, very fortunate. Um... I don't hate this. In a similar vein to Fringy, I'm sort of apathetic on it. There's nothing here that's insulting. There's nothing in here that just makes you angry. Uh, it's it's just just to kind of like... It, this is kind of like the standard sort of bad, it feels like, where it's not abysmal. It's not terrible, but it's bad. Um... And in two hours of content, and with all of their money, I don't care about any of the characters. I don't really care about the state of the world or what's happening. 
I don't really know about this place. It doesn't really feel real to me. Um, there's just not, I don't, I'm not rooting for anybody. I just kind of don't care at all about everyone. I, I have some pretty serious disdain for Galadriel. What a, what a miserable protagonist, but it just feels hollow and empty. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot going on. It's very inefficient in terms of its scenes and how things are shot. Characters generally suffer from incompetence and stupidity. Uh, I definitely would not recommend it, but it's certainly not nearly the worst thing that we've seen so far or seen lately, but it's just, it's not good. There's nothing I could point to and say, oh, that's really good. You should watch the show for that. There's some aesthetics here and there that I like. I like a song. I like one conversation. And that's it in two hours. I don't know what else to say. There we are. I will. Uh, so I, th I think I might have misunderstood the question because I think I barely talked about the show itself. I was just talking Talk about, about it. Yeah. My. Uh, <clears throat> so I. I find that <laughs> when we when we run through this show and and talk about it, um, something that I've I've noticed is uh, it's it's like there's so little. Um, there's so little, like, in this that it's it's kind of almost difficult to, like, to um, identify and constitute breaches of character or plot or world building because it's, like, so little of substance is present in the story. And yet, you know, those breaches still exist. Um, this is... I think the word that I would use to describe it is what I said before. I find this show to be vacuous. I don't know that yeah. there was a really passionate idea that spurred the creation of this show rather than we bought the rights to Lord of the Rings. We want to make a television show. We only have access to so much material. So, you know, make it happen. And so, like, you've got all of these resources funneled into this project that seems empty. I think empty. Yeah, empty empty like what what am i when i sit down to watch this show if the first two episodes are any indication of like how the whole the whole show is going to be what exactly am i going to be pulling from this show by way of interesting characters and conflicts or theme what am what am i going to be extracting from this show because based on what we've got here right now I don't know. I don't know what there is to latch onto. Like that's, in a way, even though I uh, I just look at this show and it's like, ah, you know, whatever. At the same time, it's it's almost like fascinating and perplexing to have a show that is in these episodes, right, two hours long, to achieve so little by way of developing characters or um or uh, advancing a plot or developing a theme. Of course, that could all change with the next six episodes, but I get the impression that it won't. And so, yeah, ultimately you're left with a show that is just, it's just, it's just bad. Like, it's regular bad. Um, but, but it's like, but at the same time, I don't really, it's, it's like a bad that slots into the middle in that I don't see the flip side of like how amazing anybody could consider this. I just don't know what you would latch onto with this show. Um, that's basically where I'm at with it. I, I find it very bland. Well, <laughs> that about does it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we all we all line up pretty. I, I think I had hypothesized we all lined up pretty close. I think I think we do. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to pull much from it. Mm. Very and maybe that'll change though, right? Like I, I guess I just maybe. don't see anything because all of the character how how easy is it to distinguish between you take the fellowship, you take that assortment of characters so well defined, so clearly defined in terms of their traits, what they believe in, what drives them, um, their temperament. Meanwhile, we look at the cohort that we have here, who over the course of this season will like almost certainly get more individual focus than a lot of the characters in the films. Right now, a lot of them feel very similar. 
I, you know, like, what, what is it that, um, meaningfully distinguishes a lot of these characters from one another? Especially feels that way with the elves, the elf characters, like, POV characters. Um, I just don't get much from them, um, in ter that distinguishes them from one another. A lot of their core motivations, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, Galadriel's a fighter with a PTSD-laden history that's got issues to solve. Sort of. Fine, you know, like she's pretty. Is she supposed like, to have PTSD? I don't know if that's what they're going for. Because I don't think it is what they're going for. She gets, she gets kind of fear flashes though, so maybe that's supposed to be like the PTSD. Fear flash, don't say that. I like the fear flashes of the the. the no, mark. don't say that. I get fear PTSD flash. when you say when you stop when you say P, <laughs> when you say fear flash. I get PTSD. You hear the word fear flash and you just hear like bullets whistling all around, explosions in the no, background. No, I, I hear a I hear a French woman. I hear this French nagging bitch talking to her baby. That is amnesia reboot. True. Some people won't believe it, but it's true. That's what it is. Yeah, that is what it is. Press X to all baby. right. Yeah. Um, all right. Obviously, uh, it's not over. Plenty more rings of power no. out, just like there is for She-Hulk, yeah. just like there How is. How many Batman. episodes? Well, if there plenty, apparently there's only eight, so we're a quarter of the way through. Oh, rings thank God! Oh, little. I think there's still plenty. <laughs> That's still six hours of further. Yeah, story. but it could have been oh. so much worse. Mm. Oh my mm. God! Well. Meanwhile, like She-Hulk had the opposite problem, where these episodes are so short and these conversations are so short that it's yeah. like you're jumping. The dialogue is forgetting to connect, like the scenes don't connect, or the dialogue just feels chopped up. Still managed to break a whole lot of shit with it, so. Oh, yeah, I mean, good job. Yeah, that show, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that show is riddled with problems, though. Yeah, show is bad. But we can talk about that another time, I suppose. Yes, we can. I'm sure we'll have plenty of things to talk about because so much will happen. Hmm. But now Ooh, we shall enter into the age of super chat reading, and we'll go for super as long, long as is possibly. So yeah, I'm gonna grab a drink real quick, and I'll be right back. I should get it stocked up. Uh, Gandalf bonked his head back in 2001. Just saying. Oof. <laughs> oh, don't. Can have any yeah. of the sillies happen. Look. Worthless. Lord of the Rings was never really that good. No. If we're being honest. Nah. It's such a weird defense of something. It was always kind of shit. <laughs> like. Yeah, don't you worry about it. It was mostly shit all the time. All right, everybody. You're like, oh, gee dokey. Uh, why would you? I mean, say that? there was. It was not like there was ever anything about it that was appealing to people. And the reason why it's endured in, uh, in culture. Mm. Uh, this one says, I thought it was all right. I, could, I guess I could like see I said, us all find it all right. Yeah. That's one that I can totally understand. Anything above that, though, I just don't get it. And even the like, ones that say it's all right, I'd be like, what did you enjoy? You know? Well, yeah, because that that's probably the, the, the follow-up question worth asking. Who did you like? Name five characters. Just name them for me. Face man. Except for Galadriel uh, and Elrond. 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 <laughs> Lord Longbong of Muslington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong Ooh. when there's less going on? It'd be a movie fap for the ages. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whoa, Wagsies. Riches for the good boy. Oh, he appreciates that. He's just muted for now while he fetches water. I'm not sure. Uh, and the chances of a Kong fap. Well, you know, they're up there. They're on the horizon yeah. of chances. Um, could be, could be, could be a th fun. You know fun what? What, thing, what yeah. is the difference between watching something like that and a stone, a boat? Uh, mm -hmm. Think about it. Uh, King Kong looks up. Yeah, he does he? Does. When he climbs the statue, not the statue, the Empire State Building. What's the difference between an objective subject and a subjective object? God. Seven. A subjective object is a funny combination of words isn't it that's something you see in your head and an objective subject is like the uh... well maybe it's if somebody says that's a butter knife no it's a blunt dagger see different mm -hmm. interpretations there you go i think that's it we nailed it also how was everyone's <sighs> day any drinking pretty good no i'm not it well drinking water pretty, but... pretty good 
Today has gone a okay so far. What do they mean? I mean, Good I basically told, told about my day at the beginning of the stream, so you got that answer way in advance. Yeah. Wow, that's service. Well, these came yeah. in early, so I guess, you know, they could have been around the same time. Mm. Maybe that was perfect. Fair enough. Linked up in time. Uh, when Galadriel said, ice to meet you, the <laughs> to the troll, I clapped. That was probably my favorite <laughs> part, actually. Yeah. Ice, ice to you. meet you. McBain! Oh, McGaladriel! Uh, since Ian McKellen... Yeah. You just don't have that like, character. You don't have a fun character in this. Oh. Who just has a, a, a charming, yeah. kind of fun... I guess we got a little bit of it with the dwarf. Durin is the closest we're getting, but even he, yeah. like, has annoyed me already. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah, again, it's just like, he's not that entertaining. Um, yeah, Ian McKellen, since he hit his head on a rafter in Fellowship, does that mean all of Lord of the Rings can't be serious now? Yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, that's what it means. Yep, it was always silly. It was always terrible, silly, bad, and awful. Yep. Silly and smelly. Isengard has been unleashed. Yeah, kind of. It's, you know, it's a different kind of evil. Uh -huh. Hello, all my knife ears. Oh my god. The Whoa. Slurs, the absolute wow. Slurs. Oh my god. All my K words. <laughs> Starting to think that EFAP is in fact not Nazis, and the story that you are Nazis is just a public nice story to trick us less intellectuals. Public nice story. I remember public <laughs> nice story. Uh. <laughs> And chat trying to gaslight us into thinking that he was speaking normally. How could you? Public dice story. When Rags Plushy. Hi, Rags Plushy. Um, quite soon, I'm thinking. Quite soon. Okay. Yeah, by the way, for those who don't know, it is again linked in chat, and foolishly, I don't know if I put it in the description yet, but it'll be in the Moolah one. Uh, the makeshift plushies for myself and Fringy are still available. There's 11 days remaining. Uh, I them or I will find you. Like 12 days, actually. But yeah, um, Mel's going to find you, so look out. Yeah. Got him right here, looking beautiful. Oh, I can take the copyright off. We're clear. Yeah, you got the Mubshly and the Fringy. Still available. 11 Speaking to 12 days for remaining. another 12 days. Grab them Very while they're hot. Looks great. Hell and yeah. look, hey, that's doing great. That's doing really well. <laughs> but Mootl, I'm poor. Oh, in on the house, uh, yeah. Yeah, they're both approaching 900. So Damn, people are very much still invested sick. in grabbing up them cuddly toys. Because why would they? wouldn't they? Should I bring some beers or something? You need something from the from the gas station? I don't know. Some some crisps. Um, hello, best friends. Fruit of the hour is the aki. Fuck is an aki? Aki. How do you spell it? A c k e e. Oh, I've never seen that. That is before. that is That's bizarre. Wild. I've never seen one of these before. Dude, they should put these in a fantasy show. No, they just CGI him. Oh, yes, interesting the, looking uh, lads. Uh, do you eat the the insides or the which outsides? Parts you eat? Yeah, do you eat the black seed thingies, or do you eat like the the flesh bits? Do you throw away, or is there a rind you throw away, or a like a yeah? I, I guess you eat them, yeah, like this in slices. A mysterious thing that we'll never know the answers to, because there's no information on it on the internet whatsoever. It's a shame. Does Rings of Power suck? Yes. So read Foundation of Courage by J M D Reed. Good fantasy with conflict and earning things. All right. No, I want, want things to be given. Wings quote of the day. The reason <laughs> I said Age of Consent should be 12 is because, you, you know what, I'm not even going to get into that mess. Just, <laughs> yeah, that's for, I can see him saying A that. wise man. That's wise. That's wise. Also loved hearing from Wolf again. Yeah, there's a couple of clips in, in the strange video. Yeah, that was nice. Moolah should play the Mortuary's assistant for Spook. I have I not heard that. of it. On Steam. I've seen pe big YouTubers were playing the shit out of it, but I haven't watched a single video. <laughs> well, <laughs> so there will be plenty of things on Halloween spooky related, don't you worry. So we're going to have another Oh no, another we fun have to play month. the thing. We do. Oh. We will. <laughs> Welcome to the next level. Happy EFAP 201. Got to get some sleep, so have a nice stream, and hopefully I can make it back before this episode is over. Hopefully you can. 
Are you just might. Cool. Just might. It has. We nearly up to five hours. Maybe they're back. Who knows? Who is a short boy? For your information, for anyone that doesn't know, Finrod died like an absolute chad in the books, killing a giant wolf with his bare hands in order to save Baron, the distant ancestor of Aragorn. Damn. Oh. Good for you, Finrod. Shaddingston. Um, obscure comic book villain of the day, Fisherman, an Aquaman bad guy whose gimmick is using fishing rods, fishing line, hooks, and lures. This is... This is called hooking your audience, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. I Let's mean, see here. they should make a movie about that guy. Fisherman. You would slot Fisherman. in perfectly to Aquaman 2 and all of its nonsense. Is that happening? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Is that ever going to come out? I don't know when it's coming out, but I'm sure it's happening. Yeah, I'll get you a, a picture of the Fisherman. Fisherman. I'm already picturing... What he's gonna look like, to be honest with you. But I'll be it'll be Liar. interesting to see There's if I'm surprised. For some reason I picture him wearing just like a bucket on his head. There there he is. No, that's not at all what I would have <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> yeah, that's not what I was thinking. His affiliation What's your superhero is with... name? Fisherman. Fisherman? Fisherman. Sorry, Fisherman. Occupation thief. He's also single, so ladies, if you're mm. looking for a fisherman, he's still available. Alrighty. I wonder when he's going to make his debut in the DC Extended Universe. <laughs> Aquaman got delayed by like a year, didn't it? It's meant to come out this oh December this year. Now it's December next year. Wow, that's a delay. Well, I think it got delayed to March and then it got delayed a further nine months, yeah. That is a big delay, actually. What? Why the delays? Like uh, I, Amber Heard stuff? I think, so I, I think the first one was, uh, the first one was every DC thing got delayed because of visual effects stuff, like, um, to give them more time to work on it. Uh, I think Shazam, yeah, because Shazam got moved up to Aquaman's spot, but it's the same, like, weekend that Avatar 2 comes out, and oh. so now that's been delayed to March, and so Aquaman has been pushed out of that slot, but I think Flash is still June next year, that's still happening. Hmm. Hi, like, Metal. The mollusk of the minute is the Chiton. Hello. I don't know what that means. The Mollus? <laughs> He's typing in that part. <laughs> Good looking guy. Wait, let me see. You wanna oh, I forgot. Was it mollusk of the what now? Minute? Oh, oh wow, that's interesting. That's a What's strange that? critter. Hmm. Very um, very colorful. Fucking weird jam. Whoop. Mm -hmm. Um, Lord Dem Rangs. Uh, uh this is that that is brings power for sure. Uh, when are you going to read Pixar's 22 Rules? That was on our potential list for, for the anniversary. It just didn't sort of really work out. But uh, we could make a whole episode yeah, We for only that. had 24 hours. So exactly. <laughs> well, we a little bit more. Wait. Oh, no. We, we actually did do... Oh, wait. No, it was longer than that, wasn't it? It was longer for us, but not for the streams, technically. <laughs> well, yeah. except you got all the Batwoman content. So, true. you know? True, true, true. That is true. Uh, classic Yu-Gi-Oh card of the day is Megasonic Eye. Wait to God, I'm going to have to mass Mega ban the of the day Sonic thing. Megasonic Eye. Let's see. It's going to look dumb, isn't it? Uh, why would you assume that? Oh, I have okay. I, no I clue you. why. <laughs> Just I, I, I got, I gotcha, I gotcha. There's the Megasonic yep, Eye. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Megasonic. <laughs> classic Yu-Gi-Oh cards have no cohesive art direction whatsoever they're just like fuck it whatever we have let's see made it, it's a machine made of mysterious metal that's that's not me that's just normal uh, the, this monster is a doomsday machine from the edge of the universe oh my Ooh. goodness he looks like a doomsday machine from the edge of the universe man with 1500 attack and 1800 defense that's not even that he's, strong pretty well, shit for a doomsday machine too. You gotta yeah. tribute a monster to get a 1500, 1800 normal monster. I don't know anything about Yu Gi Oh anymore, but that sounds that sounds shit. <laughs> I guess if it's classic Yu Gi Oh, that's not terrible. Well, all still right. pretty bad. 
Uh, yeah, Doomsday Machine is what I'm saying. Let's start preparing for Sam Hain with a playlist. First song, Dead Man's Party by Oingo Boingo. It's a dead man's party. Who could ask for more? Everybody's coming. Leave your body at the door. Don't run away. It's only me. What's what's Sam Hain? Who's yeah. Sam Hain? No, what's I'm Sam Hain? What? I have no clue. All right, sorry. Don't know what Sam Hain is. What in the Sam Hain? Maybe it's a band. Halloween? Your favorite yeah, holiday? I have never been told that Sam Hain is Halloween. Um, I'm afraid. Oh, it's to do with the oh, pagan side of things, I guess. There's a name, Sam Hain. Yeah, I, I haven't. I, I don't. I don't know about Sam Hain. I'm sorry, Jim. Wow, casual Halloween fan here. Oh, I'm just a fan of the modern versions, not the, oh, not the classic. Sorry. I just think like the modern adaptations are pretty cool. I don't know. Wait, didn't one just come out, or is is coming With out? Halloween. The last one, allegedly. Halloween film, yeah, it's coming out, and there was a quote where John Carpenter said the first one was the only one. Essentially, the first one was the only one he gave a shit about. The rest of them was for money. <laughs> oh no. I am paraphrasing, so I might have I might have uh like mistakenly conveyed that, but I think that was what he said. Something along those lines. I uh, heard a lot of movie. review that House of the Dragon episode three is one of the best episodes compared to Game of Thrones. Well, I'll be seeing that in literally twenty four hours ish from now, so hopefully it's good, yeah. That would be nice, honestly. I, I I really had fun with um, Shad and Nidrotic talking about the last episode because it was more for us to praise. If they keep up, they keep that up, that would be nice. Hey, Andor might be okay. Who knows? <laughs> I wanted know. to play crickets, but uh, I just don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's like my weird crickets. Good enough. <laughs> uh, that sounds you... more like a bird. Shut up, it's a weird cricket. It's, that's what they sound like in Germany. Yeah. Pretty weird here. You have your your what's your strange German onomatopoeia for the cricket? That's not a, that's a wombo word. You think onomatopoeia is a wombo word? It kind of sounds like one. It's <laughs> a real word. I know it is. God all damn, words are real. All wombo oh. words are real words. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm feeling piled on. You're all racist. I I'm just defended like you. They're on wow. your side. I'm the one getting piled on. Yeah, now I feel that you're a bad person, Mel. How do you feel about that? Wait, only now? You should have known I don't better. I know where the pile I is used to think right you now, were awful, but now bad. It's gone better. I mean, if you're looking for the helmet pile, that's in the other room where, like, the other the the the, the other pile is here. Yeah. Having some content creators watch it to provide criticism is far more value than denying giving Amazon another watch. Uh, like I said, I, just, I don't even see it being close to a competition on an individual level um that that i'm not even sure the answer to that like uh what's better to ignore it and just say i hate that they've done this or to watch it and provide criticism in the form of a review from a user i don't know at this point they fucking stopped you from being able to do it so it must be making a difference however i, I would guess it's always... i just wouldn't oh, want to push yeah. anybody to do any particular thing in terms of whether or not you'll pay to consume it. This is there's so many ethical questions that come into it, whether or not you believe that's something you should or shouldn't do. I am simply going to recommend or not recommend, and uh I will break it down as fairly as I can as I do everything. Or I'd like to think I do. Yes. What were you gonna say there, Fringy? Damn, I forgot. Well alrighty yes, then. Uh, remember guys, negative reviews don't affect Suicide Squad's box office, so why would studios waste money on that? Patrick Willems. Huh. Oh, and then didn't he say that when he wants to watch a film, he'll like skim the reviews? And yeah, he just contradicts himself. Completely. Uh, the problem is that, I, so, something that is annoying to me is that the reviews do matter, but often people focus on metrics that I consider to either be misleading or worthless like i find rotten tomatoes to be borderline like worthless as a metric yeah because what does it mean for something to get a lot of positive you know like a good again to understand the system now i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure this is how it works the way that it works is if your review is above a six out of ten 
um, then it's considered positive, fresh. Yeah. And if it's below six out of 10, it's considered rotten. So every single review for a thing could be a six out of 10. And apparently it's a hundred percent certified fresh. It's like a hundred percent certified that this is slightly above average. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's just not a valuable. Meanwhile, you can have something that's divisive that gets a split, like a 50 or a 40. It's just mm. not a good system. Metacritic is way better. And even Metacritic isn't that good. Like, just a number score. But a number score is way more useful than just, did they like or dislike it? It's like, well, yeah, but how much? You know? Mm. I mean, we should move away from number scores in general anyway, but number scores are better than Meta than Rotten Tomatoes. And before anyone says, like, wow, coming from someone who's given number scores, that occupies, like, 0.01% of our coverage, if that. I, yeah, I would certainly hope that the thing that you come to uh, the show for is not just the number... It, it, not the number at all, really. I hope that the most important part is the discussion about the show or the film or the mm -hmm. game rather than the number that's assigned to it at the end. That's like the least important part. Um, Amazon. Oh, good. A few content creators have watched our show and left a bad review. Now our billion dollar investment is totally worth it. Mwah -ha 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 -ha. Amazon go. Trust me, they, they don't want us reviewing it negatively. It's not their preference. Why would they cover up the... Why would they prevent people from giving review scores if, if um, they didn't care? If Amazon were told the Friday Night episode, Friday Night Tights episode annihilating Rings of Power can not happen in exchange for losing 20 views, what do you think they'd do? I think, I think they'd lose the 20 views. And that's my way of saying it accounts for all the people on that show having seen it. But I, I'm not saying what they've seen registers as a view necessarily, you know. I just, I'm, I'm not. I'm not even making that claim. I'm not making any claims. Uh, Rags, any thoughts on Biden's press conference? No. Amazon is Sauron, and you are four brave hobbits. We are brave. Yeah. We're gonna we make our way to Mordor. Part of all of us as little hobbits going on an adventure. Hopefully none of us die. Which one of us is Frodo, and who's Sam? Me. Which which one? Which one? <laughs> Sam. Yeah. Rags you is reckon? Sam. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm 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 I am Sam. I am. You're the true hero of the story. Yep, that's me. Y'all thought it was Mahler, but it turns out it was me all I'm, along. I'm happy to any of four of them. I love them all. Yeah, I do. That's the thing. They're all good. They're yeah. all great. Even the goofy one gets his, you know, it, it's kind of like a hero at heart. Like, they're all they're all good. And how much did we know about them after two hours of fellowship? <laughs> we knew so much about them. Mm -hmm. And those are just um, the four hobbits. I, uh, now, I, I was about to, this, man, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, if this thought is even worthwhile. I was about to, uh, have you heard of, um, uh, oh my god, I'm, I'm blank, Hemingway's, uh, Iceberg Theory. Have you heard of that? Maybe. I don't know. Describe it. I might have I heard. haven't. It's, essentially, Hemingway had the perspective that, um, when it comes to writing, uh, you should think of it like it's an iceberg, where, like, the, the top part is the part that you're writing, and the rest of it can be inferred based on that top part. So like the, the it would be it would be that the approach to writing is that you don't have to explain everything you don't have to like people can fill in the blanks like people can people can figure things out based on like what you've written I'm not sure if he meant it quite in this way but I imagine that he might have um, that uh, if you think about like writing a character um, there's a lot that is unsaid there's a lot that you don't explicitly communicate through dialogue or through prose. It will just come through. Um, that will just come through based on on the way that that character acts. You know, why do they choose to say certain things in a certain way? Their temperament. Why is you know, like you don't you don't need explicit answers to why somebody is a cheery person, um, or why somebody has a uh, is a little bit more pessimistic. Like that stuff can come through naturally, um, just when characters interact with each other, or depending on what circumstances you throw the characters. Um, into and I mean in, I, I guess you, you look at something like Lord of the Rings like those films the characters really come through very clearly um, in just what they say and how they act in a way that is not the case uh, in this show I don't I don't know what I can really make of anybody based on the things that they say or do 
in terms of their history. Agreed. About the stop watching bad stuff argument, isn't it better to just pirate stuff you feel is going to be bad, like Rings of Power, and if it's actually good, you can financially support it afterwards? Thoughts? Perhaps First off, is you probably won't do that. And <laughs> but, able to do. Um, I don't know. I don't. I, don't, uh, it's I tend to like it's to buy physical versions of my favorite media. Um, I pay it for seems nowadays a handful of streaming services, media. so you know, get access to a whole bunch of stuff. There's there's a lot of avenues. It's, it's, I think this is genuinely going to be down to the individual for what they believe is ethical slash deserved of the content itself and how they approach it. They may want to make a variable of being careful because they wouldn't want to be classified as someone who is supporting it. But I think it goes a lot more complicated than a simple view. Um, it's a good thing they have YouTubers online that they trust to watch it and tell them what they think about it to maybe help give them an informed decision on whether they would like to purchase the media. Yeah, I think have we done that before. If we break something down that's good, we'll, we'll open with saying, like, you should watch this first. Watch this. Don't don't look at us breaking mm -hmm. it down until you've seen it. Watch it. Like, we'll, yeah. That's what we'll yeah, because... Really. What we do here is not a review in, in what is often the traditional sense, where it's basically like a broad overview, what I, I liked it, recommend. Like, this is exhaustive. You're kind yeah. of coming for something different than a recommendation or not a recommendation when it comes to uh, this sort of coverage. The hope is that when something's really good, um, the discussion will help clarify those thoughts for us and for you and if something isn't good, um, it can become clearer why. So, like, if there's any sort of, uh, not necessarily confusion, but um, uncertainty, you know, like a lack of clarity, and then um, then it just sort of gets clarified because of the discussion. A bit, di yeah, different from, like, yeah, I'd recommend thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah. Uh, there's a follow-up saying, clearly the answer is pirating it. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not got any comments on that one way or another. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, looking at replies of guy that started the disc. They got in brackets Cthulhu. Admits he was trying to joke with about it. Had a later tweet regretting what he'd started. Started the brackets oh. Cthulhu. Started, looking at the replies of the guy that started the. Discussion, I assume, but it says in brackets Cthulhu. Admits he was no trying to joke about. with you about it, had a later tweet regretting what he'd started. I'm not sure what we're talking about. No clue no what this is referring idea. to. Is it no clue? Someone I've replied to on Twitter is what they're saying, maybe? Maybe, I don't know. It's possible. Because, yeah, I mean, you got to be clear on Twitter because you can't fucking tell without. I always recommend everyone use emojis. Oh, he's the guy who said that uh, I shouldn't be hate-watching something. Yeah, well, I mean, it's annoying, because I'm not hate-watching. I don't do that. I've always found it really yeah. odd, um, unless I'm misunderstanding the definition. Because the way I understand it is you are actively fucking furious at this content. You're just waiting for something to be angry at. That's not what I'm doing with Rings of Power. Not even close. I am watching each scene as it comes, and I'm taking it seriously, and I want to enjoy it. I want to get a good story. I'm not getting it so far. That's... Um, in the same vein for uh, House of the Dragon. And I've explained to everybody, I'm super biased against House of the Dragon. And I'm still like, oh, you know, this is good stuff here. I'm enjoying this, that, and the other. Um, but yeah, uh, that guy, maybe that guy was trying to make a funny about it. But holy shit, I've gotten um, a lot of crap for uh, breaking this down. I've even had people try to defend me by being like, it's his job, though. And I was like, there's way more fundamental reasons that I do things than just it's my job. But, uh, you know, fine. Well, no, you're doing it for money. Right, that's what a lot of people have been saying too, which is frustrating, but whatever. <laughs> like, the whole, anytime someone says my motivations are money, I'm just like, sure. I feel like that's just, um, you, you know, someone could just have a genuine interest in discussing something. Mm -hmm. Which I do. I seem Maybe to be... Maybe you do it for money, but like, <laughs> you know, sometimes people just want to talk about something. I think it's safe to, to say that I'm, I'm relatively invested in discussing Rings of Power. I wasn't expecting to be, but I kind of am. I'm fascinated that this many millions was shoved into something this uh, mediocre that. to bad. Yeah. Mm. It's nice so, to see some old school bad stuff, you know. Um, I agree with you. My copy of The Last of Us 2 has been circulating among my friends who wanted to check it out for years. They ain't buying their own copies. 
that's actually, yeah, there are plenty of ways you can circumvent money going to the people that you don't want it to go to, if so, if such a thing would be your goal, for whatever reason that may be. Do you guys remember online passes? Do you remember that? Online pass? That... Yeah, back in, we're talking 10 years ago at this point, like with Mass Effect 3 and stuff, EA would do a thing where with every new copy of like a game that they sold, there would be a unique ba like a online code? pass. Yeah, the, 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 the whole like way was, was there, live kind of stuff. I don't know it what you're was, talking about. It was, yeah. different that. It, was, um, it, was, it was basically a system of making it to where the new copy of the game was ultimately like better than the used copy of the game. And it had greater functionality mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you can only use it once. You couldn't disseminate that because the reality is that used games are bad for uh, for the games industry. Um, or, or, or well, wait, no, I don't want to say it like that. Used games are good for c consumers, but they're not good for publishers or developers. Um, and, and that, you know, whatever, especially when like companies like GameStop very actively push oh, yeah. for like selling used games. They want to sell used games because that's way better return on them. Like that's just a way better profit margin for them. Yeah, you go into you go into a GameStop and say, "Oh, instead of buying this new game for sixty dollars, buy this used copy for fifty five dollars, so yeah. that we get fifty five dollars, and the developer doesn't get you know." Well, the, the it's, it's not even like the developer gets nothing. It's just we get lots of money for that. Like it's a way better deal for us. Um, the the problem is that at the end of the day, I, I remember Total Biscuit made a video that was like quite interesting because he was making more of the case that like used games are um not good for the industry it was kind of it was controversial at the time because i think it was around the, the time of the xbox one reveal um i can't remember exactly his perspective on the xbox one reveal but i remember that his perspective on used games was definitely the uh unpopular perspective of the time i mean with 70 dollar games now like man oof those it's uh, games it's interesting pretty to see appealing. people say like, oh yeah, but I mean inflation. It's like you got to remember, like these games have way more um, User monetization base. models available to yeah. them. Yeah, don't give me that horse shit anymore. With every game, it just seems to have this microtransactions, and it's easier than ever to add DLCs and add-ons and knickknacks and doodads for you to buy. I just, I just don't believe that your $70 game, you're not going to also try and sell me more stuff. You're not giving me the full experience anymore for that, you know, that cost of entry. Well, yeah, it never ends, right? Not after the, the purchase of the game. That's the beginning. That's not even the most important part anymore to a lot of public. Again, yeah. EA makes billion dollars from uh, not... They make more money from FIFA Ultimate Team alone than selling games. Like yeah. all games they sell. It's insane. Uh, it's insane, but it probably shouldn't be surprising. What is the um, what is the profit um, margin on selling a game? If you sell it physically, it's it's fuck all. I think it's like for for every sixty dollar game, it's like twelve dollars. Digital is obviously a lot higher. Um, but and again, that's something in the discussion too with inflation. It's like way more digital copies of games get sold now than it used to be. Now it's like fifty fifty. Mm -hmm. um, like it's, it's, I think it's like a 50-50 split so you're just making way more money anyway yeah you so ain't paying on shipping you ain't paying on packaging yeah you used to in much greater uh, numbers than now but now it's like yeah the profit money these companies make more money now than they used to like at the end of the day Absolutely. so any That's argument that gets made and, the real and again when you think about the, the bonuses that like uh, the, the CEOs often take back, it's like, oh, yes, yeah, you got to raise the, pr the price because it's good for the developers. Sure. If you say <laughs> so. Like, if you say like, so. Uh, trickle down game economics. <laughs> trickle down game economics. Mm. <clears throat> oh, pardon me. I thought the 500 million was for five seasons, not one. <laughs> 500 million is for season one yeah, yeah. it's Jesus i think it's Christ. a i think it's um as i understand it it is a five season commitment production commitment and they paid 250 million dollars for the rights and i think the production budget for this season was 500 million dollars it is far and away the most expensive television show ever oh. made oh and that doesn't include marketing either the production budget i don't think so there's that uh, also, did you see Jeremy Johns had to drink scotch to get through the review? Laugh my ass off. 
Oh. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Uh, how many copies did Halo Infinite sell? I don't think we know. Um, I don't... Because Game Pass now as well, and mm -hmm. free to play, so it doesn't matter as much. How's that game um, doing after all the bad reviews? Also high rank. Oh, uh, well... We can talk about that a little bit. Halo Infinite's new update on uh, what's coming out. Fucking hell. What happened? What happened? Season 3 starts in March, which means that Season 2, which was already considered long for running for 6 months, is now running for what? 10? 10 months for one season. One season that only had two maps and like one new prominent game mode. Um, I'm pretty sure that the, I'm pretty sure co-op was meant to come out by this month, I think. It was meant to be part of this season, but now it's part of the, uh, the winter update. And, uh, and in exchange for campaign co-op, the split screen co-op, which was promised, has been cancelled. Yep. Um, but the worst part is, I don't quite understand the nature of, uh, of, of how it was achieved, but I've seen a video where somebody just managed to get co-op working split screen co-op in halo infinite like working for them so i i don't know why i don't know what the problem is i don't know why it's so hard um i don't know why you would promise it and especially when there was a quote from bonnie ross where they said that like all future games will have co-op because halo 5 got a negative reaction for the cut mm -hmm. this is worse because this is after the game has already been bought by people who had an expectation and a pretty reasonable one that it was going to come eventually, but this is the problem. This is the problem with the nature of unfinished games. Yeah, they can promise that things are coming, but they can always change their mind. What, can't play promises. What, what you, to, you know what? What are you to do with that? It's like, yeah, we we can't make it work. We don't feel like doing it anymore. Um, and you're making that promise yeah. in the environment of you know this game is going to come out and it's not going to be feature rich, and you're struggling, clearly struggling as it is to get this game out. And you're making promises about adding content, like man, yeah, you need like, to hedge your bets, man, man, a little bit, yeah. But but we got to look at. I, I I'll see if I can pull up the uh, the roadmap. But we got to think about where we're at. It is nearly a year, nearly a year since Halo Infinite came out. It's crazy. Um, yeah. When it released, it had a campaign that I think at this now I didn't finish it. I think I got about halfway, but from everything I've heard. And based on what was in that game, it seems like the campaign that they made is not a complete story, that it wasn't what they originally intended, that that perhaps even a Battle Royale-like arena was repurposed for the campaign. It is lacking by comparison to prior games in terms of differences in the environment or like progression of the narrative. Um, so we got that, and we got a multiplayer mode that had uh, very few maps, um, I think it had eight, something like that, eight. Um, now, admittedly, that's similar to what uh, what the other games had, but no Forge, no campaign co-op, no split screen or either. online, no Firefight. Yeah. Uh, and then think about the progressions. This is the part that's really frustrating about Halo Infinite. Live service game. What are the trade-offs of a live service game? Well, it's the monetization model. We need a battle pass. We need microtransactions. And we've reached the point where it is basically agreed upon that microtransactions will take the form of cosmetic items, skins, um, at this point, color permutations as well. Uh, not color permutations, color schemes. Yeah, armor permutations. Um, so you compare it to the games that came before, especially the likes of Halo Reach, which had an incredibly robust um, customization suite, which you didn't have to pay any extra money for. That that's yeah, it came that with the now, game, you know, and that's that's what we compare it back to. Like this was present in prior games, a progression system that was really fully featured and didn't cost me anything. Um, but that's gone. We've lost that now. We've lost it in exchange for free updates continuously free new content that's the trade-off that's the deal that um players have essentially accepted what have we gotten for that the progression system is balked but we haven't received anything uh for that except for what two maps and one new like one major new mode um in 10 months that's shit 
Well, it's fucking worthless. Of course people are angry about that. But you can like, buy got white. No yes, you can buy you can buy color schemes that you used to be able to just freely customize. That's wild. Like, They're like, no, you can't you don't even get like all your colors. You got to it, no, it doesn't help to... that I recall of them that, that like half of them were just straight up ugly as sin. Well, yeah, th there's a lot of, um, like, the combos that I would want don't exist. So, like, I've just got less options. I've got less options, and I have to... Gr Do you guys remember how fucked the, the XP system was when it came out? Do you guys remember that, like, you could play matches yeah. and gain no experience? Yeah. Okay. At launch. If you don't hit the challenges you need to, you just... You you do not progress. Like, think, yeah. think about that, that you had... Like th this is what's really annoying about um about this this uh this entire arrangement. You have you have to accept a system that is much worse in several different ways. You have less options with how you can customize your character when you're playing the game. You have to adopt playstyles that may be of no interest to you at all in order to progress through the battle pass system. That for a large portion of the stuff that you have to unlock, yeah. you have to pay for. Specific weapon you or a specific that. thing. Go out of your way to do this thing. That may not be very fun to you. And you or accept it, that. Oh, it might yeah. not be fun and it might not help your team either. So fuck your team. Exactly. I have to I have to get this these kills with this one weapon. So fuck the team if that helps them or not. You have to. You, you're incentivized to play selfishly in order to just like customize your character. And you accept all of these trade-offs in exchange for new free content going forward i think that's that's fair but then then it doesn't come the content hasn't been delivered because at this point now uh looking forward i think the two maps that are getting released as part of the winter update are forge maps and then you'll get your two fully curated new maps in march of 2023 while forge is still in beta and campaign co-op comes out in november at this point uh, and then you get your first new weapon uh, a year and a half after the game comes out. It's just not good enough. It just isn't. There's no getting around that. Um, and it is it's particularly frustrating poor. to see people go around and be like, it's not that big a deal. It's like, yeah, sure. In the grand scheme of the cosmos, you know what? Halo Infinite having pretty bad post-launch content, not that big of a deal. Yeah. But, but in the grand scheme of my fucking living room, it actually is a little bit important. It's just people... Like, people still care about this series after all this time, which I think... It had a big something. launch. It had a really successful launch. It got it a really lot of players did. on board. It did the hard part. Uh, and then it had, well, didn't have anything to keep them with. And to think, the year that... Battle, it released in the year of Battlefield 2042 and Call of Duty Vanguard. You had it. You were yeah, there. You, you got it. You were, you were fully set up for success. All you had to do was put shit in it. That's all they need. Well, yeah. and, and fix some aesthetics and the XP thing, and then like that. I mean, that alone is so much. Of well, a problem. that is, but also the desync. That's a big problem that still hasn't oh, yeah, been fixed. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. that's still a big problem. The desync uh, issue. But compared absolutely. to where Battlefield 2042 was, worst launch in that series, oh, undeniably. Yeah. I think Battlefield 3, for all of its problems, at least had like a core that was worthwhile. 2042 just seems to be a catastrophe. Um, and from what I understand, Call of Duty Vanguard's pretty shit. Yeah. Um, so this and was the their, people who play Call of Duty are saying that. Yeah, exactly. So like, it's probably horrendous. It's probably really bad if they don't even like it. <laughs> this was their time to to shine to, to yep. thrust stars Taylor lined up for them, the and they fucked it up. They blew it. Um, and at the end of the day. Because a lot's been said about the nature of how it's difficult to make games now compared to before. Like, it takes a lot longer. The game's more complex. The assets take longer to make. Um, th this is all true. At the end of the day, players are receptive to content. That That's it. That's th At yeah. the end of the day, like, it doesn't matter if you go around and tell everybody, well, Halo Infinite was harder to make than Halo 3. Like, we, it, it, it just takes long. We need more people, more time, more money. At the end of the day, Halo 3 had a certain amount of content, and this game has less than that. You know, yeah, that's at what it. point that's does it balance great. out with how big your team is and your publisher and the the more the more amount of people who are out there to buy your game now? And I mean, like, look, like Halo Three didn't even release on PC. No, it didn't. 
So that's like an entire system you have that, that if you opened up your game to, which it did quite well on originally. It's, it's, uh, I wonder at this point if like Microsoft, uh, um, it, like what, what is Microsoft's perspective at this point in terms of the value of their intellectual properties? Like where does Halo sit now compared to like Forza? Or Gears of War. Like, from what it's I understand, be... like, the last few Gears of War games are reasonably well received. I liked like, five. Games. Yeah. Where, where, I'll, it, buy, like, I'll where... buy the next one. Like, if based off of how much I enjoyed five, I'll buy the next Gears of War. Right, compared to how many people at this point are interested in... The problem is now, Halo, even, even, when, uh, even when Halo Infinite gets to a point where more stuff is coming out, um, is that not too little too late, you know? Like, um, if we, if we get to the end of June next year, which is the end of the third season, that'll have been more than one and a half years since the game came out. Um, and what will it have? It will have released four new maps. You can say six if we include the Forge ones, which sure, six new maps, one new weapon, no new game modes, uh, no new, no new, like, firefight or anything, if you get what I mean. And, um, in a year and a half, like, damn damn you compare that to what a lot of other games that are competing in the same like for all of the problems that call of duty has um to be fair i'm pretty out of the loop on call of duty i would imagine that they've released a lot more maps and modes and stuff in a year and a half than um Surely. than has been released by halo infinite now whether or not that's good i guess that's a whole conversation but um like that's who they're competing against though um as well as just other games and other genres yeah, uh, it's just not good enough. It just isn't. That's 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 all there is to it. Um, fucking shame. Sorry, I guess tangent over. All right. Bringy Mola said, "I can't find neat animals for you to look at anymore. I have no purpose in life now." I I don't think you said that right. You've just did limited you say that? Uh, did you one. what? Explain yourself. Don't have to because I didn't say it. Good. Yeah, I thought we were just limiting our uh, animals of the day or... Uh, yeah, it'd be know, nice if we could get maybe one, day. but even then, I don't really... Yeah, well, I'm an good animal the... of the day is cool. We like animal of the day, not zoo of the day. Not yeah. to mention the Pokemon, Fire Digimon. Uh, I'm getting a little... <laughs> yeah. Did we get the day of the day? Listen, we've passed over episode day 200 now. <laughs> I feel like it's a new... It just You know, we, we don't... It, of the, of the day, you know, it's become an old format. It's become a tired and antiquated format. If you want to get out there Hello's and find some new ones. do not necessarily reflect the rest of the EFAP cast. They never have. Because I'm often right where you're worth, wrong, Rex. Just worth stating. Worth stating. I wouldn't want your voices attached to mine. Ugh. We even sound like the Anakin Darth Vader from the Kenobi show. I or it's like us wheezing together. And... Was the Emperor. Remember they don't talk about the Emperor at all as to who's at fault? <laughs> Just Yeah, they really don't. He was watching all that unfold. He was like, don't bring me up, don't bring me up, don't bring me up. Yes, don't bring me up. Oh, fuck yeah. He didn't bring me up at all. That's great. And then he kind of eventually was like, how come you didn't bring me up? <laughs> a little, <laughs> a little, a little bit left out. Yeah, yeah, a little bit left out. I kind of did a lot for you, man. Um, I have not watched this show, yet I have, and then they've got a little black flag. Who knows what that could signify? I have no clue. Assassin's Creed fan? I don't know. Hmm. Don't underestimate people's stupidity. I often do. stupid. I often do, and then I regret it, and yet, somehow, I often do. We're the Super Chats for 189 ever read. Uh, they are the offline one that we premiered. I will... We'll need to go grab them. I will... And I'll pop them into our next catch-up, of which will likely be... Oh, God. The the catch-up thing right now is a little complicated in terms of getting everything in a streamlined way because of the, the one stream we did where it broke, like, halfway through. Mm -hmm. I will explain it all once we get it all in a in a understandable order, don't you? I swear, if Jay watches Ring of Power before Jackson Trilogy, you all need to launch him to the moon. I don't think I don't think Jay's going to watch Ring that of Power. Will be, that will be just... Unacceptable. We'll be fine. Holy oh. Don Almighty, play Outer Wilds. 
And Soma yeah. plays Springy already. So, sorry, Springy plays Soma already. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll get around to it. Bribing yourselves with some of your favorite media ever. Shake my head. Better than Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh, yeah. In Epsilon Station, Soma play you. Oh. <laughs> You believe it's fair to pirate media you don't want to support, assuming it was legal. Curious on your views on piracy, if you're willing. That would legit piracy if require it's legal. What do you mean? a whole uh, episode. Not necessarily is my answer. It is incredibly complex to go through all the layers of how to consume yeah. ethically versus supporting versus like your desire, uh, your entitlement to entertainment. Um, what entertainment should be? What is the promise of entertainment when it's provided to you? What are you paying for? When should you get refunds? There's, there's, there's so many subjects. Uh, it would genuinely be its own EFAP episode. Legal piracy. Yeah. A funny way to look at it. Um, do you believe it's fair? Oh wait, I read that one. The trees were in the first age, which didn't end until Morgoth's defeat by the Valar in the War of Wrath. Elves live in Middle Earth when it's flat, so it's obvious that the elves are flat Middle Earthers, so they don't understand easy concepts like buoyancy. Of course. Well, man, there are many flat Earthers who think that buoyancy and density are the reasons why things fall. They don't. A lot of flat Earthers don't believe in gravity. Well, they attribute the. Of course, why would you? Yeah. If you, yeah, that. I mean, honestly, if you think the world is flat. You're just like, why wouldn't you believe just any horse shit? Yeah. Fuck it. People think of it as it must be an all or nothing consumer boycott, but critics should also watch it to help crush it while consumers boycott. While the consumers boycott. Because that died. If you're genuinely thinking what will help the show more for us to not watch it and not talk about it, or for us to talk about it and explain how bad it is, I, I feel like it's obvious ideas i guess bill boat bragin stone boat emporium okay sounds like a that sounds like a place to visit and get some souvenirs i've always liked that word emporium like when you when you say when you say that word emporium your mind instantly just thinks of some kind of like what what is this place of wonders with knickknacks and doodads and trinkets of of all kinds of fun gizmos galore like who knows what could be inside an emporium it, it's just it just you 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 your cup runneth over with concepts and ideas and I, I love it it's just brimming with uh brimming with ideas i love emporiums and that's a place of wonderment and joy i wish this series had never happened so do all who live to see such cringe but that is not for them to decide all we have to decide is how to meme the cringe that is forced upon. Boom, but rings a uh, I'm convinced the don't watch or support is pushed by Amazon. It would be beneficial to them, I believe. So it's just an interesting thing that's happened there. Um, I think it's him just trying to explain that life isn't fair and that others will try and drag you down, but you need to be better than them, but in the worst way possible. Oh, I thought he was just saying this, what Fring was talking about, where it's like, he I, almost yeah, implies I, it's hard to see the route forward when everything is so similar, everything's so bright, or whatever. Well, so, I think that what that scene is meant to convey is that when things are too good, or when things seem like they're too good, they can obscure potential dangers or threats, that you essentially become complacent with your situation. And that the whole point is Galadriel is not willing to accept that. I believe That's that that is the correct... I, I don't think that it's conveyed well at all, to be clear. But I think that that's exactly what they're trying to get across. We would represent that is a pretty um, interesting right. interpretation. I'm uh, Now tell us what relevance this has to uh, a bullies through a rock at your paper boat. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. That's, well, so that's what I'm getting at when I say the sloppiness of it all. I think yeah. that it's poorly conveyed. I don't think it has anything to do with the scene that they show. But I... Let's put it this way. When I say that I think that's the correct observation about that, I'm not pulling it from a... Uh, from, uh, this is not like a meaningful discussion about themes and pulling no, no. Uh, meaning from a diet, from a scene. Like, this is just me thinking, what are the writers trying to communicate here? What is their goal right now? Like, what is it that they're seeking to achieve here? 
I think it, um, it matches her first episode journey, which is, I'm pretty sure there's a darkness over there, and everyone's like, no, everything's chill. Everything's great. Everything yeah, is so great. going to light. She's like, no, I gotta go back, you know? I gotta, I gotta go back. I've got unfinished business. But, uh, yeah, as was said, very poorly communicated, I think. Uh, hey, guys. Oh, absolutely. At the 150s, as far as my EFAP catch-up, and loving it. Have any of you ha ever played Ultra Kill on Steam? An old school shooter yes. with a, a lot of style where you heal with the blood of your enemies. Cheers. Yeah, Ultra Kill is uh, it's super cool. It's it's part of what seems to be a new genre of, um, I guess, nostalgic indie games in that it's pulling from the style of like the 90s in terms of 3D games, you know, like kind of the 16-bit, uh, not 16-bit, 32-bit like style. It's uh, It's cool. That game it's is like cool. Yes, one style games. Just well, sort of... this this is uh more like in the vein of um like I guess it'd be like Quake. You'd be people saying boomer I mean, shooter. That's, like that's yeah. a style that's coming into its own now and is becoming prevalent in the same way that PS One style is also sort of becoming a thing with indie games. Yeah, whereas I think um, it's just I don't know if it's necessarily like people are doing it to do it or if that is a sort of style we call it style but because that once they were just limitations but i think now it's a style it's, in the same way that pixel art is a style yeah it, it, it is, has become it is. feasible for small groups of people or singular people to make games of that level so they they lean into it being a style yeah, and then it eventually becomes a style that you actively pursue in the same way that a lot of pixel art is. Like, a lot of pixel art yeah. you see now is beyond what would have been achievable on those consoles, but, like, it feels... It's evocative of that, yeah. of that style. It's like the memory of it. The memory of it's romanticized and better than it probably well, yeah, really like, was, especially well, if you play those games as children, so your you attempt to recreate like, them will do better. You look at something like Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight wouldn't run on an... I, well, I could, now, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Shovel Knight wouldn't... Like, it It, it feels like an NES game, but it, it doesn't... It looks better than NES games. Um, but that would be only if you ever, like, put them side by side. Like, at the end of the day, it feels like a game from that uh, from that time, which is more important than whether it actually, like, fits so within the confines of... Uh, happens at the end of the of day. That What's up? So much stuff happens at the end of the day. What do you mean? Every time you do any kind of assessment, at the end of the day, <laughs> here oh, sorry. Again. Yeah, Fringy, Fringy backloads his days. Yeah, where he doesn't do mm. much in the morning when he wakes up. His afternoons, some a few things happen. Yeah, and right as he's starting to get tired before he goes to bed, he just cran. It's it is crunch time. We have we have no. shit to do before when bed. You and you guys bully me on these these phrases. I'm not bullying they, you. I was complimenting. I was complimenting. Not throwing you. rocks at your at your boat, right? We're, there's nothing in there that's bullying. Wait, do you know the difference between a rock and a boat when it comes to floating? Yeah. Why I is it imagine that one floating. of them is much denser than water, which probably explains why it doesn't float. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Wait, no. Boats are more dense than water too, right? It's because of the displacement of the... Yeah, it displaces uh, an amount of water... Meant. That weighs more than itself, I think, is what's terms rocks are more dense boats. than wood. <laughs> because of that. Yeah. Well, it's it's that fun fact, right? Saturn, if there was an ocean big enough to contain it, Saturn would float on a uh, on uh, the ocean because Saturn is less dense than water. Ain't that are you, sorry, are you saying Saturn or Saturn? Saturn, the planet. Okay, I was just making sure. Yeah. I, thought, I, thought I don't that know about like... Saturn, the god. He, uh, he probably wouldn't float on it. What was Saturn the god of? Saturn? Yeah. Saturn is... Because um... Jupiter was the Zeus equivalent. Mercury. Yeah. Mars is the Aries equivalent. Uh, I think Merc Mercury is like the... Uh, it's uh, fast one. What's the delivery type? Hermes. Hermes? Yeah. Described as... Um... Okay, his Greek equivalent was Cronus. Uh, oh, no. So oh, Saturn right. was... Uh, uh, he's a care. He's described as a god of time, generation, dissolution, and abundance. Ah, so I guess he technically it, wasn't a god so much as a titan. I think he was a titan. That's what right. Cronus was a titan. Well, Cronus was a titan, but I don't know how it works in Roman stuff. I he was Zeus's like father. Roman. He was the father of the Cronus. three brothers. So Cronus is. Uh, so he would be. So Jupiter, Neptune, so Jupiter and Pluto. Saturn's 
Hmm. Right. In the I Roman. See. Yeah. Okay. And what was Uranus? What was he? What was he? The, the uh, he was the, the god, god of. of prostate health. Mm. <laughs> I saw Very that tiny little from, from metal. <laughs> uh, he was uh, the Roman god. Uranus is associated with the Roman god Calus. Uh, so his so Uranus is Greek. Uh, his Roman equivalent is Calus. So. The god is Uranus, uh, the primordial god of the sky. Greeks yes, imagine the sky as a solid dome too. of grass decorated with stars whose edges descended to rest upon the outermost limits of the flat earth. Mm. Of course, that's a mythology because the Greeks knew. Uh, that. real. That's, that's fair. Okay. Of course, uh, the wisdom of the ancients, of course. That's right. They got it all right. All those ancient cultures. They're, they, I they, wonder why... They, um... I wonder why so many of the planets were named after Roman gods instead of Greek gods. Um, probably because of the just cultural prominence of the Roman Empire in Western in the Western world. Um, right. That actually, I well, so the thing is, is I know that Uranus, Neptune were discovered later, but I'm pretty sure that um, I'm pretty sure that a lot of the other uh, planets were known about for a long time. Um, uh, Mercury was named for the messenger god because it appears to move so swiftly across the sky. It is the closest planet to the sun. Uh, it, uh, Jupiter shares it, a title with the king of the gods because it's the solar system's giant. So, yeah, I, the thing is, I'm pretty sure I learned about all of these things because um, I just can't remember now. Because I remember, I think Uranus was discovered in. Or am I mixing? Because Pluto was discovered in the 20th century, I think. Um, and that Something like Uranus that, yeah. Around the, I think it was the 18th, the 18th, 19th century. I think whereas... it was discovered pretty close back to back. Uh, dates, planets were discovered. Well, and I discovered. think that, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I've got a timeline here. It looks like we've got, da, 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 da. Sun, Earth. When was Earth discovered? Hmm. I wonder. Hmm. Uh, let's see. The 90s, I think. Uh, I'm looking for... Uranus was discovered 1781. Yeah, we have Neptune right. in 1846. Oh I my god. Scroll. PSA yeah. Sitch has released a video. What? Pluto was 1930. Yeah, that's right. And I think it was either I forget if it was Pluto or Uranus that was discovered because we we observe the uh, the orbital patterns of the other planets and we calculated that there was another gravity, you know, some sort of something else yeah, generating a gravitational pull really and then we found it. Well, because um, I, I that does sound about right. Um. I'm pretty sure Neptune has a, a an abnormal uh, orbital because um, all the planets orbit around the sun a little bit differently, different planes and whatnot. Isn't um one of them has like an elliptical orbit though, doesn't it? I think they all do. Where it's, I'm I might be thinking of the wrong word. Where like at different it it orbits a noticeably closer to the sun at some point in time, and then noticeably further away. Um, well, elliptical orbits, I think, are like an oval. They're not a perfect circular orbit. Now, yeah. I think all of the planets. I think all the planets have elliptical orbits. Uh, I think it's. I think it's. Um, no, Pluto is the one that I think has a. Because uh, they all orbit at a slightly different. No, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, damn, I did learn about this stuff, but now it's all <clears throat> flooding back. Much like how almost all of the moons are title locked as well. It's odd for them not to be. Oh, uh, well, so I, I know that um, a lot of the uh, the red... Um, I can't... Red dwarfs, that's what they're called. Um, like Durin? Of, uh, <laughs> hey, look, all right, I'm talking about stars. Oh, gotcha. But, um, a lot of the planets which orbit those stars, because they're so small... Um, and because a lot of the planets orbit so close, or, or, or no, fuck, I'm, I'm mixing up. It's that any of the planets that are in the orbital, uh, the Goldilocks zones of those types of stars, 
uh, typically tidally locked because they need to be close enough to the... Um, in order for them to be in the Goldilocks zones of those stars, they are orbiting quite close to those uh, to those stars. And so their orbits end up getting locked. Uh, it says all 19 known moons in the solar system that are large enough to be round are tidally locked with their primaries. Well, yeah, because the... Do you say moons? Yeah, all 19 known moons in the solar system. There are more than 19 known moons. Are you talking about like the ones that are... That are there 19 are known moons 19... that are... It says that all 19 known moons in the solar system that are large enough to be round. Oh, sure. Right. Like we're talking about Ganymede yeah. and, um, and uh, yeah. Titan and, and of course our little moon. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the moons have really cool names as well. Io, well, maybe that one isn't that cool. Io, Io's fine. Io, Titan. Io's all right. Io's fine. I like. I, I, I think I, I appreciate its shortness. Yeah. What's Io, because the uh, there's Callisto as well, which is cool. Um, what's the one that looks like the Death Star? Oh, you're oh, that's no really moon. Cool. Yeah. Wait, Callisto? Or am I mixing up with one of the dwarf planets? No, it's like in, it's like in the movie, when ah. I, when when you said, "What's the moon that looks like a Death Star?" and I said, "That's no." Oh, moon. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, uh, we got. I, I like how ours is called? just moon. Well, hmm. I, I think, um, or, or a lot of science fiction stuff will just call it Luna. Yeah, um, I think that's like its unofficial official name. Kind of like how solar system will often just be called Sol, to, yeah, the because solar they're system. all solar systems. That all are, you know. Like it's not. I mean, look, we made. It's these not a point of contention. Really yeah. I mean, even today, generally, when you refer to a solar system at all, probably yours. Most of the stuff does seem to happen here that is of importance to you. <laughs> well, as far as we can tell, this is the only one that's got people in it. So you know, we got time, like Triton. You know, that's a cool Tri one as well. Yeah. The one that has the awesome volcanoes on its surface, the ones that shoot like hundreds of kilometers into the air. I don't know. I that sounds like a good person. You have Charon, Phobos, yeah. Daphnis, Jocasta. Some of these are really neat. You can just get a list here. Epimetheus, Hadraste. Titania, Hyperion. Hyperion is an awesome name. Yeah. Eurydome. Euclidy. Hyperion Hotel. Yeah. Hegemony. Tethys. Then we have Corpo. Calicor. Corpo. Yeah, we got some fucking cool moons. Ours is called Moon. <laughs> so, ours is called moon but our moon, moon is cool it is we got the best moon. one yeah i suppose the moon yeah it's like the sun i think i think titan is the most interesting one but it's kind of become the most boring one because it's it's the one that is most frequently used as like a it seems like titan is very frequently like the focus of science fiction stories frequently yeah. obviously in a scale of how how often is a, is yeah, a science fiction story going to focus yeah. on you when compare it to any named, other moon yeah like it's Second titan. only to it's the moon, titan. it's Titan. What 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 were the moons in uh 2010? Uh what do you mean? Uh the 1984 film, 2010, the year oh. we made contact. I'm gonna say there are I I'd have to re I'd I had to rewatch it. Um let's see. Io okay. Io and Europa. Are the moons for in 2010? That's the one. Ah. That, that's the one with the posters like a baby in space. I'd need to see that one again. Wasn't the uh, the sprawl in Dead Space too? That was a uh, Titan, Titan right? Station. Or like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's Titan Station. It, it was. Titan it's like built into the side of a some kind of. I. It was either like a massive asteroid or maybe it was. A, I. I forget what it looks like from the outside. I'd have to double check. I'll just fucking Google it now. Well, 
I uh, I will say, when it comes to favorite planets, Saturn is probably my favorite. I think that the rings like really make that one. Yeah, the rings it's sort of. Cool it's planet. almost not fair, is it? It's not fair. Like, how does any other planet compete with Saturn? Saturn is so cool. Like the ring system, it just makes it so unique. Not, to, I mean, because I think uh, Jupiter has one ring, maybe two, and then I think. Uh, Uranus has like 20 or 30 or something, whereas Saturn's got thousands. Um, Neptune. Neptune is a cool planet. All of the gas giants are really interesting. Like the fact that Jupiter has these crazy storms. Pretty sure Neptune doesn't have like persistent 300 kilometer per hour winds. Of like glass and stuff as well. Oh, uh, I... Checked it real quick. Titan Station, colloquially known as the Sprawl, was an EarthGov space station built into the last remaining fragment of Titan, one of Saturn's moons and the site of the first planet crack. Oh, I see. Right. I wonder if, uh, hmm, of all the of all the moons to crack, uh, maybe Titan has a whole bunch of resources. Who knows? That's enough moon talk for now, though. Damn, you didn't even clarify with Rags beforehand. You just said it is. Oh, well, what do you reckon? Like, Rags, Rags would you like to continue talk? discussing moons? Or I, can talk about moons. I can talk about moons for ages. I can talk about moons. Just, I mean, for about that long, really. I guess I could keep talking about them. You I know, could, I could. If I needed to. I could talk about moons. You know, like, like if our moon was... Like a lush, that would be that would be crazy though if our moon was actually a really lush atmospheric place, you know. And there was like a civilization on the moon, and there was a civilization oh, here on Earth, and I mean, we that would like transform like humanity. That we'd be yeah. totally different. Like, how long would it take for us to be able to contact one another? You know, and what would happen? It just be like we're always like so close yet so far away. You know, an alien civilization that's there on the moon, and then we're on the the primary. You know, and and, you know, it takes us until, you know, the 1900s or so until we're able to actually go to each other and meet after all this time. Well, so that would be an interesting thing if like radio signals or something, you know, that that for a good, well, maybe maybe we'd be motivated to get there much faster than we did, which admittedly is very fast anyway. You think about how long it took us to get there. Like if there are radio waves and communication between earth and the moon and you know there's people there it's just a matter of how do we get there i imagine that that would be yeah. but just, just think about like how much because the moon is so significant in like pretty much every culture in the world like throughout all of history imagine how different that would be if if like the moon was green you know if like the moon looked like earth it takes about two and a half seconds for radio waves to uh uh yeah the moon moon be yeah. close be very close by Let's see. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that that'd be neat. That'd be that's a neat idea. It's that'd be neat. Concept. Though I think the exciting thing, right, in the future would be imagine looking up at the moon and there's a whole bunch of lights on there. We go to yeah, city. Like, yeah. Go visit the moon. You hang out at the moon. Go on a holiday. Jump around. The moon. Yeah. Relax. Take a take a bit of weight off. Aha. Yeah. Nice. <sighs> so someone asked what if our moon had a nano machine monster it's like well that would be silly that would be ridiculous <laughs> if the moon had a I would be film, man. Ridiculous if a movie was about that if a movie if a movie was not only about that but they didn't reveal that bit until like they didn't really even like there's a whole oh my goodness gracious what a film what a film speaking of films what what's the next super chat you got there Mubes. Wow. For a second time, didn't ask Rags if he was happy to move on. I'm just asking. What if you got another That's super okay, chat there? I think about moons. I will. I will ask Rags. Is it right if we uh, if we continue? Is, 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 yes, is, it's it's all right with me. I've had enough oh. moon talk for the moment. I got you. So, next up, got uh, hi Rags. Hello. Would you rather? Be married to Movie Bob, or would you rather? Second one. 
be. <laughs> it's funny you say that. The second option is to become a Hatsugu licker. I'd rather be married to Movie Bob. Yeah, spoke to Sue, eh? Yeah, absolutely. I'd rather be married to Movie Bob. I feel like I could, like you're married to him, but you don't have to. You don't have to love him. You don't have to live with him, even, right? He probably wouldn't want to be around you. He wants. He'd be like, "Yeah, we're married, but you have to stay out of my basement apartment." I mean, you could just divorce him. Nothing Last time you were he here, can't. you knocked over my cans. <laughs> you bitch. You bastard. No one knocks over my cans but me. I suppose uh, to put them in a bag. Made it to Florida from Washington State. Ended up being 2,900 miles, which was five full days of driving. The MOM video and two EFAP 200 got me through the Tennessee, but helped a lot. Thank you for your longness. That's oh one my. fucking hell of a drive from Washington to... It's just to, the whole um, country, isn't it? That's basically like, yeah. across the country. And comboing yeah. up those two is pretty much exactly 30 hours. Yeah, that's like Maine to California. That'd be a fun drive, I would imagine. You see a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, well, next year, you know, our family is... Uh, fields, yeah. our, our family plan for next year is to go up to, like, Seattle, that area. And everyone is flying except for myself and my dad. We're going to drive it and just see all the stuff along the way. So hopefully there'll be some coolio things to see because I have not been to that part of the country yet. I take it you're similar to me and that you like drives, long drives. Um, sometimes, yes. Generally, yes. Uh, it's not. I don't care for flying all that much. I don't have too much of a distaste for it. But, you know, it's you, you want to see the stuff along the way sometimes. I think, yeah, sometimes would probably be. I, yeah, like, I, don't, I think that at some point driving is like, okay, yeah, all right, this, <laughs> this is a bit too far. But middle length, I guess, distances, there's a lot of, uh, there's a, it's, it's a very calming thing. Um. Very chill. I won't be here forever, says the immortal elf. Yeah, it's, it's a bit strange to say that, especially in regards to and her existence, when there's no reason to think he would be around any less or more than her. What's odd, too, is that he says, I won't be here forever, and she says, you won't? And he's like, let's go get your mother and father, or something like that. Like, then why'd you bring it up, asshole? <laughs> yeah, like, if you don't want to talk about that. Yep, yeah, right. Um, so you should swim like Galadriel. I was like, well, I don't know about that. Uh, also, I hear that lol wind in the background, Muse. Oh, apparently, yeah. That's just that's ambience for you. Because mm. lots of places they went to in the show were cold, okay? Uh, there you go. Good enough. A lot of the characters were cold. And my yeah. interest was cold. Even the fire was cold. Uh, hey, guys. Why didn't our FMC... Hey. A uh, female main character, maybe? Take the eagles to find sauerkraut. Sounds like y'all got the writers for She-Hulk on Rings of Power also. High metal, more mm -hmm. retro games. I don't know the relationship of the elves and the eagles, to say, honestly. Yeah, I assume they're saying, like, why didn't... Th those journeys they were taking could have used it. I was like, I don't know if they can. I don't know if they have the option to. Uh... More retro games are coming. Wow, I didn't know they made spin-off material for Shadow of Mordor games. Uh, the, the Shadow of Mordor games aren't, like, hated, are they? Or are they? As far as I, I know, they're really enjoyed. Liked. Yeah, I, I don't generally hear people speaking ill of them. They've been working on a Wonder Woman game now. Uh, the oh, studio. great. Can't wait to not well, play it. I, hey, it could be really cool. Yeah, I just don't want to play it, though. As long as Gal Gadot <laughs> is not Wonder Woman. I think it is their own interpretation of the character. I think it's going to have yeah, the same yeah. nemesis system as well from those games with, like, the, you know, enemies that have some sort of developed history, unique it'll attributes. Be, it'll be Turbo Virgin Nerds Online. That'll be your nemesis as Wonder Woman. You have to defeat them in armed combat. You have to fight them. Explain to them that you're not a, you're, you're not a female version of Superman. Not really. And they're like, no, -uh, yes, you are. <laughs> uh, you must say nay. Nay, I say. The elf hugging the orc while he screams was something I didn't know I needed until now. Laugh my fucking ass. Yeah, it's a bit weird when you notice it. 
Well... EFAP reviews movies to let others know of their quality before buying. Why wouldn't you review this? I'd be disappointed if you didn't. There's a thing, uh, a lot of people said said it to me as though I'd agreed to this whole no hate watching thing, which first of all, don't do it, but second of all, uh, mm -hmm. no, I'm 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 watching a lot of what comes out and reviewing the whole thing. I think it's also fun. Uh, EFAB tastes great too. What? It said tastes great too. Oh yeah, it is good taste. Mhm. Mm Build strong boners. Uh, Galadriel looks like she wants to challenge everyone to a staring contest, but realizes she needs to poop and now regrets her choice. Oh, I hate when that happens. That's that's annoying. I suppose that the helmet pile is similar to the pile of heads which Morgoth ordered his orcs to make after he won the battle, <laughs> but that's the book. Well, I don't know what that helmet, the head pile looked like, but um, helmet pile was funny. We had fun with the helmet pile. We have a lot of fun. It's how they celebrate a battle. Those aren't dead elves. Those are just elves going, all right, let's make a celebratory helmet pile, as is tradition. And so they made a big old pile of helmets. They're like, because we don't need any of these anymore because we won the battle. You bet. So they made a big old helmet pile. And then they like swum in it. They jumped in and they're swimming around like Scrooge McDuck in his his gold pool of coins. He's swimming around in those helmets, having a great time. And they're like, man, we should go back to Valinor, the Undying Lands. And they was like, oh, nah, let's do not yet. Hi, I'm still on I EFAP 148, but I wanted to say I love the show. It keeps me entertained at work, and I can't wait to hear EFAP 200. Also, what are your thoughts on the mm -hmm. Dishonored games if you've played them? I've, I've really played, played them. Dishonored 2, and I liked it quite a bit, and I would recommend it. I played Dishonored 1, but for some reason never finished it. But I liked it a lot as well. And it's been a long time. I really liked 1, but didn't play much of 2. I should, though. I don't got nothing on him. But I will say, glad you're enjoying EFAP. And interestingly, you're like about to hit the anniversary Absolutely. for 150. And then it's like, we just did the 200 one. Yeah. Maybe we'll have enough anniversaries at some point that it'll take ages to just get through the anniversaries alone. Because it does already, right? 24 hours per. Getting close to a week to get through the whole the set right now. Thanks. Um, I know this is late, but congratulations on reaching 200 episodes of EFAP. I started watching EFAP last year after hearing about you guys on Literature Devil's show, Morning Nonsense. I even watched your fourth anniversary stream live. Keep up the good work, and here's to another four years. Wow. Oh, thanks very much. Thanks so much, yeah. That's, that's a big... Th I always say this, but it's like... For some reason in my head, I feel like we've uh, we're not getting new fans. We just have our our current set of efappers, you know, and that's just that's the way. It, it is, is weird to think of that you have you constantly have people joining, you know. Yeah, you there's like probably someone in chat right this, now just... who's the this is their first episode or whatever. Because you know. that's true. Yeah, we see we we, we know you're there. We we, yes, we see you, Jeremy. I, we, we are watching. Yeah. we are watching. We see you. That's it's like God. the Avatar thing. You know, where you're like, I see you. Mm. Let's say it weird though. Uh, like, did you guys yo, catch up, the audio hiccup in episode one around the four fifty mark? It sounds like someone took a snapshot in the middle of Galadriel's monologue. No, I, I, I did not. It is. Let me actually let me write that down for later because I might that might be interesting to check out. Uh, what is the? What's the time? Episode one. Uh, what time? Uh, four minutes and 50 seconds. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. okay. This mm -hmm. group is my little notepad for later. You, the absolute state Note. of movies. Top five box office right now. Number one, Spider-Man No Way Home. Number two, Bullet Train. Number three, Top Gun. Number four, The Invitation. Number five, Jaws. Wait, is that true? Jaws? What's Jaw? I didn't know there was a Jaws movie out. And is that like top five box office of the year? Which doesn't make sense because I'm I'm just a little bit confused. What's happening? It looks like Jaws oh. bites into IMAX and 3D theaters nationwide this weekend. Oh, I didn't That's even neat. know there was a Jaws coming out. Is it? It's not a new Jaws then. It's a re-release, but in IMAX. As far as I know. Okie dokie. Jaws. Jaws. All right. Well, you know, interesting. And hey. 
know, if the top five is only one superhero movie, maybe maybe that nature is healing. Maybe. <laughs> Jaws attorney at law. <laughs> I switched subtitles to Arabic because it detected misogynist jokes and decided to switch to an appropriate language. Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh it is very funny. Did you guys catch... Oh, wait, I read that. Fringy, I used to hate your Simpsons references, but I watched Emp Lemon's video on Simpsons and now I understand. Rip Grimes, Slice and Dice, brother. The slice and Dice! Rick slice Grimes. and Dice, brother. Not Rip Grimes, Frank Grimes. Rip Grimes is... Walking, walking Dead Man. No, Rip Grimes. Rip Grimes. I, yeah, but I accidentally said That's Rick his 1980s Grimes. action oh, right, okay. hero equivalent, is Rip Grimes. Uh, also, Snoop Dogg should have Gandalf. Dads will get it. Very well. Uh, the troll disappears after she turns around. I the noticed that too when we were... I, I, I should have mentioned it because when I was watching through, I noticed that the troll is just kind of gone when they're in their semicircle, and everyone's like, "No, you gotta, we're going." Oh, really? Well, it was yeah, in the way. Like, it I, was in the way. Come I, on. I, well, it, I thought it was dead maybe, and despawned, obviously. I thought it was weird, but I was like, "Oh, maybe they just went to a different place." But they didn't seem to. It was in that, the way. I, you guys are being that would be it such a big way. fuck up. That I was like, "Nah, they totally went to like a different place, right?" They moved it and they cut that part out because they wanted to do the big display of putting the swords down. It makes sense. You guys are just epic. Learn something. <laughs> hey, Fringy, Mauler, Metal and Rags. Which film action choreography hey. would you watch for the rest of your life? 2000s action, 10s shaky cam, or 20s Marvel? <laughs> oh, I mean, we're getting rid of Marvel instantly. So 2010s yeah. shaky action or 2000s action? Probably 2000s action. I guess. I it depends on what he means. Action. Yeah. I guess. Mm. I mean, we're thinking yeah. like Matrix, right? Like if we're thinking stuff like that. I guess you love that in the two. Well, first one I... came out in the 90s. I'm surprised 90s was excluded from that list. Yeah. It's a lot of good action in the 90s. Hell yeah. When was when was the raid? That was two thousand six. The raid was probably. yeah, but the raid is not shaky cam. Oh, at least I wouldn't consider that. It, no, no, usually no. it's ye. I was oh, green. You just it sounds like you. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it was just a green. It was, it was so good. Because the raid, I think the raid was twenty eleven. It was twenty eleven. Yeah, I just checked. Yeah. Fucking love those movies. Great. They are really fun movies. Been rewatching Chernobyl, and I think it's about as close to perfect Yay. as media can get, and honestly think it hasn't been given proper EFAP coverage. Well, no, it hasn't. We have recommended it. Go watch it. Yeah, it's, I I really really stuff. like it. One of my favorite shows. I don't know if the others are as into it, but yeah, it's, it's, I thought it was it's good. I, really good. It's one. Very, very it's one I typically that, go yeah. for to show how you could do a lot with not a lot of time because it's only five episodes. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of shit happens in that. You have a lot of characters doing a lot of things, and there's a very good progression. You know, you feel you, you understand the stakes and the progression of events that happens. Um, and there's really it's it's an excellent, uh, really excellent show. I I really like it. I highly suggest everyone watch it. It's really good. Only five episodes. Super atmospheric. Excellent acting. Good stuff. The Fellowship screwed up. They should have brought Galadriel Sue with them. She'd have saved Mary Pippin and Boromir at Amon Head. No problem. I mean, probably. Are we going to have... We never had it, but, like, is she a Mary Sue? Does no, she fit the... I, I don't care. I'm, I have my criticisms of her are blatant. I'm not getting into the Mary Sue thing. Fuck that. Nobody yeah. nobody wants to listen She's anymore. She's immune to Maulers. Yeah. Um, bringing thoughts on Ashley Biden's diary. <laughs> I have no oh. clue what that is, and we're not talking about politics. Yeah, Ashley diary. Ashley Biden could be a Pokemon. No, no, or not something. that Biden. Yeah, it could be Pokemon. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ashley Biden. I, I, <laughs> diary type. So you said diary. I heard diary. And I still thought of diarrhea. <laughs> diarrhea, diarrhea type Pokemon. <laughs> There's just a whole. It just so happens that in the Pokemon world, a lot of Pokemon are just shit. They're just poop themed. They use poop as weapons. Yeah. They're made of poop. <laughs> they just have poop <laughs> growing on them, <laughs> and it's just like really nasty and awkward that that a lot of them are like that. But they just are. 
Yeah, and then just come around and kill your children or something. Yeah, and then turn them into poop. Why do all of the Pokemon have such twisted backstories? Oh, no. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Like this that. was made. This guy came from the happy place. They're just happy beings who do happy things, and you're like, oh, what no. are those stories? Yeah, what is Quagsire? Did Quagsire have like a really depressing one? Hmm? I guess we can find out. Quagsire I, was one, right? Now. Quagsire, that's right. Let's take a look here. Oops. He's so happy. This carefree so Pokemon has an easygoing nature. While swimming, it always bumps into boat hulls. Well, that's not good. <laughs> um, its body is always slimy. It often bangs its head yeah. on the river bottom as it swims, but seems not to care. Multiple right. concussions a day. Yeah, that seems to be generally it. It all of the Pokédex entries just talk about how it's pretty carefree and relaxed, and it bumps into things, but doesn't really care. He looks like the face of a Pokemon that just does not have that many thoughts going on in his head. He's so happy though. Look at him. He's wonderful. He just there is, he's there, and he's got his happy grin. There is something. Envious, <laughs> you know. No, I, no, I, I definitely envy Quagsire. That he's, he's got a permanent smile. He's constantly happy, and he's waving. He's like, "Hey, I'm Quagsire. I'm the really pearl, happy." Only the pearl versions specifically say it's a dim-witted Pokemon. <laughs> um, that changed their mind later on, I guess. I suppose it's the only yeah it, it's the only ones that say that because the rest are just it's it's sluggish or easygoing. Easygoing is the nice way to say it, but some of them just say sluggish. I Quagsire should write a self help book called Qu Qu Being Quagsire, where he just talks about his attitude on life. How I learned to stop swimming and love the riverbed. How how I learned to quag bump into boats and. Bump into boats. Yeah, bumping into boats and with a smile a on my face. Who cares if I bump into a boat? It's just a momentary setback in my ever-happy quest for food. Bumping into that boat brought me to where I am today. Because he just doesn't... Because like it says, he doesn't care if he bumps into things. He just doesn't care. Fine. Yeah. If, if, if Other he... people bump and they're like, Oh my god, this is a setback. And Quagsire goes, This is... This is just another new experience for me. Yeah. Every bump on the road of life brings you to where you maybe need to go. You know, it's it, he's yeah. he's a very wise sort, very, very laid he's back. He's a sage. Yeah, really. yeah. I wonder if there's like Quagsire plush or something. Oh, almost certainly. I bet if, I I bet there is. He seems Let like he'd see. be a fairly popular one. How about the kids well, love Quagsire? Sorry. One of my uh, my favorite Pokemon is uh, Psyduck. Oh I've yeah, I've always Psyduck. really liked Psyduck. Psy. He he has a funny voice and he's he's just an interesting fellow. He's one of the originals. Yeah. He really is. Yeah. Back when like the Pokemon designs weren't that crazy, he's just a psychic duck. Like that's it. It has interesting entries, too. It has mystical powers, but doesn't recall that it has used them. That is why it always got <laughs> puzzled. I remember uh, on the game Pokemon Channel. Did you guys ever play that? I never played Pokemon Channel. I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat aware of it. It had that weird controller, didn't it? Uh, I don't know if it, if it did. I never had that. I just, um... Cause is I, this it, the N64 game? No, it was on a uh, GameCube. GameCube. Yeah. Hmm. And um, I remember I that game doesn't have like a lot of gameplay to it. I always found it really quaint though. It was like a really quaint, chill game. Um, and I remember that there was like a channel where it was just Psyduck talking about the news, and he had like a little suit on, as he's there and it, it like as a news anchor talking about the news, you just be like, "Say, say, hi, duck!" <laughs> like he's talking about the news with all of the uh, the images splayed on the screen. Do you remember? Because this is saying that it was paired in promotion uh, for this oh. item. But do you remember the Nintendo e-reader? I don't. No, I don't actually. 
So the e-reader, the only interaction I had with it was that there would be e-reader Pokemon cards, and they would have a... Here, let me get you a picture here to show you what I mean. That might help. So an e-reader was like copy... So an e-reader card would have a little swipeable stripe along the edges, and you would take this and you would slide it through the e-reader, and it would be attached. The e-reader would be attached to your like Game Boy or whatever, and so you could like swipe the card, and I guess it would give you the card in the game or the Pokemon in the game, something like that. But it was one of those things. I don't think it's a thing anymore. But this is like one of those early 2000s sort of things that you know, like pokey that, that, that you could do. And I remember I these cards on. coming out. I remember having some cards, but I never I don't think I ever had an e-reader itself. Man, flaming punch. Flame, pu flaming punch. Flip a coin. If heads, the defending Pokemon is now burned. Rash does th double damage. Oh, wait, does... Oh, t plus 10 more, I see. Rash but can do 10 it's damage a 50-50. Oof. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a tough one to choose between, you know? I don't know. I remember this Magmar card in particular because of the art and how much I didn't like the art of this Magmar. It, it looks like a butt-headed fire duck. Yeah, a little bit. Um... Also, uh, we're, we're pretty much at, a, at, a, at an extended len length of time where not this everybody is able. It was supposed to be a short able. EFAP. It was supposed to be a non-existent EFAP. I went over this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, this... That's right. That's very short. Chat, for those who don't know, this was originally a, a weekend with nothing going on. Then it was like, oh, we should probably take all time advantage we can to do catching up. And then we were like, during the catch up, maybe we could discuss, you know, She-Hulk or whatever. And it's like, well... Like, what about Rings of Power? And there's like, well, maybe we could do Rings of Power and She Hulk. And there's like, well, that's just a full on episode. And there's like, I don't even think we'll be able to get to She Hulk. Let's just do Rings of Power and see how far it goes. And then, and here we are. So, um, like I said at the beginning, we'll figure oh. out, uh, yes, yeah, so I heard you change your mind on air yesterday, Ball. Like, yeah, this is, people follow me around the internet. Terrifying. But, um, what we, you know, the, the, I'll make sure to let you guys know about where everything is and how everything's going. We're just a little bit all over the place right now. This is our, supposed to be the gap month between two very, very high stress months in terms of work and coverage and things and things. But turns out this month is just full of things itself. So, uh, yeah, well, you know, in terms of where everything is, I will be more clearer with that as time goes on. I'm just very glad that we managed to actually get the... The whole anniversary sorted. All of that was was it went right out. It's all available, you know, and and, and then and of course the video. But um, yeah, that's 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 EFAP's coverage of two episodes of Rings of Power. Just how exciting! That amount of time. Um, all that content. I know that everyone's like, but we want to know what you thought about the newer Shulks. And of course, we're gonna want to see those minis for Andor. Well, they're all on the way. All right, I'll get there. I'll figure it out. It's an exciting um, time. As well as, of course, uh, responding to all the questions we've got. We, are, we have indeed developed a big old backlog again. We knew this would happen with the anniversary. We're going to defeat the backlog once again. We always do, okay? We always do. And I'll grab up those uh, 189 Super Chats as well for those who are asking. Um, all right. Uh, we're, we're before, before we head out, was there anything? Uh, Metal, Metal, what are you doing? Ah. Ah, well, uh... I, I, I wanted to do my forge on these two episodes today, but you were like, D -d -d are we doing the live tab anyways? After all, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll join. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. Mm. I'm going to revisit those two episodes again to cover on my end. So that's going to happen tomorrow. I already co I've been covering the She-Hulk episodes uh, every week as they've been coming, coming out. Uh, that's going to continue, so there's going to be two forges every week for the foreseeable future. Uh, so yeah, go go check them out. So that's going to be like forges every Thursday and Friday then, I guess. Un unless they change the unless releases at some point. Unless horrible things happen I don't know. and everything goes wrong and moved around. But 
Even if yeah. it were to be that way, more coverage of things on the way, right? Of all the things. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and if I have time, I'll do some Twitch strumblings, I guess. Doing play some, some, some more. Play some VDRs. Uh, yeah, just doing all the things and stuffs. Um, Rags, Ringy, you guys want to say? No. No, not really. Not anymore. We did our moon talk. We talked about our <laughs> ring show. Mm. I think that about we're all. I think we we're pretty much settled on things. For now. I reckon as well. Though I just noticed that Fringy plush is nearly at nine hundred. It's one away. Wow. The nice. plush is at eight hundred ninety-five. Okay. Wow, they're neck and neck. They really are. They don't really have necks. No, not really. But they're, they are necked. They're beak and tentacle. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, of exciting. course they are available. We will let you guys know. For well, it'll be next week. It'll be the last time we can let you know because then it's gone. But hopefully around then or soon after, whenever we'll be talking about rags as Lucy. The Lucy. That's right. Almost there. Ah, vale, How vale. But um, yeah. Uh, they are at nine hundred. Um. Obviously, if you haven't gotten yours just yet, they will be gone for a while. Uh, Forever. But, well, I guess yeah. these versions, yeah. This is literally the only time you have a chance to grab these. They make quite a good little gift. I actually discovered this. Depending on what kind of family members you have and what interests they have, they can find these to be quite the fun little toys. And, uh, you know, maybe it's better they don't know the context of where they come from, depending on their mm -hmm. age. I don't know if... Uh, you have five-year-olds watching EFAP, definitely against it. However, they do yep. enjoy their cuddly toys. And it's true. You know, if you're like a tentacled longman with a little cookie or a, some goo along with a bonus fringy attached to it. Because obviously, the goo is the very prestigious part of this purchase, I would say. Um, but you still get a friendly fringy along with it. Yeah, buy right. one goo, get a free a fringy. 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 Um... But yeah, uh, the link will be in the description of this when it goes up on Mueller. But for now, it's really easy to find. It's just makeshift, and then if you did makeshift Fringy or makeshift Molly, you'll find them. Be there. Make it to 900 yet? Uh, let's take Not a look. Not yet. Someone out Not there yet. will want to do. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'll collect up what we've missed. We will catch up. It'll all be done and labeled properly on the old uh, uh, Mueller channel until... We may see you Wednesday. It's unclear right now uh, in terms of where, where everything is slotting, but I will know more as time goes. Thank you all for joining us for the wonderful adventure. The kind donations and the words of yes. coverage with us, the back and forth. We shall see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye everybody. Bye bye bye. bye.